Han Sanchen, a young man who possessed immortality in a world consumed by the pursuit of fame and wealth, understood that finding a life partner would resolve all his troubles. He believed that together they could overcome any challenges that lay ahead. However, he doubted his ability to achieve this until a young woman slapped him, triggering a recollection of an incident three hours prior. During that event, he discovered that the prestigious Yanjing Han family required his assistance. Shockingly, they were concerned about their lineage's continuation. Three years ago, Han Sanchen was banished from the Zuosa family by his grandmother, who feared he might jeopardize his brother's position as the heir. Since then, he endured various forms of negativity. Despite his reluctance, he refused to return, questioning the benefits of begging for acceptance. The person sent to deliver his grandmother's message found themselves at a loss, unsure of how to convey Han Sanchen's response. Perplexed, they observed Han Sanchen as he departed on his scooter, expressing his desire for tranquility and an aversion to any disturbances. Han Sanchen, the son-in-law of the esteemed Su family in Yunqing and the husband of Su Yingxia, the city's renowned beauty. Despite belonging to a humble background, the Su family had garnered a certain level of fame within Yunqing's building materials sector. Three years ago, Han Sanchen joined the Zuosu family, initially seen as an undesirable addition. However, as they got to know him better during a dinner, he seamlessly integrated into their family. Unfortunately, being married to the Su family's beauty came with its challenges. Shortly after their wedding, the elder of the Su family, who had orchestrated the marriage, passed away due to an illness. Curiously, even after the elder's demise, Han Sanchen continued to be recognized as the son-in-law, leaving everyone puzzled about the reasons behind this decision. As Han Sanchen arrived at the Su family's residence, he parked his scooter and noticed that the family's parking lot seemed a bit small. Taking a moment to ensure his attire was neat, he prepared to enter the house. Su Yingxia, his wife, inquired about his sudden arrival, to which Han Sanchen explained that he had been delayed as he had gone to purchase a gift for his grandmother. Anxiously, Su Yingxia pleaded with him to hasten inside. The family members, relieved to see Su Yingxia's arrival, initially attributed their tardiness to traffic on the way. However, upon being reminded that it was her grandmother's birthday that day, Yingxia admitted her carelessness. Playfully, the family members teased Han Sanchen, implying that his sole responsibility was to take care of household chores for Yingxia. At that moment, Su Heicho, Yingxia's cousin, entered the scene and questioned Han Sanchen about the item he held in his hand, wondering if it was a gift for their grandmother. He was trying to insult Han Sanchen as much as possible while trashing down his name in front of everybody that joined together to celebrate the birthday. Su Heicho responded with anger, exclaiming that it was their grandmother's 80th birthday and Han Sanchen had the audacity to present such a worthless item. In response, Han Sanchen confidently displayed the gift, emphasizing that it was carefully selected from a reputable gift shop. He proudly displayed his gift, a precious, aged Chinese tea, worth a staggering 880,000 yuan, intended for his grandmother. The extravagant nature of the gift left everyone astounded. With this grand gesture, Hoichou then turned his attention to Yingxia, raising doubts about whether Han Sanchen, whom he derogatorily referred to as a piece of trash, truly deserved respect. Haicheo locked eyes with Yingxia as he expressed his belief that Han Sanchen did not appreciate her grandmother's birthday. He questioned whether Yingxia had noticed that Han Sanchen lacked any redeeming qualities. Perhaps Yingxia hadn't been aware of this given her long-standing relationship with Han Sanchen, which might have blinded her to his true nature, diminishing her self-worth and pride. In response to Heicho's provocation, Han Sanchen approached him and arrogantly snatched the aged Chinese tea from his hands, bringing it close to his nose to discern its fragrance. After Han Sanchen confronted Heicho about the tea, Heicho arrogantly snatched the gift back, claiming it was meant for his grandmother and that Han Sanchen had no right to touch it. However, Han Sanchen remembered the information his friend had shared about the different grades and types of Chinese tea as well as the deceptive practices used by some sellers. He pointed out that the tea Heikshou bought for his grandmother was already showing signs of deterioration and had an unusual smell. Han Sanchen explained that the mostly green and dark green appearance indicated that it was raw tea, which could be harmful if not properly aged. As Han Sanchen raised doubts about Heikshou's purchase, other family members began to question Heikshou's credibility. Haikshou retaliated, accusing Han Sanchen of lying and insisting that his grandmother hadn't consumed tea for the past two years. However, Han Sanchen realized that Haicho had deliberately brought the tea for his grandmother, knowing she no longer drank it. 
This way, if the product turned out to be faulty, Heicho's true intentions wouldn't be exposed. The family members started to realize that Heicho was willing to deceive Su Yingxia's grandmother, which was unacceptable. Heicho defended himself by claiming that Han Sanchen had fabricated accusations against him and that Han Sanchen knew nothing about the Chinese tea he purchased. However, this statement only fueled suspicion among the family members, considering Han Sanchen's role as the family cook for Yingxia. Yingxia asked Han Sanchen if he was certain about his claims, urging him not to cause further trouble. Han Sanchen reassured her that his friend wouldn't lie to him and that she need not worry about the issue. Just then, Yingxia's grandmother arrived, curious about the commotion. She inquired about the gathering, and Yingxia explained that it revolved around the Chinese tea cake Heicho had brought as a birthday gift. Han Sanchen had noticed that the cake seemed mass-produced. However, before Yingxia could finish her statement, Heicho interjected, declaring it a lie. This prompted Yingxia to question Heicho about the authenticity of the tea. Heicho dismissed Yingxia's concerns, labeling her statements as nonsense and advising her grandmother not to listen to her. To settle the dispute, Yingxia's grandmother requested to inspect the gift herself. Upon examination, she declared the cake to be genuine, surprising Hei Chao. Turning to Han Sankin, she asked why he had slandered Hei Chao. Hoi Kyo was pleased with the grandmother's validation of the tea cake. Yingxia, considering Han Sanchen's behavior in front of her mother, pleaded with her grandmother not to be angry at him, asserting that he didn't understand the situation. Heikxiao further claimed that Han Sanchen was attempting to defame the authentic gift. Yingxia then requested Han Sanchen to apologize to Heikxiao. However, Han Sanchen remained steadfast in his belief that the tea cake was of poor quality. Before he could elaborate on his point, his wife abruptly slapped him, demanding that he stop speaking and apologize immediately. Disoriented by the slap, Han Sanchen struggled to regain focus but ultimately apologized to Heikxiao bowing deeply in front of him and admitting that he had misjudged the cake. In response, Heikyo also bowed low and told Han Sanchen that even if the gift turned out to be fake, his grandmother would still support him because he was her grandson, while Han Sanchen was merely a failure as a son-in-law. After Heikyo and everyone left, Han Sanchen's wife approached him and mentioned that she owes him a slap, but Han Sanchen understood that she was trying to avoid a more severe situation. He thanked her for helping him realize the harsh reality without lashing out at her. Yingxia, who had angrily left earlier, overheard Han Sanchen's statement about changing and turned back. Han Sanchen assured her that he was willing to change for her because she was the only one who could inspire such a transformation. However, Yingxia emphasized that he needed to have the means and resources before proclaiming such intention since useless garbage would never leave their household. In his mind, Han Sanchen determined to show Yingxia what real resources and capabilities meant. Madame Su sat at the round table with her family members, celebrating her birthday. They toasted to her health and prosperity when suddenly, someone burst into the room, announcing the arrival of additional gifts brought by someone else. It was a man who claimed to be representing the Han family and had been asked to send their congratulations to Madame Su. The Su family members found it amusing and laughed, thinking that the Han family was making a joke. Even Han Sankin, perplexed by his family's actions and their attempt to push him into the Zuosa family, couldn't understand why they were treating him this way. Su Yingxia considered asking her husband if he had planned it, but she decided against it. The man continued to list the items in the gift boxes, and then he mentioned a cash gift of 8,880,000 yuan, which shocked everyone present. The sight of the large sum of money led them to believe that the Han family wanted to propose a marriage alliance, possibly seeking a bride from their family. The man clarified that they were only permitted to give gifts and nothing more. After offering his congratulations, he left with the bearers. The Su family members became nervous and started promoting themselves, especially Su Yi Han, who declared herself the most beautiful and deserving candidate for the lucky bride. Su Hei Cho added fuel to the fire, mocking Su Yingxia, for marrying someone he considered garbage and suggesting that she could only watch as others married successful and useful people. These words darkened Han Sanchen and Su Yingxia's expressions. Unable to bear the mockery any longer, Su Yingxia stood up in anger, slamming her hands on the table and demanding that Su Heichou and Su Yihan not take the matter too far. Madame Su intervened, offering to personally handle the conflict and decide the fate of the gifts. Han Sanchen felt that Madame Su was being biased as she interrupted his wife, but allowed her cousins to taunt her earlier. Meanwhile, Su Yingxia's mother, Zhang Lan, vented her frustration, 
regretting her decision to marry her daughter to Han Sanchin, whom she referred to as trash. Her husband, Su Goyo, tried to calm her down, but his attempts only escalated the argument. Jiang Lan was more concerned about inheritance issues and urged her husband to facilitate a quick divorce between the young couple. However, Su Goyo explained that divorce was not an option as his father had informed them and proceeding with it would make them the laughing stock of the city once again. Su Yingxia watched the argument unfold, leaning against the wall, while Han Sanqin sat on the floor in another room, listening to the discussion between his in-laws. Su Yingxia finally declared that she would not divorce Han Sanqin, redirecting her mother's anger toward herself. Her mother questioned her sanity for making such a statement, but Su Yingxia continued, stating that although her husband may not be promising, he is hardworking. She acknowledged that he had been handling all the household chores himself for the past few years. Despite looking down on him, she confessed that she never hated him. Su Yingxia further asserted that Madame Su would never allow them to divorce because the old lady was more concerned about the Su family's reputation than their well-being. With these words, she left her parents behind and walked away. Han Sanchen was deeply moved by his wife's words and immediately called his mother to discuss some matters. Meanwhile, Su Yingxia, still in her nightwear, sat on the bed in her room. Han Sanchen entered without knocking, which made her self-conscious. However, she realized it was her husband and they had a conversation. She tearfully expressed that Han Sanchen had already asked her the previous day if she wanted him to change. She revealed that she no longer wanted to be looked down upon and wished to live her life with dignity. Su Yingxia desired for those who had looked down upon her to regret their actions. Han Sanchen paid a visit to his mother to discuss the previous call they had. Confidently sitting in a chair, he expressed his astonishment that the once neglected and youngest son of the Han family could now be of use. His mother, pleased with his visit, revealed that Han Sanchen's grandmother had requested his return since his father was critically ill and his brother was in prison. This implied that Han Sanchen was now seen as the sole support for the family. Upon hearing this, Han Sanchen reflected on the three years that had passed and questioned why his family suddenly remembered him. He concluded that it was because his worthless brother had failed to meet the family's expectations. Han Sanchen's mother attempted to reason with him, acknowledging that it was unfair, but she was powerless against his grandmother's decision. Han Sanchen scoffed at his mother's words, recounting how he had strived for her attention throughout his childhood, yet no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't please her. He understood that his grandmother feared he would surpass his older brother as the family heir, which was why he was cast out. Han Sanchen believed that if his brother hadn't ended up in prison, his family wouldn't have given him a second thought. In response, he declared that his grandmother and mother were unworthy of being called his parents or relatives. His mother was left speechless, aware of her own faults. Han Sanchen hinted that he might help with the situation, leaving his mother to ask if he would be returning. He replied that he had one condition. With that, Han Sanchen left the room, clutching a credit card, recalling his mother's earlier words about his grandmother setting up a new company under his management. The credit card held the capital he needed to start the company. Han Sanchen saw it as a test from his grandmother, who doubted his abilities despite the urgency of the situation. Determined to prove himself as the rightful heir and not to be underestimated, Han Sanchen made up his mind. He vowed that everything the Han family owed him would slowly but surely be reclaimed. Three days later, rumors of a massive storm and the establishment of a new company by the Yanjing Han family, Quanxi Industries, spread throughout the city and among China's elite families. Speculation arose about the Han family's intentions with the new company, which aimed to develop a new district. People wondered if the business would attract the attention of other major companies in the city. Su Yighan, seizing the opportunity, boasted in her company that she was about to marry into a wealthy family due to the news circulating. She never missed a chance to taunt Su Yingxia about marrying Han Sanchen, whom she referred to as trash. In a conference room, Madame Su called for attention, addressing everyone present. She acknowledged that they must be aware of the Han family's new company and its plans to develop a new district. Madame Su proposed that if they could secure a deal with Quanxi Industries, everyone would benefit, despite their family's involvement in building materials. Su Heiko chimed in, stating that they were aware but so far, all attempts by other companies to discuss deals with Quan Shui had been rejected. Su Gulen, Heiko's father, supported his son's statement, mentioning that they had already sent someone, but that person hadn't met the company's boss. Upon hearing this, Madame Su instructed them to try again, emphasizing that Quan Shui had not yet decided on a business partner 
indicating they still had a chance. She suggested that if they couldn't meet the boss, they should wait in front of the company since everyone would take turns waiting. The family members hesitated, finding it embarrassing to stand outside the company. Taking advantage of the situation, Su Heiko proposed that Su Yingsha should be the one to do it since she hadn't been busy with work recently. This sudden turn of events shocked and startled Su Yingsha as she was focused somewhere else. The suggestion put forth by Su Heiko received immediate agreement from everyone, and they began expressing their reasons why Su Yingsha should not be the one to negotiate with Quan Chi Industries. Madame Su noticed this and asked for Su Yingsha's opinion on the matter. Just as Su Yingsha was about to reply, she received a text from her husband, urging her to seize the opportunity and negotiate cooperation with Quan Chi Industries. Confused by her husband's message, Su Yingxia considered whether she should take on the task or not. Ultimately, she decided to trust her husband's judgment. Standing up from her seat, she expressed her willingness to take on the task. Su Haixia and others doubted her ability to meet with the company's boss, expressing concerns about her capability to handle such a responsibility. Su Yingxia wondered why they were underestimating her, considering that the most difficult tasks always seemed to fall on her. However, she assured them that they didn't need to worry, as she was confident in her ability to secure cooperation with the company. In a mocking tone, Su Heiko laughed, stating that they didn't expect her to successfully negotiate with the company. He added that if she miraculously managed to do so, he would serve her some tea, but if she failed, they would disown her from the family. This startled Su Yingxia, but she accepted the challenge. As Su Yingxia left the company, Han Sanchin sat in a cafe across the street, observing his wife. The cafe owner approached him and offered him a cigarette, which Han Sanchin gladly accepted with thanks. The cafe owner recognized that Han Sanchin had come to see his wife finish work, a routine he had maintained for two to three years, rain or shine. Han Sanchin simply stated that he had nothing else to do. The cafe owner encouraged him to go out and pick up his wife, emphasizing that merely watching her wouldn't accomplish anything. Han Sanchin replied that the time wasn't right yet. Intrigued, the cafe owner asked if Han Sanchin knew why he, an ordinary person, had to marry into the Sioux family. Han Sanchin remarked that he seemed to have become a topic of discussion at the cafe, to which the owner quickly clarified that he was just curious, acknowledging that enduring such injustice was not something ordinary people could bear. He wondered how Han Sanchin could endure it. Han Sanchin, however, didn't view it that way. He explained that it was precisely because he was the son-in-law of the Su family that his wife became the target of ridicule and mockery from those who claimed to be family within the Su company. Despite this, his wife remained strong and hardworking and kept her burdens to herself. Compared to what she endured, he felt that his own struggles were insignificant. Han Sanchin entered the house carrying the groceries he had bought, only to find his mother-in-law yelling at his wife. She accused Su Heiko of intentionally provoking Su Yingxia and trying to drive them out of the Su family in order to secure a larger share of the family's property. Su Yingxia's father was also present, lost in thought, contemplating how their family would survive if they were kicked out of the house. Su Yingxia responded indifferently, stating that they would never know the outcome until they tried. Han Sanchin stood by his wife, assuring her parents that they should trust in their daughter, as she would undoubtedly succeed. In response, Su Yingxia's mother berated Han Sanqian, calling him worthless and ordering him to do his usual task of cooking for the family. Ignoring her mother's outburst, Su Yingxia followed her husband into the kitchen. Han Sanqian was seen chopping vegetables as Su Yingxia asked him if he still waited for her outside the company building after work. Startled, Han Sanqian reluctantly admitted that he had been doing so. Su Yingxia then told him not to wait at the restaurant anymore and instructed him to pick her up directly in front of the company, so they could go home together. Han Sanchin was stunned by the request and wanted to confirm if he had heard correctly. Su Yingxia replied that she wouldn't repeat herself but wondered if she had misunderstood Han Sanchin's intentions. She asked if he didn't want to pick her up, to which he eagerly responded that he would love to. In the midst of their conversation, Su Yingxia's mother shouted that the vegetables were burning. Han Sanchin rushed over to the pot to check on them, resulting in burnt vegetables. He informed his wife not to worry about the cooperation with Quan Chi Industries anymore, as the boss of the company happened to be one of his classmates and close friends. The next day, Su Heiko was in the office on a call, asking the person on the other end to keep an eye on something and inform him of any changes. After hanging up, he started laughing and informed Su Yi Han that it was related to Su Yingxia's attempt to make him laugh to death. 
Su Yi Han asked what was so amusing, and Su Heikshao revealed that Su Yingxia had asked her husband, whom he referred to as Trash, to drive her to Quanxi Industries. Su Yi Han joined in the laughter, remarking that it seemed Su Yingxia had already given up and was simply waiting to be expelled from the family. During their conversation, Su Yi Han remembered something and asked what they would do if Su Yingxia actually managed to secure the deal with the company. Su Heikshao assured her that he had another plan in place to force Su Yingxia out of the Su family as long as everyone else supported him when the time came. Su Yi Han expressed her full support, stating that accepting Han Sanchen into the family had already caused them to lose face, so cutting ties with Su Yingxia and her family would be beneficial. Meanwhile, Su Yingxia was outside Quan Shui Industries with her husband, who dropped her off on his electric scooter. He reassured her that with her abilities, she would be able to secure cooperation from Quan Shui Industries. Su Yingxia entered the building and headed straight to the receptionist's desk, but before she could introduce herself, the receptionist already knew her name. The receptionist happily pointed her in the right direction, informing her that Manager Zhang had been eagerly awaiting her arrival. To Su Yingxia's surprise, as she reached Manager Zhang's office, all the workers laid down a red carpet and warmly welcomed her, humbly acknowledging her visit for cooperation and negotiation. Once again, Su Yingxia was left dumbfounded by the unexpected turn of events. Manager Zhang personally welcomed her and introduced himself as the general manager responsible for the development of the new district, including negotiations with the Su family's company. Manager Zhang asked if Su Yingxia was ready to sign the paperwork immediately if there were no issues, leaving Su Yingxia stunned by the seemingly unbelievable offer. Su Yingxia was left speechless, unsure of what to say. Manager John noticed her hesitation and asked if she had any questions. Still unsure of how to respond, Su Yingxia contemplated the situation. Manager Zhang reassured her, explaining that the boss often engaged in social events and rarely came to the office. He urged Su Yingxia to let him know if she had any concerns. Finally, Su Yingxia mustered the courage to express her doubts, suggesting that the manager might be joking. Manager Zhang firmly assured her that he wasn't joking, emphasizing the importance of the matter. He mentioned that they had done their research and had confidence in her abilities. Extending his hand for a handshake, he asked Su Yingxia not to disappoint them. Su Yingxia accepted the handshake, promising to live up to their expectations. Meanwhile, Han Sanchen received a text message from Manager Zhang informing him that the contract was finalized. As Su Yingxia approached him, he asked if she was already done. Excitedly, she informed him that she had secured the contract. Overjoyed, she suggested they celebrate that night. However, their plans were interrupted when Su Yingxia received an urgent message about a meeting. She quickly made her way to the conference room, where people started whispering. Su Haika remarked about not forgetting what they had discussed the previous day. Confidently, Su Yingxia reminded him that she hoped he hadn't forgotten either. Su Haiko expressed disbelief that she had managed to negotiate a contract with Quan Shi Industries and accused her of faking the contract. Su Yingxia asserted that she wasn't as foolish as he thought and that Madame Su was aware of the authenticity of the contract. She demanded that Su Haiko fulfill his promise. Madame Su questioned Su Haiko's opinion on the matter, and he claimed that Su Yingxia had merely gotten lucky and hadn't put in any effort. Madame Su bluntly insisted that he keep his promise. Su Haikou reluctantly bowed and presented Su Yingxia with tea, which she ignored. Su Yingxia asked if there was anything else Madame Su needed and if she should return home to prepare materials for the next day. Madame Su concluded the meeting, instructing everyone to prepare for the upcoming negotiations with Manager Zhang. Su Yingxia left immediately, followed by others, except for Su Haikou, who remained furious and shattered the teacup in anger, vowing to get back at Su Yingxia soon. At home, Su Yingxia, her husband, and her parents rejoiced over her achievement. Su Yingxia's mother proudly acknowledged that her daughter's success was a testament to her hard work and determination. Han Sanchen affirmed that Su Yingxia had done everything within her power to secure the contract, emphasizing that it wasn't just a stroke of luck. Su Yingxia's mother acknowledged that it was Su Yingxia's accomplishment and that it didn't concern Han Sanchen. However, their joy was short-lived when Su Yingxia received a call from Madame Su informing her that she had been replaced by Su Haikchao for the Quan Shi Industries contract. Madame Su was at her home when she called Su Yingxia and suggested that Su Heiko take over the project while she took a break for a few days. Madame Su explained that she believed Su Yingxia's rise to power in the company would result in their family's assets falling into the hands of the outcasts, 
referring to Han Sanction. Su Heicho assured her that he was satisfied with the decision and clarified that he wasn't trying to take credit for Su Yingxia's accomplishments. He stated that it was for the future of the family. Dum Su cautioned him against trying to deceive her again and warned that even pigs couldn't eat tea cakes. Su Heikxiao pledged to work diligently and respectfully bowed. Madame Su informed him that she planned on resting and instructed him to prepare for the next day's meeting. At Su Yingxia's house, her mother expressed anger that Su Yingxia, who had worked so hard to secure the contract, was replaced by someone else. She urged Su Yingxia's father to talk to Madame Su and convince her to change her decision. However, Su Yingxia's father explained that it was Madame Su's decision, and he couldn't influence her choice. In her room, Su Yingxia appeared dejected, but her husband approached her, urging her not to cry and assuring her that no one could replace her for the job. Later that night, Han Sanchen called manager Zhang to inform him of a change or replacement in personnel for the next day's meeting. The following day, Su Heikxiao dressed up and waited in the lobby. When manager Zhang arrived with his subordinates, Su Heikxiao rushed over to welcome him, introduced himself, and extended his hand for a handshake. However, manager Zhang ignored the gesture and inquired about Su Yingxia. Su Heikyo lied, claiming that Su Yingxia was ill and that he was responsible for the cooperation with manager Zhang's company. Upon hearing this, manager Zhang immediately left, stating that they should discuss the negotiation only when Su Yingxia, or no one else, was in charge. Su Heikyo was shocked by the outcome and quickly asserted that he was better at business than Su Yingxia and that their company's cooperation wouldn't be affected. However, manager Zhang dismissed him, expressing disappointment in the insincerity of the Su family and implying they had other options for cooperation. When Madame Su learned about the interaction between manager Zhang and Su Heixiao, she confronted Su Heixiao about his remarks that made manager Zhang reconsider their cooperation. Su Heixiao hastily denied saying anything offensive and tried to justify his actions by stating that Su Yingxiao was absent. However, Madame Su questioned whether Su Heikxiao was aware of Han Sanchen's authority and whether he dared to breach their agreement. Madame Su made it clear that if the negotiation failed due to Su Heikxiao's actions, he would face the consequences. Meanwhile, Su Yingxia was called by Su Heikxiao, who urgently asked her to come to the company. Han Sanchen replied that Su Yingxia was sick and refused to pass the phone to her. Su Heikxiao's anger grew, and he threw his phone on the ground. Shortly after, he arrived at Han Sanchen's location and attempted to punch him but was evaded and retaliated with a kick that sent Su Heicho flying. Just as Su Yingxia entered, she questioned what had happened, and Han Sanchen explained that Su Heiko had been there. Su Heiko got up and asked if Han Sanchen knew who had made the decision to replace him. Han Sanchen declared that he had nothing to say to Su Heicho and clarified that it was Madame Su's decision. He suggested that if there were any issues, they should be resolved by Madame Su herself. Su Heicho was filled with rage as he realized he had been humiliated and chased out. Su Yingxia questioned what had happened, and Han Sanchen explained that Quanchi Industries had decided to put her in charge, stating that they would only work with her, and that Su Heiko had been desperate enough to come and beg her. Su Yingxia mentioned that she had heard her husband say that Madame Su might have to come herself to resolve the issue, but she doubted her grandmother would actually do so. Han Sanchen smiled and assured her that Madame Su would come. Later that night, Su Yingxia's mother confronted Han Sanchen angrily, accusing him of wanting them to live a miserable life and suggesting that he saw their situation as a fairy tale. Su Yingxia defended her husband and asked her mother to stop yelling at him, explaining that he acted in her best interest. Her mother became even more upset with her daughter's response, and Su Yingxia took her husband's hand and retreated to their room. Han Sanchen smiled and thanked his wife for standing up for him, even though he was accustomed to his mother-in-law's behavior. Su Yingxia wondered how he could still smile despite the circumstances. She then questioned why he hadn't revealed the secret that he had been the one to secure the contract for her behind the scenes. She expressed her frustration that he had been humiliated for no reason. Han Sanchen replied that his wife had endured much more than him, so he didn't have the right to complain. Su Yingxia became emotional upon hearing his words, and Han Sanchen suggested they go to bed. The next morning, Su Yingxia woke up before Han Sanchen and nudged him awake. They went for a jog together, and she told him not to follow her from a distance. Han Sanchen was surprised that she knew he had always followed her during their morning jogs. As they reached a certain area of the city with impressive buildings, Han Sanchen expressed his interest in one of them. Su Yingxia informed him that the place was quite expensive 
and a symbol of prosperity. She mentioned that her grandmother had always talked about wanting to own a building like that. This led Su Yingxia to ask if her grandmother would come. Han Sanchen approached manager Zhang and instructed him to send someone to the Uniting Mountains Villa and purchase it. Manager Zhang replied that the family's funds could only be used for company development. However, Han Sanchen handed him a credit card in his name, indicating that he was personally responsible for the cooperation between Fankin Company and Manager Zhang's company. Manager Zhang confirmed that he was indeed the one in charge and mentioned that he had been friends with Kin Lin, the chairman, for many years. Han Sanchen then hinted that the chairman was merely a figurehead, making Manager Zhang wonder if Han Sanchen was the true power behind the scenes. Han Sanchen revealed that he had established his own company at the age of 12 as a way to test his abilities. He explained that Fankin was named after the vertical stroke on top of the Han character of the Han family. Representing the Han family, Han Sanchen expressed his desire to purchase the villa and fulfill his wife's wish to jog in the mountainous area. Manager Zhang reassured him, promising to keep the secret of Fankin Company and suggesting that Han Sanchen could leave the villa if needed. This made Han Sanchen contemplate that if his wife wanted the whole world, he would find a way to give it to her. Madame Su climbed the stairs to check on Su Yingxia, who she had heard was sick. She questioned why the elevator wasn't working and expressed her frustration at having to climb the stairs. Su Yingxia's father asked why she hadn't informed him earlier so he could have picked her up downstairs. Madame Su inquired about Yingxia's whereabouts, and Yingxia's mother directed her to Yingxia's room, explaining that she didn't want to infect Madame Su with the illness. However, Han Sanchen appeared with a cup of coffee and informed Madame Su that Yingxia wasn't actually sick. This statement caught Madame Su's attention, and she demanded an explanation from Han Sanchen. Han Sanchen praised Madame Su for her wisdom and clarified that Yingxia had won the cooperation with Quanxi Industries, making her the suitable person to lead the project. He explained that Su Heichou's role was to replace the person in charge, and Madame Su had misunderstood the situation. Han Sanchen emphasized that only Yingxia could handle the cooperation effectively. Madame Su threatened to sabotage the cooperation out of anger. But Han Sanchen assured her that he knew she wouldn't do anything that would harm the Su family's interests. He asked Madame Su to allow him to take care of Yingxia, and apologized if his words had upset her, considering the well-being of the Su family. Madame Su was left feeling conflicted, contemplating whether she could claim the Su family as her own or if it belonged to Yingxia. At that moment, Han Sanchen's phone rang. He checked the call and saw it was from Yingxia. He answered the call, and Yingxia informed him that she had just finished discussing the cooperation with Zhang Liang. Zhang Liang had agreed to officially restart the cooperation with the Su family on the following Monday. Han Sanchen shared the news with Madame Su, who expressed her gratitude and invited Yingxia for a celebratory dinner at her house over the weekend. Yingxia was thankful, and as Madame Su was about to leave, she reminded Han Sanchen that his idea had led to this outcome and advised him to refrain from coveting the Su family's property. Han Sanchen assured her that he had no interest in their assets. On Sunday, at the Su family villa garden, they gathered to discuss the cooperation with Quanxi Industries, which had made significant contributions to Yingxia's success. Madame Su informed Yingxia that she would be responsible for the West City project, which involved cooperating with Quan Shui. Madame Su also cautioned Yingxia to be cautious of Han Sankin, as he belonged to an external family. She warned Yingxia to consider the Su family's property carefully and to always remain cautious. Yingxia, however, believed that Han Sanchen, whom Madame Su was criticizing, was the one who had helped her secure the cooperation. She decided to trust her own judgment. Yingxia's father arrived and informed Madame Su that the auction for selling the mountain villa had concluded. Madame Su was curious to know who had purchased it and asked for the transaction price. Yingxia's father revealed that it had been sold for 100 million. Madame Su was astonished by the high price. Han Sanchen playfully teased Yingxia about the villa she had been interested in, jokingly suggesting that someone else had bought it. Yingxia wondered who would spend such a large sum of money on a residence. Han Sanchen responded that perhaps the buyer considered it pocket change, but Yingxia speculated if the purchase was made for a beautiful and remarkable lady. Han Sanchen playfully stated that Yingxia was the most beautiful, causing Yingxia to mention that she had already been given to him and he didn't need to offer a bride price again. Yingxia noticed that Han Sanchen had been wearing the same suit for a while and suggested they go shopping together that afternoon. Han Sanchen agreed and offered to pay for whatever Yingxia wanted to buy. 
they decided to enjoy their time together, with Han Sanchen offering to carry as many shopping bags as Yingxia desired. Yingxia expressed her gratitude for Han Sanchen's support and felt that he deserved to be rewarded. Su so Yingxia met Ling Yao after a long time of not seeing each other. They greeted each other warmly, but when Ling Yao mentioned Han Sanchen, she questioned why Yingxia had brought her husband along. Ling Yao commented on Han Sanchen's lack of accomplishments, mentioning that he had been unemployed for three years and still drove a humble motorcycle instead of owning a car. Ling Yao implied that Han Sanchen wasn't worthy of Yingxia's kindness and questioned what allure Yingxia had used to capture his attention. Yingxia interrupted Ling Yao, urging her to stop making such comments and clarifying that she was trying her best, even though she hadn't fully accepted Han Sanchen. Ling Yao insisted that as her best friend, she had an obligation to check on Han Sanchen. However, they agreed that shopping should be their main focus for the day. As they arrived at the shopping mall, Ling Yao couldn't help but marvel at Yingxia's beauty, realizing that no man could resist her. Ling Yao believed that Yingxia would eventually uncover Han Sanchen's true identity. Inside the mall, Ling Yao asked Han Sanchen to give his opinion on a dress she was trying on. Instead of responding, Han Sanchen looked away, causing Ling Yao to draw him closer and make him look at her. Only then did Han Sanchen provide a compliment on her dress, and Ling Yao released him. Ling Yao tried on other dresses, and Han Sanchen commented on each one. However, when Yingxia tried on a dress and asked for Han Sanchen's opinion, he happily praised its fit, mentioning how it accentuated her figure. This angered Ling Yao, as she felt Han Sanchen was completely indifferent to her. She wondered what could have caused this change in him. After Yingxia chose a dress, they proceeded to the checkout counter to pay for it. While they were discussing, another couple entered and snatched the dress that Yingxia had picked earlier. Yingxia confronted the woman and asked why she took her dress, and Ling Yao supported her by stating that Yingxia had tried the dress on first. The woman, looking down on Yingxia, belittled her and poor people in general, stating that they should wear cheap and shabby clothes instead of trying to buy something nice. Han Sanchen was angered by how his wife was being humiliated. The woman then turned to the saleswoman and asked for her opinion on the matter, whether she should buy Yingxia's dress or not. The saleswoman, sympathizing with Yingxia, recommended other boutiques in the area that offered discounts based on the amount of clothing purchased. The woman's husband agreed to the suggestion as there were different categories of guests based on their purchasing power. In response, Han Sanchen declared that he would buy all the clothes in the store. The room fell silent as Han Sanchen confidently declared that he would purchase all the clothes in the store, including those chosen by the couple and his wife. He reached for his breast pocket to retrieve his card, only to realize that he had given it to Zhang Liang for the purpose of purchasing the villa and hadn't received it back yet. Han Sanchen requested permission to make a call to the person holding his bank card, but the couple thought he was being presumptuous or attempting to deceive them by claiming he had forgotten his wallet. The saleswoman advised Han Sanchen not to disrupt the store's business if he had no intention of buying the clothes. Lin Yao, wanting to spare herself from humiliation, urged Yingxia to let them leave. However, Yingxia defended Han Sanqin, assuring Ling Yao that he wasn't the type to boast for the sake of respect. Yingxia approached Han Sanqin and convinced him not to make the call, stating that it was enough. Han Sanqin reassured her that the call would only take a moment of his time. After a while, Zhang Liang appeared in the store. The saleswoman, thinking he had come to shop, welcomed him, but he didn't respond. She asked if he needed assistance, but Zhang Liang walked directly to where Han Sanqin stood and handed him the card, bowing in respect and apologizing for the delay. Everyone was astonished, especially the husband of the woman who had underestimated Han Sanchen before. He wore a puzzled expression, wondering who Han Sanchen really was. Once Han Sanchen received the card, he instructed them to proceed with the checkout. His wife was left speechless, unable to find the words to express her astonishment. As they reached the payment counter, Han Sanchen was asked to enter his password. However, he told the Inksha to do it instead. Initially hesitant, Yingxia eventually entered the password, and the transaction was successful. The total cost of the items they bought amounted to 400,000 yuan. Ling Yao, still in shock, asked Yingxia how she knew the password. Yingxia revealed that it was their wedding anniversary date, leaving Ling Yao wondering why Yingxia had invited her to shop when she didn't have a boyfriend, let alone a husband. Ling Yao secretly hoped for a boyfriend who could effortlessly spend 400,000 yuan. Meanwhile, realizing their embarrassment, the couple seized the opportunity to escape from the shopping mall. The woman questioned her husband if they should simply forget what had happened, 
suggesting they could afford the amount spent. However, her husband called her foolish for not realizing that the person with the card, Zhang Liang, was the same person who had spent 100 million yuan on the mountainside villa. He was afraid to uncover Han Sanchen's true identity. Han Sanchen approached the shopping mall manager and expressed his dissatisfaction with the subpar performance of some of the employees, advising them to address the issue promptly for the sake of the business. As he departed, the manager promptly fired the saleswoman. Later that night, as Yingxia was at home, she received a message notification on her phone. Curious, she checked it and discovered that Ling Yao had sent her a voice message. Just as Han Sanchen arrived, the message began with Ling Yao confessing her love. Han Sanchen approached his wife's side to listen to what Ling Yao had sent. Perplexed, his wife wondered what was happening and why Ling Yao had sent such a message. She also noticed a video attached to the message, showing a man playing the piano, leaving her trying to figure out his identity. Yangsha couldn't help but wonder if the man in the piano video was the person Ling Yao had her eyes on. The man's piano skills were impressive, and his face seemed familiar to Yingxia. Meanwhile, Han Sanchen silently said to himself that he was the one in the video, recalling the events that transpired in the afternoon after they left the clothing shop. Ling Yao had suggested that Yingxia and she take a trip to the bathroom, instructing Han Sanchen to wait for them in the shopping square. As Han Sanchen waited, he noticed a piano nearby and thought that it wouldn't be too bad to play it. It had been a long time since he last played the piano, back when he was just a child seeking solace from the hardships he faced in his family. Han Sanchen had endured bullying from his older brother and had often felt rejected by his own family. The piano became his refuge during those difficult times, and he would spend endless hours playing it, pouring his emotions into the music. As he approached the piano, he felt a sense of pity for it. He wondered if he had lost his touch but decided to give it a try. Unbeknownst to Han Sanchen, Ling Yao had recorded a video of him playing the piano. There were others who genuinely enjoyed his performance, and applause filled the air when he finished. People praised him for his exceptional piano skills, some even admiring his appearance and asking for his contact information. However, instead of responding, Han Sanchen swiftly ran away, evading those who tried to stop him. It took him a while to shake off the persistent admirers. When Han Sanchen finally reached the spot where Ling Yao was waiting, he asked why they weren't in the bathroom together with Yingxia. Ling Yao curtly told him to keep quiet and stop bothering her. She was preoccupied with thoughts of the person who had played the piano, unaware that it was Han Sanchen himself. Reflecting on the situation, Han Sanchen realized that Ling Yao's behavior had been somewhat peculiar. It turned out that he was the person who had played the piano, and as his name was mentioned, he turned his head to see his wife approaching him with a bag in hand. She informed him that she had bought it for him as a gift and handed it over. Han Sanchen was genuinely surprised and grateful as he accepted the present from her. After receiving the gift from his wife, Han Sanchen checked it out and discovered a new shirt inside. Yingxia explained that she bought it because she thought his old one was worn out. She asked if it would fit him, unsure about the size she chose. Han Sanchen was delighted and expressed his happiness by saying he would try the shirt on immediately. Turning away from Yingxia, he proceeded to button up the shirt, while his wife pondered his appearance. Curious, Yingxia asked Han Sanchen if he knew how to play the piano, doubting whether he was the person in the piano video. Han Sanchen pretended not to understand her question, playfully suggesting she was teasing him. However, his wife clarified that she wasn't teasing him and persisted in her inquiry. Han Sanchen finished dressing and turned around to face her, asking for her opinion on how he looked in the new shirt. His wife reassured him that it fit him perfectly. Appreciating her choice, Han Sanchen complimented her eye for selecting the shirt. As they prepared to go to bed, his wife mentioned having work the following day. Meanwhile, Ling Yao was captivated by the photo of the man who played the piano and couldn't stop admiring it. The more she looked at it, the more handsome he appeared in her eyes. The next day, during lunch break in Su Yingxia's office, she noticed Ling Yao smiling to herself and inquired about the reason. Ling Yao showed her the video of the man playing the piano, and Yingxia cautioned her not to get carried away with her admiration, as it was only a shot of the man's back. Ling Yao insisted that Yingxia wouldn't understand unless she had witnessed it in person. She highlighted the man's exceptional performance and impressive stature in the video. Yingxia encouraged Ling Yao to reconsider and suggested that if she took a closer look at the video and thought about it, she might realize that the person resembled Han Sanchen. Ling Yao immediately dismissed the idea, believing it to be impossible. She described the man she envisioned as coming from a wealthy family, attending a prestigious school, 
and owning luxurious properties and a sports car, nothing like Han Sanchin, who rode around on his humble electric scooter. Lin Yao tried to paint a vivid picture, urging Yingxia to imagine it as well which gets messy soon enough. As Han Sanchin arrived at a building and parked his scooter, he overheard some guys mocking him for bringing a scooter to buy a car, assuming he intended to sell it. However, their expressions changed when they saw him entering the building. They hastily instructed a junior colleague to recommend a car to him. The colleague questioned their choice, aware that Han Sanchin likely wouldn't make a purchase. Others speculated that he was merely there to browse without any intention to buy. Despite the possibility that Han Sanchin might overhear their conversation, they remained unconcerned. Their demeanor shifted drastically when they witnessed Han Sanchin selecting the latest model worth over a million yuan. They approached him, warning him not to touch the car if he wasn't going to buy it, believing he couldn't even afford the paint if he accidentally damaged it. In response, Han Sanchin turned to face them, holding up his bank card and confidently stating that he wanted to purchase the car in full. The attendants were shocked, quickly showing their respect and offering assistance. They asked if he needed tea, specifically Longjing tea or Chinese tea. Han Sanchin commanded one of them to retrieve the card, and the attendant eagerly complied, hurrying to complete the task. Other attendants offered him a seat and tea. Amidst the commotion, the same young cafe owner observed Han Sanchin with the car and was surprised. Approaching him, the young man expressed that he already knew Han Sanchin wasn't an ordinary person and that it seemed like the dragon was ready to soar again. However, Han Sanchin interrupted him with a question, suggesting that the man he referred to wasn't the special one. Han Sanchin addressed the young cafe owner as boss, implying that he himself was the special one. As Han Sanchin and the boss laughed together, the cafe owner chimed in, remarking that it was difficult to determine who was the special one, considering everyone's unique circumstances. Han Sanchin, wanting to impress his wife, asked the boss for his opinion on the shirt. The boss complimented Han Sanchin, saying that the shirt looked excellent on him. Han Sanchin felt a sense of satisfaction that his wife had chosen the shirt for him. However, the boss, feeling slightly dejected, decided to show off his own shirt, adorned with a love symbol sewn by his wife. Both men shared a laugh, but their amusement was cut short when the cafe owner's wife intervened, smacking the boss on the head with a serving tray and urging him to return to work. The boss hurriedly obeyed, and the wife jokingly scolded both Han Sanchin and her husband for behaving like old men. She then offered Han Sanchin a refill, which he gladly accepted. Complimenting his shirt, she remarked that Han Sanchin's wife had excellent taste in clothing, a sentiment Han Sanchin agreed with. Later, Han Sanchin was seen at Su's company building, waiting to pick up his wife. Su Yingxia was shocked and surprised to see a brand new car. Han Sanchin proudly revealed that he had purchased the car with his own money. Su Heikyo emerged from the building, noticing the new car and commenting on its model. He marveled at Su Yingxia's rapid financial progress as a manager, unaware that Han Sanchin was the owner of the car. Su Yingxia attempted to explain, but Su Heikyo interrupted her, warning her to be careful and not let her secret slip. Su Yingxia's parents, elated and assuming that their daughter had bought the car, expressed their joy. They interrupted Su Yingxia's attempts to clarify, insisting that they already knew she was trying to present herself well. Su Yingxia's mother took the car keys from Han Sanqian, stating that she would inspect the car. Concerned, she voiced her opinion that the car was too good for Han Sanqian and expressed suspicions that he might use it to attract other women. She believed that even a minor scratch on the car would be beyond Han Sanchin's means to repair. Su Yingxia tried to intervene, but her mother had already reached the car, declaring that she would take it while Su Yingxia could use their Toyota, as it was sufficient for her work commute. Han Sanchin halted her and told her not to worry, assuring her that he would find a solution so he can deal with the problem. The next day, the young man from the cafe spotted Han Sanchin with the Toyota car as he bid his wife farewell and watched her enter the company building. Han Sanchin was seen at the car dealership, where he was warmly welcomed by the attendants. One of them asked if he wanted to reclaim his electric scooter, which they had kept in good condition for him. However, Han Sanchin revealed that he wasn't there for the scooter. He expressed his desire to purchase another car of the same model, specifically one with straight outdoors. The attendants were astonished upon hearing this, wondering if the commission for the new car would be even higher. Yingxia informed Han Sanchin that her mother was unlikely to return the car, prompting him to explain the situation. He quickly scrambled to come up with a lie to deceive her mother. Han Sanchin concocted a story, 
claiming that the car he had purchased the previous day came as part of a buy one get one free offer. He asked Yingxia if she could believe such a tale. However, Yingxia reasoned that her mother would see through the lie and express disbelief, accusing Han Sanchen of taking her for a fool. Han Sanchen predicted her mother's response, imagining her questioning whether he thought she would believe such nonsense. In response, Han Sanchen said he would apologize and admit that he accidentally bought another car. Yingxia anticipated her mother's next comment, suggesting that she would remark on Han Sanchen's wealth. She assured Han Sanchen that she didn't care about his financial status and urged him to be truthful since they were married and there was no need for secrets. However, Yingxia also advised Han Sanchen not to inform her mother about the additional car as it would be difficult to explain, and she might be mistaken as the one who spent more money. Han Sanchen agreed to keep it a secret. Later that night at Han Sanchen's residence, Yingxia received a call from Ling Yao. Ling Yao shared that she had re-watched the video of the mysterious godly gentleman multiple times in the past few days. Each time she watched it, the man appeared even more handsome. She couldn't help but admire his piano skills and his attractive physique, emphasizing his broad shoulders and slim waist. Ling Yao expressed frustration over the fact that no one had a video or photo of the man's face. She believed the godly gentleman must be the most handsome man in the city. Yingxia listened to Ling Yao's remarks during the phone call. As Han Sanqin changed the light bulb, he unintentionally eavesdropped on Yingxia's conversation with Ling Yao. The phone was on loudspeaker, allowing him to vividly hear Ling Yao's words. Ling Yao excitedly shared her fantasy of being proposed to by the godly gentleman in a luxurious restaurant with crystal chandeliers, envisioning a romantic and memorable scene. Yingxia, after patiently listening to her friend's musings, responded that only a man of such caliber deserved Ling Yao as her one and only. She agreed that the idea of the fantasy restaurant was appealing. However, Han Sanchen was surprised when he heard Ling Yao's remark about her husband, noting his lack of expression. The following morning, Han Sanchen and Yingxia got married at the Pearl Tower, also known as the UFO Tower, a renowned landmark in the beautiful city of Yunqing. At the top of the tower sat the most famous luxurious western restaurant in Yunqing, offering panoramic views of the city through its floor-to-ceiling windows. Dining at the restaurant required a reservation made at least a week in advance, and it was known to be quite expensive. As Han Sanchen walked into the restaurant, an attendant approached him, offering assistance. Han Sanchen raised his bank card, indicating that he wanted to reserve the entire restaurant for the 22nd of that month, emphasizing that money was not an issue. News of someone reserving the entire restaurant on top of the UFO tower began to spread. While some considered it normal and unsurprising, Others expressed envy and speculated about the occasion. In Sue's building materials break room, two women discussed the rumors, mentioning that serving at the restaurant alone cost hundreds of thousands. They recalled a similar reservation made a few years ago for a proposal, which had caused a stir among women. One of the women overheard that the new reservation was made for the 22nd, suggesting it might be the wedding anniversary of someone in their office. They cautioned Yi Han not to speak too loudly, as they didn't want Yingxia to overhear and feel bad. As Yi Han continued her talk, expressing her opinion without holding back, she remarked that it wasn't her fault that Yingxia married a poor man, giving her the freedom to discuss the matter openly. While Yi Han continued speaking, they noticed Yingxia walking past them. Yi Han persisted in her conversation, mentioning that she had already rented the closest and highest story building with the best view. She confidently stated that when the time came, they would see who was truly rich. Yingxia overheard everything Yihan said but chose not to reply. Instead, she sipped her tea, finding everything rather mundane. On the day of the reservation, Ling Yao dragged Yingxia along, urging her to follow without revealing the destination. Curious, Yingxia asked where they were going, but Ling Yao assured her she would find out soon enough. Eventually, they arrived at the UFO tower, which surprised Yingxia. However, upon entering, they were warmly greeted by the attendant, who even addressed them by their names. Yingxia questioned Ling Yao about the purpose of their visit, assuming it was merely for fun since the restaurant was reserved that day. Ling Yao informed her that they were invited by someone and told her to wait and see. Yingxia recalled a previous conversation where Ling Yao had mentioned wanting to get a new dress. She noticed Ling Yao's attire and wondered if it was the new dress she had acquired. Lin Yao explained that she had originally planned to wear the dress as the bridesmaid at her own wedding, but never had the chance due to Yingxia's husband's reluctance to give her a proper wedding. They entered the elevator, but to their surprise, the journey to the top of the UFO tower was not yet complete. 
Curious about the tower's height, Yingxia inquired about the number of floors, and Ling Yao looked up at the meter, revealing that there were 49 floors to ascend. Finally, they reached the 49th floor, where the Crystal Restaurant was located. As they entered, confusion enveloped them as they struggled to comprehend the scene before their eyes. They were astonished to see the same young man who had previously played the piano in the restaurant. Overwhelmed by the unexpected turn of events, they stood frozen in place. Su Yingxia was stunned to discover that it was Han Sanchen playing the piano. He stood up as soon as he spotted his wife. Lin Yao, equally shocked and regretful, realized that she had been mistaken all along, treating Han Sanchen poorly and underestimating his talents. It turned out that he was the piano-playing prince she had fallen for, unbeknownst to her. Su Yingxia confronted her husband, recalling that he had previously claimed to not know how to play the piano. She questioned if he had lied to her. Han Sanchen gently held her face, admitting that he had allowed her to suffer for far too long over the past three years. He promised that from that moment on, he would ensure that no one would bully his wife. Overwhelmed with emotions, Su Yingxia burst into tears, expressing how uncomfortable she felt knowing that people had been calling her husband worthless behind his back. She clung to him, finding solace in his embrace. At the Yunshin Commercial Center, people gathered outside the building, glancing at the screen showing petals. Some engaged in discussions about a masculine man who appeared to be searching for an equally strong wife to marry. A woman nearby seemed eager to sign up for such an opportunity. In a hotel room, Yan pondered who could have reserved the restaurant. She entertained the thought of Han Sanchen and his wife Yingxia, but refrained from acknowledging her own musings. The next day at the office, Yingxia's co-workers noticed her newfound happiness and speculated that she had compared her wedding anniversary to others, realizing the stark difference and understanding that it was nobody's fault but her own for marrying a seemingly worthless husband. As Yingxia entered the office, she encountered Yi Han, who still wondered if the woman she imagined with Han Sanchen at the restaurant was indeed Yingxia. Yingxia approached Yi Han and with a flick of her hand, tossed a file towards her, instructing her to go to the west side of the city for an inspection. Yingxia informed her that Yi Han should return and report to her once she was finished. Yi Han couldn't help but express how embarrassing the incident at the restaurant had been for the Su family, accusing Yingxia of having the audacity to boss her around. In response, Yingxia humbly apologized to Yi Han, revealing that she was the person at the restaurant. She added that if Yi Han didn't want to go, she would simply ask Madame Su to find her a new assistant, allowing her to go home and rest. Yi Han was taken aback by Yingxia's words. As Yingxia left, she reassured Han Sanchen in her mind that she wouldn't let her family push them around any longer. Yin retaliated, warning Yingxia that if Madame Su found her idling at home, she might face severe consequences. In response, Yingxia calmly stated that going to the construction site was a small task and not tiring, something she did every day. She mentioned how it caused her extreme discomfort, with heat, sore feet, and exhaustion akin to that of a dog. Yi Han, attempting to provoke Yingxia, remarked that if she were to marry into the Han family, Yingxia would have to endure even more hardships. Undeterred, Yingxia challenged Yi Han, inviting her to feel free to come and experience what she had just described. At the Magic City nightclub, a group of men gathered in the afternoon of the 23rd. They engaged in a conversation about the crystal restaurant that had been recently purchased, speculating that their wives would have been disappointed to have missed such an extravagant establishment. One of the men noticed Han Sanchen and questioned why he was at the club before it even opened. Han Sanchen explained that he was looking for Lin Yang because his wife had given him a shirt and he wanted to find Lin Yang to exchange it for shirts of the same style. The men inquired about his identity as their boss held a significant position in the Cloud City Zone. Han Sanchen casually informed them to let their boss know that he was already there and mentioned his name. They recognized him as the Sue's waste son-in-law and marveled at how someone who lived off others could afford to drive an Audi. One of the men remarked that Han Sanchen's brothers were far superior to him and questioned how he managed to marry Yingxia. As they departed to meet their boss, they tried to recall if their boss had ever mentioned Han Sanchen's name. Upon reaching their boss, who turned out to be Lin Yang, the owner of the Magic City nightclub and a supporter of Han Sanchen, they relayed the message. Lin Yang rushed to greet Han Sanchen embracing him tightly before adjusting himself upon Han Sanchen's request. Lin Yang then instructed the men to kneel down and apologize to Han Sanchen, which they promptly did. Han Sanchen then turned to Lin Yang, expressing that he had an important matter to discuss and promised to resolve it with him as soon as possible. 
Lin Yan led Han Sanchen to his office for a conversation, but Han Sanchen suggested there was no need to bother since he had previously mentioned that someone in the Chengxi project wanted to cause trouble. Han Sanchen proposed a change in personnel in the Cloud City and asked Lin Yang if he had desired control over the area for a long time. Confused by Han Sanchen's seriousness, Lin Yang questioned the sudden change in demeanor. After concluding their discussion, Han Sanchen walked to his car, contemplating the delicious meal his wife would have prepared for him. Meanwhile, Su Heikshou spotted Han Sanchen and called out to him, but Han Sanchen ignored the call. Su Heikou assumed Han Sanchen was intentionally disregarding him and warned that his good days were numbered, teasing a forthcoming surprise for Han Sanchen. Han Sanchen decided to visit a car dealership, contemplating purchasing a new car so that he and his wife could drive together. He hoped that his wife wouldn't be upset with him. However, upon arriving home, instead of the warm welcome he anticipated, he found his wife sitting on the sofa, her head buried in tears. As soon as Han Sanchen noticed his wife crying alone, he rushed to her side, concerned about what had caused her distress. He inquired about the reason behind her tears, and she explained that she had sent Mui Han to inspect the Chengsti project, but Yi Han had been injured. Curious about the details, Han Sanchen asked how it had happened, and she recounted how a group of people had stormed the construction site demanding money. This led to a confrontation and disrupted the transportation channels for construction materials, causing delays and chaos. Han Sanchen reasoned that the number of people involved indicated that it couldn't have been solely orchestrated by the Su family, suggesting the involvement of a third party in Cloud City. Yingxia also shared the afternoon incident with Yi Han before she went to the site. She mentioned how Yi Han accused her of embezzling project funds to buy a car, insinuating that it was time for her to change houses as she had changed cars. Han Sanchen playfully imagined the kind of villa that would suit his wife and smiled, but she was surprised by his reaction as the situation was not amusing to her. Furthermore, Heicho had informed her that he had discovered her intentions and invited her to negotiate the following day at a club in Yanqing. In another scene, Heicho was seen sitting with two ladies at the club when a young man named Cheng Gang approached him. Cheng Gang mentioned that his people had made all the necessary arrangements, as long as Haikyo assured him that he would get Yingxia by following his instructions. Haikyo confirmed his assurance and acknowledged that Cheng Gang was interested in Yingxia. Haikyo had arranged an appointment for her to visit Cheng Gang's house the following day. Cheng Gang questioned Haikyo's motives for dealing with the Su family secretly, considering Haikyo's own connections to the family. Haikyo attempted to explain that Cheng Gang had misunderstood him and that he knew it wouldn't be easy to manipulate the situation. Cheng Gang commented on the prosperity of both Yingxia and her husband, but Heicho continued to withhold information, insisting that he had done his best. Heicho tried to convince Cheng Gang that he had seen Han Sanchen coming out of Magic City that day, engaged in a conversation and laughing with Lin Yang. The next day, Han Sanchen and his wife drove to a building. His wife expressed uncertainty about whether he could accompany her inside as her assistant. Han Sanchen assured her to trust him, assuring her that he was capable of fulfilling the role. However, his wife pondered whether she had been too trusting of him in the past. Han Sanchen exited the car and opened the door for his wife, receiving a message on his phone indicating that everything he needed was ready. After his wife got out of the car, he encouraged her to let others witness their love as a couple. As Han Sanchen and his wife entered the building, they were surprised to come face to face with Cheng Gang. Cheng Gang asked who Han Sanchen was, and Yingxia responded that he was her husband. This prompted Chen Gang to make fun of them, while one of the bodyguards suggested teaching Han Sanchen a lesson. However, Chen Gang dismissed their concerns, stating that he wanted to test if Han Sanchen was truly as impulsive as rumored. Yingxia intervened, informing Chen Gang that she had come to discuss business with him and not to witness her husband's humiliation. Chen Gang proposed a deal saying he would stop if Han Sanchen paid him one billion and promised not to trouble the Su family in the future, but rather protect them. Yingxia found it hard to believe Cheng Gang's words, considering the complexity of the situation. She wondered if there was a hidden instigator behind the scenes. Trying to gauge Cheng Gang's sincerity, she approached him and handed over a file. Cheng Gang returned to his seat to examine the file and then commented on a nice room mentioned within. He asked if Yingxia would come with him. Yingxia firmly refused, which angered Chen Gang, leading him to cancel the discussion. He warned Yingxia that she would regret her decision and released his men to confront Han Sanchen. To their surprise, Han Sanchen easily defeated them, 
leaving them wondering about his hidden strength and questioning their earlier judgment of him as a waste. Han Sanchen then approached Cheng Gang and offered him a chance to explain the matter clearly in order to spare his life. Cheng Gang, however, lashed out at Han Sanchen, accusing him of mocking him and asserting his advantage of having more men. In that moment, they heard a voice from behind, and they all turned to see Lin Yang arriving at the scene. Lin Yang stood by Han Sanchen's side, and Cheng Gang warned Han Sanchen that he had backup and that killing him would not end well for Han Sanchen. Concerned for Han Sanchen's safety, Yingxia wanted to intervene, but Han Sanchen instructed her to wait in the car, assuring her that he would join her soon and urging her not to worry. He made it clear that neither Cheng Gang nor his men would be allowed to harm her. After his wife left, Han Sanchen took a knife from Lin Yang and used it to intimidate Cheng Gang, demanding a confession. Cheng Gang grew fearful, realizing that Han Sanchen was serious about his threats. Later, Han Sanchen is seen holding the same knife in front of Cheng Gang's face while his men are holding him down on the ground while Sanchen is asking the questions to him about the real culprit behind the whole incident that happened. Cheng Gang starts to act like he isn't provoked by the situation even for a bit, so he decides to sway the situation by calling Sanchen out on his bravery. He threatens Sanchen believing that his men will not let Sanin go out of his place alive if he doesn't finish him off before leaving the location. Han Sanchen realizes that he will only continue to waste time on Cheng Gang, so he instructs his men to keep on beating him until he speaks the truth about what he wanted to know from him. While Cheng is getting beaten, he doesn't let go of his Makoism as he calls out Lin Yang for the fact that he has quite some reputation as a gangmonger. But Lin Yang isn't bothered by the situation even for a bit knowing Cheng is nothing but valueless whining as he doesn't stop his men to beat on him continuously. After getting beaten for a while, Cheng finally opens his mouth as he reveals the information regarding the Su family coming to him and the fact that it is Su Heicho's own idea gets revealed in front of the whole crowd. He also discloses the fact that Heicho wanted him to have a relationship with Su Yingxia despite coming from the same family and then exposing the matter in Yunqing. When Han Sanchen realizes what was about to happen as Heicho was trying to the best of his abilities to drive Su Yingxia out of her own family, he fires up instantly as he claims that he could let him go for Chengxi project, but he isn't about to let it happen this time since he made the whole issue personal and engaged Yingxia in the whole matter. Now he is ready to make it quite personal with Su Heicho as he fixes upon the matter concluding the final decision as a death penalty. After making up his mind, Su Yingxia detects that something might be wrong with him as he isn't behaving as his normal self and not even answering any of her questions. Then suddenly, he claims that everything is all right and then decides to move on from the location by starting the car insisting that the incident has been resolved already. Yingxia couldn't help but wonder how the situation has been resolved so easily as Cheng didn't look like a reasonable person at all while she was confused about the men appearing behind him all of a sudden. Instead of answering her questions, Han Sanchen insists that she should be telling her grandmother that the situation has been resolved and move on from there as he is about to take care of the rest. Then the next day in the early morning, everyone is present inside the Su family conference room and their grandmother is wondering where Yingxia really is as she isn't present inside the room in her seat. Su Heicho claims that he has heard that she hasn't come back at all last night which makes their grandmother wonder what he is talking about. Heiko claims that he has already investigated that the person who dealt with their family was none other than Cheng Gang and he insists that he has spent a lot of money to get through his path and asked Yingxia to go to his farmhouse with him. He also points out the fact that she hasn't returned back home as she stayed there overnight. He tries to imply that she has done something like that with some gangsters such as Chang Gang, which starts to concern the rest of the family as they are quite serious about the whole matter. His grandmother also asks the same question, but he seems rather confident in his opinion which makes her feel like she should be discrediting someone like Su Yingxia from the family if something like that truly happened. None of the family members are truly pleased to hear something out of Heicho's mouth as they start to hate Yingxia, implying that Heicho has spoken after doing his proper research fearing that the Su family will become Yongqing's joke once again. But suddenly, Yingxia comes out of nowhere claiming that Brother Zhang has asked her to sort some documents which made her take so much time. When her grandmother asks if the situation has been resolved, she happily answers that it is while Heicho asks her how much it cost her to complete the task in a narrowed mind. She doesn't know how to answer the question as the whole situation was handled by Han Sanchen himself and at that time, her grandmother ends up asking her about sleeping with Cheng Gang directly. 
Yingxia couldn't help but wonder, feeling flabbergasted by the idea of not knowing how to answer the question. At that time, Lin Yang kicks open the door claiming that he has a gift for the old lady while holding on to someone wearing a bloody duffel bag on his head. The sudden entry of Lin Yang makes Hei Cho question his bravery to kick open the door of Su family's conference room as he is thinking of causing trouble there. Instead of talking to Hei Chao, Lin Yang makes his introduction as Lin Yang claiming that he has solved the issue of Su family while wanting to grab some money on the way and the other members of the Su family immediately recognize the name of Lin Yang as he is quite reputable in Yunqing when it comes to power. So Yingxia's grandmother starts to react not knowing how someone like him would try to cause trouble in the house of Su family as they cannot afford it at all. The old lady claims that if he has helped the family in any way, they are ready to do anything in his favor not to let his efforts come in vain while Lin makes sure that there will be money at the end of the deal. Lin immediately reveals the bruised and beaten face of Chang Gang in front of the audience threatening him to reveal everything in front of the crowd. Chen Gang then immediately reveals everything about Heichou, while Heichou tries to ignore all the blames given by Chen Gang, knowing that he is about to get trashed in the middle of it. Chen Gang makes it very clear saying that there was no way he would target the Su family if he wasn't present to make an agreement with him. While Heichou claims that everything that is spoken by Chen Gang is bullshit, she continues to witness the situation unfold as he continues to double down on the fact that he doesn't even know the man. Chang Gang doesn't just stop there, he also reveals the fact that he wanted to attack Su Yingxia and then the matter of exposing the whole incident in front of the whole of Yunqing city to disgrace the Su family, which will eventually lead to Su Yingxia's abandonment. None of the family members could believe that Hei Cho could try to do something like that since Su Yingxia is one of the family members of the Su family. Yingxia herself is quite shocked after hearing the whole incident, and it makes Su Hei Cho kneel down in front of his grandmother for not knowing anything about it claiming that he isn't related to any of it. After seeing the whole situation with his own eyes, Heiko's father Shugu Lin calls the matter to be a momentary confusion for Heicho claiming that she shouldn't be blaming his son too much as he will be educating him for it soon enough. Without listening to any of them, the grandmother then faces Lin claiming that the whole incident is a private matter of Su family and how grateful she is to him for letting her know about all of it and the fact that she is ready to pay any amount to him to make it all fair for him as well. After hearing her words, Lin Yan makes Chang Gang wear the black bag once again on his face and starts to leave the room while calling himself a reasonable character while pointing out the fact that he will be meeting her soon once again. Then the grandmother leaves the decision to Yingxia to make as Hei Chou originally wanted to harm her in the first place which gets her into a dilemma not knowing how to resolve the situation. She explains that it is for her to make a decision as the head of the family but the only punishment for Hei Chou is to not come into the company during this time and stay at home only to reflect on his actions. Hei Chou insists that he understands that he was wrong and agrees with the fact that he should be reflecting on it while everyone agrees not to mention the matter again in the future ever again. It seems that everyone in the family is on Hei Chou and his grandmother's side making it quite clear that she will never go against his way ever. After noticing the situation, he tries to provoke Yingxia focusing on the fact that his grandmother is on his side no matter what kind of mistakes he makes which creates a huge gap between Yingxia and him. Heiko tries to make her understand that she is only being used as tool in Su family and the fact that not cooperating with Kanshu Corporation would never let her be eligible to enter the conference room as she will have to fight with him to save it. On the other hand, Han Sanchen is investigating a shop owner somewhere in the city as he is talking to one of his men on the phone as he has found out the name is Mo Yang. He thinks that the name is quite familiar, and his man informs him that the man named Mo Yang is none other than the number one boss in Yunqing, who was the most powerful five years ago, as it was the peak time of his life in the city. It is later revealed that back in the day, Mo Yang suddenly disappeared despite being the number one gangster in Cloud City as it collapsed overnight in his absence. Nobody has the knowledge of what actually happened behind the scenes, but now it seems that he is running a small shop somewhere in the country along the way. Nobody knows if his wife was the reason why he let everything go out of his grasp, which makes him quite admirable, and there is news about him being in an underground casino, which was in Chang Bin's area. After hearing the news, Han Sanchin decides that he will meet Chang the following night for that reason as he still has a friendship of three years, and there is no way he is about to ignore him. But his advisor claims that it is better not to meddle with Chang, since he has a deep friendship with many big people which makes it better not to interfere in their business. Han Sanchen makes it quite clear that it isn't his decision to make 
and the person behind the phone call is Lin Yang, who is trying his best to calm Sanchen down. As soon as he cancels the call, Su Yingxia enters the car with her angry face which makes him question if the trouble is truly resolved and the fact if her grandmother truly praised her or not. But the answers coming out of Yingxia's mouth don't seem to faze him as he was expecting something similar to happen from the beginning as he promises that he will make her grandmother regret her decision. At the same time, Yingxia is quite curious about Lin Yang helping her as he is quite an uncanny character to help someone like her, but her husband tries to hide away the situation saying that he has spent money on Lin Yang to come and help him for his own cause. She couldn't fathom the fact that her husband had spent 100,000 for Lin Yang to come forward in this matter since it is her whole salary for a year as she continues to phrase him by calling him rich while he is smiling silently knowing that his wife will surely faint or die of heart attack if she knew how much he has in his bank account. When Han Sanchen leaves for his new mission at night, Yingxia wonders if he is looking for another woman as it has been three years, but they do not have any connection between them as real husband and wife throughout their marriage. She blames herself for not being qualified to ask him about his private life, remembering how she would sleep with scissors every night for the whole first year of their marriage. Even though Han Sanchen had no intentions of getting close to her, the scissor was always under her pillow as she didn't trust him a bit, and now it is time to put away for real. She doesn't know how Han Sanchen could resist some beauty like her even after being in the same room for a long time doubting if the guy is even interested in her at all. Meanwhile, Han Sanchen is in the casino of Chang with his companion Lin Yang as he keeps on winning the games quite continuously while all the women around him continue to discuss him. Lin Yang couldn't help but wonder how he is so courageous that he came to the place without any of his bodyguards as he is winning so many games at once continuously. Lin worries wondering if Chang Bin is about to leave him be after finding out and at that time. Chang Bin is watching them through the CCTV wondering how he has so much luck behind him. He is about to invite them to the VIP room as he is interested to see how capable of a person Han Sanchen is as he is excited to show a trapped couple inside his room his private methods. In the next scene, Chang Bin is seen torturing the tied up green haired guy and he decides to reminisce about his past when he and the guy both were fighting with each other. It seems that the couple that is tied up inside are none other than the cafe owner whom Han Sanchen used to meet while waiting for Yingxia. Chang Bin then slaps the hell out of the tied up woman because of reacting to her husband's torture and leaves two of his men to torture the woman tied up on the ground. It seems that Chang Bin used to have a violent past with the guy and as he continues to beat the helpless man in front of him, he makes a promise to be more powerful than what his opponent used to be back in the past. Suddenly, Chang Bin's assistant comes in saying that Han Sanchen has already shifted into the VIP room according to his instructions, and while he leaves the couple in the hands of his men, he prepares to meet Han Sanchen in the VIP room to have a talk with him. As soon as Chang Bin enters the room, he asks for the identity of Han Sanchen, wondering who the guy is knowing that he wouldn't be some small fly when Lin Yang himself came to be his bodyguard. Just the moment Han Sanchen introduces himself by his name, Chang Bin realizes that he is the famous person in the town and none other than the son-in-law of the Su family, claiming that his name isn't that pleasing at all to hear. When Han Sanchen agreed to the statement, Chang couldn't help but feel unbothered asking to know how much benefit Lin Yang took from him to bring him to his casino. While he is busy berating Han Sankin, he ends up asking him about catching Mo Yang, and it catches Chang kind of off guard as he continues to contemplate the situation. The moment Han Sankin tries to make a proposal of some amount to rescue Chang, he starts to react badly thinking that Han Sankin is trying to provoke him by offering money as if he truly lacks funding. When Chang brings the topic of Su family into the discussion, Sankin makes it quite clear that he himself will be enough against him and the fact that he will not even need the Su family to go against him. The men of Chang prepared to beat down Han Sanchen while Chang insists that Lin Yang should just listen to him and do as per is instructed by him. But the moment he is about to light up the cigarette after mocking Han Sanchen, one of his men crashes down on the wall as he has been thrown off badly on the wall being beaten up which catches Chang off guard almost instantly. He couldn't help but wonder how all of his men fell in a small amount of time and the moment he is about to look behind the shoulders, he finds Han Sanchen standing behind him looking with fired up eyes. Then Sanchen instantly grabs onto his neck ordering him to take him to Mo Yang who is tied up back inside his chamber while threatening him with a death wish. Chang then threatens Han Sanchen claiming that his whole family will be ruined for laying his finger on someone like him 
but as soon as he utters the name of Sue family, Han Sanchen holds him up while the man starts to foam inside his mouth trying to breathe. Chang loses his will to argue back with Sanchen and decides to agree with him, knowing that he will surely lose his life by refusing his command. When all of them enter the chamber, the men of Mo Yang who is tied up along with his wife and Sanchen orders Lin Yang to close the door immediately. While Lin Yang follows the order of Sanchen, he starts to beat Chang with all the might inside him, while Mo Yang asks why Sanchen himself came to his rescue as he is already astonished by the whole incident. When both of them have a chat with each other, Chang tries to act as if he has the authority once again, but gets down by Han Sanchen once again as he pressurizes him not to talk anymore. Mo Yang then decides to get his wife unconscious by slapping the back of her head as he asks for Lin Yang's help to take his wife away to safety knowing that he still has some unfinished business with Chang. He then gets ready to make his amends, and Chang asks him if he wants to finish him off or not to settle their accounts, stating how big of a chain reaction his death is about to cause them. On the other hand, Lin Yang claims that Chang's death will bring to good for them, but Han Sanchen insists that he will be covering for him so he should just do whatever his heart wishes him to do. Just the moment Han Sanchen finishes his sentence, Mo Yang decides to work accordingly without even thinking for once and stabs the knife inside Chang Bin's back as he continues to shout. The knife pierces through Chang Bin and Sanchen asks Lin Yang about the arrival of his subordinates. As soon as he finishes his line, they soon get surrounded by people as countless cars enter the building breaking down the door as if they are ready for a fight as multiple muscled-up fighters surround the premise. Han Sanchen then curiously asks about the incident happening with Mo Yang as he gave up his identity and power from being the number one gangster in Cloud City and went to live an ordinary life like all others in the city. Mo Yang claims that he wanted to fulfill the dreams of his wife as she wanted to see how beautiful the Cloud City can be is the only reason he spent three years accompanying in the city. As she felt like she was tired of everything and wanted to rest, he had to put down everything he had accomplished to live with her steadily. The only wish for him was to live a happy life with his wife, and he gave up everything in the end as they agreed to it together. Han Sanchen realizes that he wanted to do everything in his power to make his wife happy, but Mo Yang believes that he wasn't able to protect her through the end as she had to suffer along with him because of his violent past, while Han Sanchen thinks otherwise as he recognizes the man's love. On the other hand, Su Yingxia was quite desperate to know about Han Sanchen's private life as she barely knew anything behind the scenes. Now she is quite desperate to get close to him, feeling that there is a need for it, and at that moment, Han Sanchen enters the room wearing slippers while Yingxia acts like she is asleep. When Han Sanchen calls out for Yingxia, she doesn't answer making him feel like she is truly sleeping so he starts to talk to himself on the matter of Mo Yang sacrificing everything for his wife. He then lies down on the ground discussing how he can be strong and protect his beloved woman with all his might which buzzes inside the mind of Su Yingxia as she gets butterflies inside her stomach. Then the next morning, Han Sanchen goes on to pick up the uncle, aunt, and their family at the airport, but as soon as they arrive, they start to question him about Zhang Lan and Su Guoyo not coming in person. The aunt adds that Yingxia is now in charge of the project and her frame is quite different now which is why she sent Han Sanchen to pick them up making them feel like they aren't taken seriously anymore. When they ask Han Sanchen about taking a taxi to the airport, he claims that he had taken his car to drive to the airport and shows them the car. They instantly get frustrated seeing the luxurious car guessing whether is it Su Yingxia who bought the car after being promoted to her work and their son starts to haggle claiming that he will be the one to drive berating Han Sanchen that he doesn't have a qualification to drive such a good car. The uncle also presses on the situation saying that his son should drive the car calling Han Sanchen incompetent, while the aunt only creates the situation more perplexing for Han Sanchen with their mean comments around him. Then their son posts a picture of him sitting in the car for his friends and then gets on with driving the car in the end as he is desperate to do so. When they reach the terminal, Han Sanchen is changed back to the driver's seat once again and the son of the uncle and aunt worries about paying up for some reason. But his mother decides to keep the situation under control by suggesting that they should handle the matter at hand after reaching her sister's house. When they reach the house, Han Sanchen claims that he will have to bring Su Yingxia as she is about to get off to work so they can enter the house by themselves by going upstairs. The comment made by Han Sanchen gets the uncle mad as he claims that it is no proper way to greet the guests, but his wife calms him down for some reason as she has some ulterior motives. 
When Han Sanchin takes his leave, the uncle questions his wife about her motives for not letting Han Sanchin take their luggage upstairs to which she claims that she isn't about to leave him be at any cost, advising that she is about to handle the matter by herself. When they get greeted by Yingxia's mother, instead of saying anything useful, they begin questioning her about the reason why she left such an expensive car under the care of Han Sanchin. Su Yingxia's mother gets puzzled and the whole family of the aunt then begins shaming Han Sanchin by calling him incompetent hiding the fact that it was their son who truly crashed the car's headlight on the street as it is about to take a lot of money to fix it. Not only that but also, the son of the aunt and uncle also doubles down on the fact that Han Sanchin is the one who crashed the car and he should only be driving the cheap scooter. After hearing all these from her sister and her family, Su Yingxia's mother gets furious and prepares to face Han Sanchin when he gets back at home after receiving Su Yingxia from work while the aunt and her family wait to watch the drama unfold in peace. On the other hand, when Han Sanchin reaches the office of the Su family, he meets some local thugs calling him the waste son-in-law of the Su family. Han Sanchin decides to be calm, but when the thugs continue to bring Su Yingxia into the matter, he warns them and their boss claiming that they shouldn't be looking for trouble as his patience is limited which angers the whole gang. All three of them then start to jump on Han Sanchin but only end up on the street lying down as Han Sanchin mows through the three of them mourning then for the last time. When the thugs leave the premise, Yingxia comes in asking him about the crashed car with a broken headlight and Han Sanchin discloses all of the situations that unfolded back when he went to receive her relatives. When she hears that it was her cousin Zhang Sheng who made this massive ruckus, she promises that her mother will be the one punishing him for doing such a thing and advises Han Sanchen to just wait and watch. But when they reach back home, Su Yingxia notices that her mother and her relatives are all waiting for them on the street already. And as Yingxia is about to speak up, her mother takes away the car's key from Han Sanchen blaming it all on him while restricting from dragging the car from now on as the repairs are about to be heavy while Su Yingxia keeps on standing puzzled wondering what her father and mother are talking about. Yingxia's mother then questions her about finding the car wrecked while remarking on the fact that she told her not to leave the car to Han Sanchen a long time ago, assuming that there will be consequences. When Yingxia is about to answer back to her mother, she looks right at her relatives and guesses that the relatives of hers must be behind the whole scene as they are looking like the only ones who can cause the incident. Then Su Yingxia's mother remarks that if she speaks for Han Sanchen ever again, she will have her divorce him, while her cousin and her aunt tried to manipulate her to take the situation on her side. Sensing the problematic situation, Su Yingxia gets prepared to face everyone by telling them the truth in anger. But Han Sanchen holds her hand to calm her down, making her realize that she shouldn't do something like that. Then her mother shouts at Han Sanchen, claiming that Su Yingxia is the one who is supporting their family, so that from now on he doesn't have to pick her up from work in the future. Then she insists to her daughter that she should be inviting her uncle to the dinner, so she doesn't have to go out with Han Sanchen as she calls him someone irrelevant in her life despite him being her husband which silences Su Yingxia. After hearing all these, Han Sanchen claims that he has something to do, and he will be busy so Yingxia should leave with her uncle if she wants. Then Yingxia's uncle remarks that Sanchen should be self-aware of the situation for not showing his face to the party so he shouldn't be looking for excuses and just not go there with them. When Yingxia thinks to herself about the situation and her husband sacrificing for her, Han Sanchen insists that they should just go and he will be busy with his work so they should just enjoy their night. Then when the aunt and her family is about to attend the party, the son praises her mother for blaming it all on Han Sanchen who wasn't able to answer anything or refuse them at the first place. Then his mother berates Han Sanchen once again claiming that Sanchen doesn't belong to the Su family at all, but he should be careful about not crashing the car once again, knowing that she cannot help him once again if that happens and gets found out by everyone as Han Sanchen isn't present. When her son promises to be careful, the aunt suggests the uncle borrow money from her sister's family as they are buying luxurious cars, meaning that they must have a lot of money to borrow. Then her husband states that he will make sure that his sister will get him 200000 from the table dinner as there is no way he will be able to refuse his plea while planning not to pay the amount ever again. Then at the dinner table when everyone drinks up, Yingxia's uncle asks his sister to let him borrow some money as he is going through a list of difficulties currently. When she asks him about the amount he wants to borrow, he remarks it saying that he isn't interested in 2,000 but 200,000 which makes her leave her seat as she wasn't expecting that kind of amount in the first place herself. 
Then after seeing her reaction, he suggests that they should be talking properly knowing that the cars in her family cost more than 1 million while he is only asking for 200,000 which is quite less compared to 1 million. They don't just stop there, they continue to manipulate her to let them have the amount they are wanting to have from her calling her a rich woman as she is leading the life of one. When the manipulation finishes and wraps up, Su Yingxia's mother agrees to them saying that she will be lending them the amount they want which shocks her daughter and husband to the core as they weren't expecting such an incident to happen. When both of them get up from their seat, the door opens, and someone kicks a person on the door as they are about to reveal themselves. It is revealed that the person who got kicked in the stomach is none other than Su Yingxia's cousin who is then left flabbergasted on the ground from the attack as a whole local gang shows their face to the family. The mother of Jiang Shang reacts almost immediately concerned about her son asking what happened to him as he was beaten so badly after going into the bathroom. She demands the gang who they are and for the reason they have beaten her son. The man then claims that his son Jiang Shang wanted to molest his woman and that is the reason why he beat him in the first place. When his mother asks the question to him, Jiang Shang only nods and confirms the accusation. And then the woman starts blaming the gangster's woman for wearing revealing clothes and the fact that she is the one who seduced her son in the first place. Then the man remarks that it doesn't matter since Jiang Sheng is a nobody to molest a woman for not being qualified and punches the aunt violently for clarification. The man then claims that he is truly a reasonable person insisting on the fact that the person who had molested his woman would have to pay hundreds of thousands and the only way Jiang Sheng is able to leave the place is by paying up the man. Surprisingly, Jiang Sheng then proceeds to create a tricky plot claiming that he doesn't have much money but a car that belongs to Han Sankyun. He begs the man to take the car and leave and at that moment, Su Yingxia remarks the fact saying that it isn't his car but hers so there is no way he can have the authority to make that choice. She makes it quite clear that he has to solve the problem himself and not drag her family into the matter. On the other hand, the gangster is already getting greedy after seeing the beauty of Su Yingxia and he starts to make dirty proposals to her. The man makes it clear that she is in no position to make that claim as she isn't that qualified to make that decision by touching her cheek. At that moment, Su Yingxia's mother comes in to protect her daughter claiming that she is the granddaughter of the Su family and the fact that the Su family will not leave him be if he does anything reckless. For some reason the name of Su family triggers something in the man and he ends up slapping Yingxia's mother to the ground in anger. The man isn't ready to hear anything as he doesn't believe that the Su family can be so powerful while Yingxia claims that he shouldn't be making hectic decisions that can get him to pay for it later in his life. Instead of being feared by Yingxia's claims, the man only makes dirty comments to her and commands his gang to round up the whole room so none of them can get out of the box. His man promises to the gangster that there is no way the lady will be able to escape while Yingxia's mother requests and begs Yingxia to call her grandmother hoping that she will be able to help by coming forth with the other elders. Then the father of Yingxia claims otherwise which makes her mother react to it badly as she is quite concerned about her daughter's safety. Then Yingxia reveals to her mother that her grandmother isn't something that she thinks of her as knowing the reality is quite different than expectations. As Yingxia claims that her grandmother's strength is in the Su family, there is no way she is about to offend these gangsters because of Yingxia alone. She knows the only person who can save her now which shocks her parents at the same time as they shout together asking who, to which Yingxia claims that it is none other than Han Sanqin. As soon as her family hears the fact that Han Sanqin is the man whom she is asking the help from, they are surprised to wonder how she can expect someone useless like Sanqin to help her regarding this matter. Zhang Sheng then claims that Yingxia is only trying to insult him in the process by mentioning the name of Sanqin to solve the problem as if she doesn't want to help him in the first place. His remarks make Yingxia tell him to shut up as he was trying to be passionate, while if she hadn't been dragged by him in the first place, she wouldn't bother to care about it at all. She then immediately rings up Han Sanchen asking where he is, and it seems that Han Sanchen is at home enjoying his lunch alone. Yingxia then claims that she needs some help and just upon hearing it, Han Sanchen instantly heads to solve her problem. But Yingxia's mother advises her to call her grandmother as she doesn't believe Han Sanchen is someone capable of helping them, but Yingxia makes it quite clear that she believes in him and she will not be contacting anyone else in that matter. Somewhere else, the man who tried to abuse Yingxia is having drinks and a meal with Lin Yang at his office to celebrate the new promotion of Lin Yang in Cloud City. While Lin Yang continues to have his drink, he reminisces how Han Sanchen is dissatisfied with his performance 
because of the incident at Chang Bin's casino wondering what would happen if Mo Yang decided to come back to the world of gangsters once again as it would wipe out his whole existence from Cloud City. Suddenly, Han Sanchen breaks the door by kicking on it only to reveal his face to the people inside the room, which surprises Lin Yang as he asks why he is there in the first place. The fat gangster couldn't help but wonder why Lin Yang started calling Sanchen his brother to which he commands him to shut up. Sanchen then moves on with his question of asking Lin Yang if the fat man is his friend or not claiming that he is the one who dared to let his woman go with him. Just upon hearing this news, Lin Yang blasts the wine bottle on the man's head without even thinking twice about the consequences as Han Sanchen is already dissatisfied with his performance. The man couldn't help but wonder about Sanchen's behavior as he lies down on the ground bloodied and asks Lin Yang about his sudden change in behavior. Instead of listening to the man's requests, Lin Yang commands his men to beat the fat man without listening to him as he decided to play with Sanchen's wife. Han Sanchen then gets ready to leave asking if he can handle the rest to which Lin Yang makes sure that he will complete the rest and handle it from there. Back at the restaurant, Yingxia's mother couldn't comprehend the situation as not even a taxi arrived there wondering if Sanchen is sitting back at home. Not only her mother but also the family of her aunt, including her useless son, continues to insult Han Sanchen, while Yingxia's father tries to reach his mother to ask for help. Just the moment Yingxia shouts with her full force, the door opens and all of the people inside the room get frightened thinking that the fat gangster has come back. But the person who opened the door is none other than Han Sanchen and Su Yingxia tears up as soon as she meets eyes with her husband as he proposes to go back home. Suddenly, Jiang Sheng yells asking Sanchen which house they are about to go back to insisting that the fat gangster is waiting out of the door, which makes it quite impossible to go outside. Sanchen smirks wondering what to answer as he has already handled the matter secretly, but decides not to say anything and starts to leave with his wife while Jiang Sheng continues to shout on his own. He notices that nobody there is stopping them from going outside and notices the fat man and his companions kneeling down on the ground which makes all of them including Yingxia puzzled as she wasn't expecting to see something like that all of a sudden. She asks Sanchen why they are kneeling down out of nowhere while Sanchen talks about them falling on the ground as the fat man looks at him and imagines that Sanchen isn't someone ordinary based on his stature. The fat man agrees with his statement claiming that the floor is indeed slippery which is why they fell accidentally while Yingxia detects the truth by looking at her husband's innocent face. She already knows that it must have been done by Han Sanchen as he must have commanded someone to beat up the man for him, which only happened due to her own request made to him. Back at home, Yingxia's mother starts to argue with her husband about scolding her in the restaurant while her husband berates her for promising her brother 200,000 yuan out of nowhere. Yingxia's mother claims that her daughter will get the money from the company as that amount is nothing much for her while her husband calls it embezzling public funds which is completely a crime done against the others. He is concerned about Yingxia's safety which makes her mother cry loudly as she starts to roll on the floor calling her husband useless and her regrets about marrying someone like him. Yingxia's mother blames her husband for everything claiming that she is the one fighting for her husband's reputation blaming him for throwing knives at him by accusing her in the first place. She is quite desperate to get the money for her brother as they are about to come to get it the next day from them, which makes her feel useless as she doesn't have the ability to do so. Yingxia then orders her mother to stop crying and insists that she will be the one handling the matter for her while tearing up at the same time. The moment Yingxia opens the door to her bedroom, Han Sanchen asks her about her uncle trying to borrow money from them once again, and Yingxia asks for help from Sanchen by embracing him with tearful eyes. Han Sanchen asks Yingxia if 200,000 is the amount she needs, and she states that he doesn't have to worry about anything as she will be paying it back to him in the future. Han Sanchen tries to act like he doesn't believe her words which makes her say that she will be writing a receipt for a loan if he needed to trust her more as she will keep her honor. But instead of agreeing to her statement, Sanchen makes it quite clear for the fact that his money is her money, and no matter what amount she asks for from him, he will be making that come true any time she wants even if the amount is 2 million yuan as long as Yingxia asks them for herself as he kisses his wife's forehead. But Yingxia insists that she will be writing up a receipt for him making it believable and shifts to questioning him for the fact of how much money he actually has in his bank account in the first place. To ignore the question, Han Sanchen claims that he just has some more than 2 million which shocks the hell out of Yingxia as she wasn't expecting to hear something like that. Soon Han Sanchen goes to the bank to make an appointment to check out if he can deposit more than 100,000 as he has a special card in his hands. 
The receptionist asks him if he has some facilities, including the card, which makes her doubt if the card even belongs to the bank as she has never seen this type of card in anyone's grasp in her life working for over half a year in her career imagining if the guy came to the wrong bank asking for help. Han Sanchin confidently sits on the chair talking about privileges and demands the president to come to see him as he will be eager to help him in that case. But his remarks don't amuse the woman as she claims that her window isn't for someone like him to participate in the bragging contest, so he shouldn't be delaying her work in the first place. Instead of being haggled by the woman, Han Sanchin claims that only calling the president will confirm her doubts to check if he is bragging but the woman reacts to his words claiming that she will have to call in the security guard if he continues to act like a delusional person. After hearing the ruckus, the director of the bank comes in asking about the situation and the receptionist then starts to explain the situation regarding withdrawing 200,000 yuan and the matter of haggling her in the first place. The director then behaves nicely and tries to make the situation clear for Han Sanchin, but he presses onto the matter by showing his special card of the bank to her thinking that it might change her mind almost immediately. The director couldn't believe what she was seeing with her own eyes and started to apologize to Han Sanchin, claiming that his business would be handled on the same day while bowing down to him. The director then takes the card from his hand, instructing that he can go to the VIP room to rest while she will be doing the work of withdrawal and fact that she is sorry to create the commotion. The director then shouts at the receptionist for behaving roughly with Han Sanchin as it can risk her job if she doesn't work correctly from then on. While the ruckus is ongoing, the whole crowd behind them couldn't help but wonder who Han Sanchin truly is as he is looking young and handsome while being respected by everyone even the bank director herself. They continue to wonder what is happening as if the young master had tried to handle the situation low-key but the receptionist made the situation deeper herself which makes her deserve the punishment. When the withdrawal is wrapped up, Han Sanchin prepares to leave the bank while the director and the receptionist say goodbye to him. The director couldn't fathom how someone handsome and rich like him can be in Yunqing, and it was remarkable how he didn't even look at her for once despite her being so beautiful, sexy, and mature at the same time. She then instructs the receptionist to go back home to rest first as she now has to wait for the notice, but she still doesn't know what did she do wrong even now. The director then blames the receptionist for still acting rough about the things that she has done already insisting that she doesn't even know the basic knowledge of the bank which makes her quite unqualified to have the job in the first place. When the receptionist still doesn't have any clue, the director claims that the one holding the special card which Han Sanchin had in his hands is only an exclusive customization of their bank. Not only is exclusive, but that type of card is only possessed by people who are filthy rich as they have deposited more than tens of billions of yuan at a time which shocks the hell out of the receptionist, as she didn't expect something like that. Han Sanchin then heads over to the house with the money that was supposed to be brought in for Yingxia, and as soon as he stands inside the house, the aunt snatches the whole bag from him, demanding to know why he took so much time to bring it. The woman then instantly claims that they have to do something before leaving so they will be heading out instantly. Then Sanchin's mother-in-law insists that Han Sanchin should be sending them off, while her husband continues to wonder how greedy his relatives can be as they started to head off without even thanking them for the cash, which makes it believable the fact that they will not even bother to return the money ever. Then inside the car, Han Sanchin continues to drive while the whole family of the aunt continues to argue about holding the money worrying if they will lose it as they have never seen so much money in the first place. When Zhang Sheng gets the money to him, he brags to Han Sanchin believing that he may have never seen so much money and Han Sanchin agrees without complaining to the statement even for once. But he then advises the aunt to be careful claiming that there are a lot of pickpockets in the city buses who can try to snatch away the money which makes her yell in anger as he was stating something unfortunate that can surely make their luck terrible. When they head off inside the other part of the city to get onto the bus, Han Sanchin gets a call saying that they have already arranged for someone to get to finish his mission. As Han Sanchin smirks like a successful man, he feels like it will be a shame not to see the whole performance in front of him as it is about to unfold in a mere amount of time. Meanwhile, on the bus, the whole family continues to bicker about how the bus service is as they are keeping on to take multiple passengers at once by stopping at various places in the city. While they are on the bus, someone with a huge bag drops on their lap mistakenly and the aunt continues to bicker about it for a while as the man apologizes to them for suddenly falling down. While the man says sorry for his actions, the aunt watches him with her narrowed eyes as she holds the bag tightly with all her force. 
After returning to their home, they do not find the money anymore, and the aunt has a horrified look on her face after seeing that they have lost the whole 200,000 at once. While the whole family is in shock, someone calls Han Sanchin claiming that the money has already arrived and they will be sending the whole package to him tomorrow, while Han Sanchin realizes that the whole incident will be a huge lesson to the greedy family. At that time, Yingxia opens the car door stating that they are about to eat together the same night, and it will be thanks to him on her behalf for helping her with the family matter. It seems that Yingxia has booked all the hotel rooms of the Grand Hyatt in the UFO building, but the time when they reach the place, the receptionist flips on her even though her booking time was at half past five and it was only 5.25. The man claims that she can reserve a place when there is no one in the place but now it is full, and if she is willing to wait, she can surely reach the rest area while stating that not waiting will make her leave for the day since they have no shortage of guests like her as an insult. Su so Yingxia continues to argue with the receptionist about booking the table, and there is no way she would leave without meeting her goal as she promised to have a good time with her husband. The receptionist starts to get rough claiming that he will have to call in the security to take her out as she causes more trouble inside the hotel. As he finishes his sentence, multiple security guards of the hotel barge in and stands behind the receptionist. Noticing that the situation has gone rough, Han Sanchin speaks up demanding to know what the receptionist means by causing trouble as they are the victims in this case. But instead of accepting his own fault, the receptionist calls their behavior as harassment which presses Han Sanchin to create a scene. But the receptionist commands his men to take out Han Sanchin and Yingxia, and his men try to jump on Sanchin as he is about to grab his collar to attack him. But Sanchin makes his placement quite predictably and punches his stomach, which makes the man lose his breath and sit on the ground. Yingxia, who has seen the scene unfold with her own eyes, couldn't believe what she is seeing as she never expected Sanchin to be on the offense like this ever feeling that she doesn't know this version of Han Sankin. Sanchin makes his voice clear by claiming that he is only getting started which makes the receptionist command his other men to go up against him, but none of them are able to even scratch his suit as they get whacked by him in the air. Sensing the situation has gone worse, the receptionist then threatens Sanchin not to come close warning that making trouble in Grand Hiwat Court will not be ending well for him, but Sanchin commands him to call in his boss. But before he is about to finish his sentence, the boss ends up entering the scene with his personal bodyguard and the receptionist explains the situation to him. Instead of being mad at Sanchin, the boss is quite pleased with him after seeing his combat skills, as he was able to defeat multiple trained guards single-handedly. He proposes to Han Sanchin that he will be paying him 30,000 yuan monthly to hire him permanently as a security guard inside the hotel without knowing his real identity. The whole situation gets Han Sanchin more tempered than ever before which gets Lei Chuan, the hotel owner, mad, and he insists, that Han Sanchin should resolve the matter by apologizing to him. But instead of listening to his lecture, Han Sanchin replies back by commanding him to kneel down to him promising that way he will be spared by him as Yingxia keeps looking at him in pride. As Lai Chuan starts to lose his mind over the whole thing, Yingxia insists that it will be better for them to leave the hotel instead of making a scene wanting to go back home, but Sanchin presses by saying that nobody will be able to harm her as long as he is with her. Sensing the uncanny situation filled with affection, Lei Chuan instructs his man Ahu to go after Sanchin interested in seeing how well he can go against him. The situation is nowhere near simple since Ahu used to be the fighting champion among the special forces. Ahu is ready to show his skills in front of Han Sanchin but before attacking him, the man starts to threaten him. But instead of being provoked by the huge man standing in front of him, Sanchin decides to insult him by calling him a servant which makes Ahu lose his mind over it. Ahu throws his hand trying to punch Sanchin with all his strength, and Lei Chuan realizes that it will be the end of Sanchin knowing that provoking Ahu will only end with his death. But the punch doesn't land on Sanchin as she dodges the attack and makes an uppercut with his leg on his chin strongly which makes him lose multiple of his teeth. Bloodied Ahu lands on the ground losing his teeth and falls in front of his boss who doesn't know what to do as he has never seen it coming. Sanchin makes his place quite clear in front of the boss as he promised he will not have him, and his men have a chance against him. He advises the boss to call in as many men as possible knowing that he will put down as much as possible to stand his ground. Lei Chuan feels that Sanchin is only being arrogant when it's not within his limits and decides to call in Lin Yang even without knowing what kind of relationship Yang has with Sanchin in the first place. 
While Yingxie is thinking about her man to be powerful, Lin Yang and his men barge into the place knowing that Lei Chuan has brought a great proposal for him, which he has been looking for a long time. When Lei Chuan points Yang toward Han Sanchen and his wife, he gets scared shitless after seeing the face of Sankin. When Lin Yang rushes in front of Sanchen, Lei Chuan thinks that it will be the end of his enemy, but instead of attacking Sanchen, the whole gang including Lin Yang bows down to Sanchen almost immediately. Seeing the whole scene unfold, Lei Chuan loses his mind while Han Sanchen instructs Lin Yang to follow his instincts. Lin Yang commands his men to attack Lei Chuan, knowing that it will be the proper thing to do, while Chuan lies down on the ground abused and beaten, especially puzzled as he has never seen it coming. He demands to know answers from Lin Yang, but doesn't get any answers, but only faces Han Sanchen who then questions him about him making such unreasonable troubles. Then when the whole issue gets resolved, Sanchen demands to know if they are about to get any place or not to which the receptionist claims that it will be possible. While Han Sanchen leaves with his wife to the hallway, Lei Chuan sits down on the ground wondering who this powerful man was that he had to face. When the hallway gets empty, Chuan asks about the identity of Sanchen to which Yang answers that he is only looking for his death if he is about to go against Han Sanchen which makes Lei Chuan wonder who did he provoke in the first place which made him suffer this much. Lin Yang then advises Lei Chuan to admit his mistakes which is necessary for him to get forgiven his mistakes. After hearing this, Lei Chuan instantly kneels down to Han Sanchen asking for his forgiveness which makes the receptionist wonder why even his boss kneels down to someone who came inside the door to fight against them. After seeing all these events unfold in front of her, Yingxia tries asking Han Sanchen about his identity wondering what kind of person he is in the first place who can make that such impact, starting from defeating bodyguards with one punch while Lin Yang listens to him as if he is some kind of god while someone like Lei Chuan kneels down to him is creating the suspense even more as time passes. She senses that he must have been spending money again, wondering how much he truly passed down to Lin Yang and his gang, but it still feels unreal to her knowing that no matter how much money one spends, it will never make anyone that capable of making someone like Lei Chuan kneel down to a person. Yingxia is kind of flabbergasted to see that Han Sanchen has a masculine side which makes Sanchen whisper into her ears telling her to find out many more of his masculine sides if she is interested in that as she begins to start getting embarrassed by his behavior. Then Yingxia asks him about making such fire this day as she never expected when the day began, but he makes it clear that he will do anything in his abilities to teach the people a lesson whenever it is needed as he promises to protect her for her whole life. The next day, Sanchen's in-laws, including him and Yingxia, are about to enter the newly bought house of his father-in-law's old classmate and friend Tang. The community they are in is supposedly all upstairs where the house priced is about 21,000 yuan skum. Yingxia's mother claims that he just invited them to show off and makes the clarifying fact that they shouldn't have brought Han Sanchen with them, knowing that Tang's son previously pursued Yingxia, while Sanchen is a waste compared to him to them. As soon as they enter the house, Tang receives the whole family in happy face claiming that he has got a blessing since his son now works in the Qianxi industry, which has an annual salary of 1 million. He then remarks about the fact of asking Yingxia's father if he now regrets that his son didn't get married to Yingxia, who could have been able to get the blessings in the first place. When Tang makes insulting comments about Han Sankin, all of their mates start to speak up pointing out the fact that Sanchen still cooks and washes dishes at their home illustrating him as a waste of the world. Yingxia realizes that the old people have started to insult and humiliate them and at that time, Sanchen claims that their new house is renovating now and when it finishes up, he will also invite him to the new house to play. Su Yingxia herself is also shocked after hearing the news as she didn't expect to hear him say that and at that moment, her mother shouts at Han Sanchen to shut up claiming that he is only proving himself to be more stupid in front of the crowd. Then Sanchen expresses that he bought a house a long time ago and he has planned to give them a surprise which is the only reason why he didn't tell them. Not only that but also, he is about to invite Uncle Tang to play at their home, which shuts him up quite nicely. While his in-laws continue to sweat in pressure, Uncle Tang lets him know that he will surely be checking out on the 15th of the next month if needed and prepares to get into the house as the event is about to start. But instead of hearing him out, the others continue to ask Yingxia's father about the new house asking if it is luxurious or not, and sensing the tense situation, Han Sanchen replies that they will not be disappointed, for sure. 
The next day, Han Sanchen and Yingxia go on to jog in the morning as usual, and Yingxia notices that the mountainside villa is being renovated, which makes her wonder why nothing happened after it was bought and now is being renovated so early. Han Sanchen proudly claims that they must have been anxious to move in, and Yingxia then starts to talk about her mother insulting him yesterday so badly in front of everyone. She apologizes on behalf of her mother and then points out the fact that her mother continued to berate him continuously after returning home asking him if he is about to sell his body parts to make his words come true. Her insults didn't just stop there, she even continued saying that she should have given Yingxia to Tang's son which might have gotten everything better for them in the end as she called him useless. Han Sanshin doesn't feel bad and instead of reacting, he embraces his wife asking why she is apologizing to him in the early morning claiming that he has been used to it, so it doesn't even matter to him anymore. He also reveals that he wasn't lying when he was talking about the house and remarks on the fact that he truly bought a second-hand house for them. Yingxia gets excited to hear about the house and asks him where it is, and he claims that it is somewhere in the town from where she can see the best view of the sky and close to nature. He then points out the mountainside villa which makes her feel that it is unbelievable as she didn't expect he will exaggerate the matter so much which feels like she is listening to ghostly nonsense. Instead of wasting more time, Yingxia then starts to run quickly back home as Shen Lingyao is still waiting for her to go shopping. On the run, Han Sanshin claims that he didn't lie to her as she will be able to confirm it herself on the 15th of the next month which will be a surprise to her and she will like it as well. The following day, Sanchin's car gets stopped by the traffic police for not being registered and while Sanchin realizes that it is true, he gets stopped by loud noises behind him made by a supercar behind him. The man in the driver's seat shouts at him with insulting remarks for driving a cheap car to the Yunding Shan Villa area and gets outside of his car. When the man named Xiao Kong comes in front of the security guard, he insists that he shouldn't be mad at the incident knowing that he will be letting Sanchin move away from the place so he can come in. But instead of calming down, Xiao Kong yells at Sanchin for driving a cheap car in front of him, to which Sanchin answers that as Xiao has broken his car, he will have to pay him for it. When Sanchin finishes his sentence, Xiao Kang fires up once again, threatening him for the fact that he will make Sanchin unable to hang out in Yunqing while insulting him by calling him a worker from some decoration company. He doesn't just stop there and calls his car broken again, and adds that he will smash it again as it is already broken. Han Sanchin insists that he is the owner of the community, but after hearing his words, Xiao Kong laughs at him while shunning him by saying that he is none other than the boss of Cloud City if he can be an owner of the community. That is typically challenging Han Sanchin as he smirks devilishly. When the security senses that the situation is only about to get worse, he instructs Han Sanchin to move away his car from the vicinity for the fact that he hasn't received an order to let him in yet. Sanchin listens to the man and decides to move on and at that time, Xiao Kong shows him the middle finger while calling him a dog at the same time to provoke Sanchin once again. Suddenly, the security guard gets an order via the walkie-talkie as he was instructed to let Han Sanchin move in as he runs up to him almost immediately. The man not only behaves well but bows down to Sanchin asking him to forgive him to which Sanchin acts humbly and advises him to continue following the rules all the time. The security guard is in shock as he has learned that Sanchin has bought the villa of the mountainside which was sold for nearly 100 million and the fact that he is the mysterious buyer wondering what kind of reaction Xiao Kong will make after hearing the truth. While Xiao Kong was moving onto the road close to the mountainside villa's front, his woman was asking about its auction which was done for nearly 100 million which shocked the others. Xiao Kong then claims that the information is true as it has a mysterious buyer and the reason why the villa is so costly is that the Spring Ong Yending Mountain can be seen from the villa quite nicely. While the woman continues to smother all over him, he insists that his villa isn't that bad either to charm her in the process as he is interested in moving the conversation into his bedroom. But shockingly, at that moment, Han Sanchin arrives and questions them for coming into his property without any kind of permission. When Xiao Kong questions him about his motives, Sanchin makes it clear that he is the owner of the place, but instead of listening to Sanchin, Xiao Kong starts to react badly as he doesn't believe that someone like him can buy so luxurious villa while he only drives a broken car in the first place. When Sanchin finishes listening to the man, he makes it quite clear that the Yunding Mountainside Villa has strict rules if the trespassers enter the area without permission since they have to get severely punished. Xiao Kong gets mad at Sanchin after hearing him out and decides to leave the car to face him instantly as he grabs his collar while threatening him. 
When the situation gets dense, some security guards approach them and Xiao Kong makes a complaint to Captain Yan, I pointing at Sanchin to blame him for pretending to be the owner of the villa. But the situation goes differently as soon as Captain Yan notices Han Sanchin and asks him if Xiao Kong is trespassing and threatening his life while confirming that the people who sneak under the mountain villa area will be severely punished. Xiao Kong couldn't help but wonder what he was listening to with his own two ears and questioned Han Sanchin's identity once again as he still couldn't believe that someone driving a broken Audi could own the mountainside villa. When Captain Yan realizes that the man must be from the Kong family as they have lived in the area for a long time, he insists that he will be punished. Xiao Kong suddenly starts to fear what is about to happen to him, and as he realizes that there is no way out of the situation, he decides to kneel down to Han Sanchin after admitting his mistakes quite quickly as he begs for his forgiveness. The guards then force Xiao Kong to come with them and he is about to be punished, which makes him request Han Sanchin to let him go. Sanchin listens to his plea and decides to leave Xiao Kong alone, claiming that he doesn't want him to face consequences and for that reason, he asks Captain Yan to let him go. When Captain Yan leaves Xiao Kong, he instantly goes onto the feet of Sanchin thanking him for forgiving his mistakes as it would have been miserable for him otherwise. He then announces his name is Kong Wu and requests him to let him know anything if he needs help in the future. The day comes when it is the family dinner of the Su family and in the event, Su Heikou starts to act recklessly claiming that he didn't feel like Yingxia would be wise enough to keep up a good relationship with the Queen Shu industry. When she remarks the fact that the deal would have gone far better without Heichao, he points out the fact that she has been spending too much money all this time doing dirty work and asks if she doesn't fear that the grandmother will check into her. Su Yingxia doesn't show any fear and decides to attend the event without thinking about her own character even once. While sitting at the table, Heichao brings up the topic of Yingxia having two cars for herself and if she wants to talk about it to her grandmother. The grandmother gets flabbergasted after hearing from Heichao and Yingxia goes on to verify the information as if it is nothing but true. Su Yingxia claims that she bought the cars with her own money and not from the company's money, and at the same time, Hei Cho and Yi Han continue to make a joke out of her as she isn't supposed to have any kind of money in her account. When everyone at the table starts to press about the situation, Hei Kyo also reveals that Yingxia is about to change houses which will be revealed on the 15th of next month. The whole family present starts to present on the matter of her relationship with the Queen Shi industry, and as the grandmother gets annoyed by the whole endeavor, she asks for an explanation from Yingxia as she doesn't believe her at all. But Su Yingxia is ready to give them every explanation and is ready to show them the ledger of the company to prove her innocence as she is ready to be confronted. But when Heicho doesn't calm down no matter what, Han Sanchin stands up from his seat claiming that it is his money to buy all the cars and houses asking if there is any kind of problem. Su Heikshou only laughs at the remarks made by him asking him if he isn't afraid of any kind of humiliation as Heikshou is joined by the whole family afterward. Yingxia's mother loses her mind over the whole thing and starts yelling at Sanchin and even when Heikshou joins her bandwagon. Sanchin claims that Heikshou is only a joke in his eyes. As the situation gets rushed into a commotion, Su Heikshio jumps from his seat to throw a punch at Han Sanchin as he dared to make comments about him while laughing at him as well as Sanchin stands still in his position in pride. Han Sanchin stands in front of Su Heikshio while insulting him at the same time claiming that Su Heikshio isn't even close to being his opponent which angers him even more. Soon, his grandmother yells at him commanding that he should just stop and go back to his place which makes him release the collar of Han Sanchin in an instant. But he doesn't just stop there, he continues to ask his grandmother if Su Yingxia has surely embezzled a lot of money, while claiming that leaving her be will only cause problems for business in the future as everyone in the company will get inspired by her. But his grandmother flips on him by calling him out on his fraudulent cases in the past as she had enough of him bullshitting her already. Everyone siding with Su Heikshio, including his father and Yi Han, starts sweating in fear and confusion almost instantly seeing that the incident has gone wrong for them. The grandmother leaves them advising them to have a good meal, and at that moment Yi Han starts conspiring with Su Heicho, noticing that their plans have failed, and they might need a new way to deal with their problematic situation. Finding no new ways to deal with their problem, Su Heicho decides to do something when his suspension ends in the next month as he will be returning to his daily life in the Su family company once again. Then his father starts to interrogate his own brother about the new house that Han Chen was talking about all this time. This incident instigates a new fear inside Yingxia's father, and as his own brother wasn't enough, 
The whole family starts to talk about it as if they are quite excited to see their new house while only trying to tear him down in the process. Yingxia's father bows his head in disappointment and fear and decides to agree with their statement, saying that he will let them know about the location. Hanchen comes in claiming that there will be a car to pick the whole family up when the time comes so they will get to know about the house quite soon. He also reveals the fact that since the place is quite special, ordinary cars might not be able to get into the area which instigates Heiko's father to talk about the fact that his new house might be in the mountain alley since it is the only place where that can happen. Little did he know that it is truly what they are thinking about without even expecting it in the first place. San Hanchen questions Yingxia as she wants to invite her grandmother, and at that time, Heicho's father brings up the topic of the mountainside villa, once again which makes Yingxia's mother stand up from her seat in anger. But Hanchen stays confident in his statement as he knows the truth behind it. Heicho's father claims that he is the one rejecting the invitation even before the event starts so it will not be necessary to invite the grandmother. Back at Yingxia's house, she gets so angry that she starts breaking everything inside the house as she loses her mind over Hanchen not being able to control his own mouth. She insists that she expected to rent a decent second-hand house to fool their family friend Tang Cheng. But she regrets the fact that everyone now thinks that they have truly bought a house in the mountain alley. She even goes so far as to order Yingxia to divorce Han Sanchen while insisting that she should divorce him as she bets on her relationship as mother and daughter. But Yingxia flips on her own mother claiming that there is no way that she will be divorcing him because of her insane talk which impresses Han Sanchen as he keeps looking at his lovely wife. Her mother couldn't even believe even a bit why her daughter was protecting her husband and fighting against her own mother while she hates him so much. Her mother orders her to get out of the house and claims that she will not be seeing her face anytime soon, but Yingxia argues back with her mother stating the fact that Han Sanchen was saying nothing but only the truth. Not only that but also, she clears up the confusion regarding the purchase of luxury cars and even the money that was given to her uncle. But there is no way her mother would believe her so she continues to argue back with her thinking that she is only trying to protect her husband in the process of argument. Yingxia's mother makes her final command by saying that the whole trouble was created by Han Sanchen only and he is the only person who would be fixing it up since otherwise, their marriage will soon end due to the clash as she will be forcing Yingxia to divorce him as soon as possible. The next day, Han Sanchen takes Yingxia out to a special dinner, which makes her wonder what reason there would be behind Sanchen taking her somewhere special to eat. It seems that the 15 days are about to come tomorrow, and he is about to take her to their new home the same night. It makes Yingxia question his consciousness as her parents are almost going insane by the whole endeavor. But he doesn't seem to be in a hurry which makes her wonder where their new house is. Han Sanchen claims that he has already elaborated to her about the location which makes her question her memories since he has only shown her the mountainside villa in the villa area of Yending Mountain. She thinks that he is only joking with him while the situation is clearly getting out of hand as her dad's classmates and her relatives will be present the next day to visit their new house and the fact that he still doesn't want to talk about the topic of the new house starts to get her insane in the first place. Sanchen insists that he is only telling the truth but she just doesn't want to believe him at all and just when Han Sanchen is about to have a sip of his wine glass, some guy comes up to Yingxia as he has recognized her from the distance. It seems that Yingxia recognizes the man and it is none other than Tang Chen Yi's son who is the classmate of her father. She thinks that it is not that good of a situation to meet Tang Long so suddenly, and the woman with Tang Long starts calling out to Yingxia, asking if she is the woman who wasn't able to get his man. When the woman starts to brag about Tang Long, he tries to hide his arrogance and states that he is nowhere considered excellent since he only earns one million in annual salary, which is far from it. Then he notices Han Sanchen standing beside the table, and he makes it noticeable that Han Sanchen is quite famous in Cloud City. Han Sanchen decides to act humbly in the situation while trying to joke with him, insisting that he should have brought a pen with him to have his fan autograph, but Tang insults him by saying that he doesn't want the autograph of the first useless son-in-law in Yunqing as he starts to laugh. Tang then goes further into insulting Han Sanchen, insisting that he shouldn't be showing his face to the public as he doesn't have the right to do so. Yingxia gets disturbed by the whole incident and stands up from her seat to shut him down by advising him not to disturb their date which makes him go forward asking if she doesn't feel bad after being together with someone so useless like Han Sanchen. He brags about being in the Qianxi estate business and states that he will have the opportunity to deal with Yingxia later as she is currently working with them at the moment. He claims that upsetting him will be resulting in getting no cooperation in exchange on behalf of the Su family, 
which shocks Ningxia realizing that Tang is going too far in rage. Tang then also claims that she will have no ways other than crying and begging him, and Han Sankin thinks standing from afar realizing that Tang should be joined by Zhang Liang's invitation. But he is pushing to find death early which might make him do something hasty as soon as possible. Yingxia asks Tang if he is done using his stupid words for nothing and advises him to leave them be in peace. Tang pulses in anger seeing the bravery of Yingxia, but before he leaves, he claims that he will be going to see their new house with his father the next day and insists that it should be better than the house they have bought recently. Yingxia then comments that she doesn't welcome him at all, but she will have to invite him if he continues to want to show off for no reason. Tang then comments on various stupid remarks feeling like he is the king of the world talking about elevators as he leaves with his girlfriend from the restaurant while laughing. Han Sanchen remarks that it is quite unexpected that Tang can work in Qian Shi estate and assures her promising that Tang will not be messing with her anytime soon. But Yingxia seems devastated and puzzled when she questions Sanchen about an elevator inside their new house and if it is better than what Tang Cheng has in desperation. She proclaims that she wouldn't be able to see someone like Tang show off in front of her as she will not be taken down by Tang Long and the Su family the next day. Han Sanchen then reassures her by calming her down and advising her that they will be going to their new house as soon as they finish up their meal. Han Sanchen is confident that those who are laughing at them will definitely be beaten by him the next day when they get to see their new house. When Han Sanchen speeds up their car with Yingxia to move into the way of the Mountain Alley Villa, she gets nervous and starts calling out to him as she doesn't know where they are going at all. Han Sanchen claims that they are about to go to their new house, but Yingxia couldn't help but wonder if they are going towards the Mountain Alley Villa since they are forbidden to enter the area if they aren't registered to enter the area. As soon as the security guard starts to come in front of them, Yingxia gets more nervous realizing that they will only be kicked out and ashamed in front of everyone, so she begs Han Sanchen to turn around the car as soon as possible. Yingxia thinks that Han Sanchen is about to get them abused this time without realizing that he has truly bought a house in the area, while she still cannot forget about the remarks made by Tang some time ago. But instead of being ashamed or assaulted by the guard, he salutes them in respect and opens the roadblock which makes her wonder what his reason might be behind the whole endeavor. She couldn't help but wonder why the security guard would be letting him go wondering why Han Sanchen had the time to buy the security of the Yunding Mountain Villa. Soon they appear in front of everyone's dream house and Han Sanchen gets out of the car before helping Yingxia to get out of the car. Instead of being amazed by the whole incident, she feels the heaviest shock possible reminiscing about the fact that every villa in the Yunding Mountain is a private area which makes it forbidden to trespass bass without the consent of the owner. At that moment, Han Sanchen claims that they are already at their house's doorstep so she should just get out of the car and have a look since it is her house as well. She couldn't help but wonder how something like this might be possible as they are currently standing in front of the most luxurious and expensive villa in the whole country at the moment in Cloud City. Sanchen remarks that it will be their home from this day onwards while giving the house key to her so she can open the door of her own house and confirm the whole truth behind it herself. As Yingxia is about to open the door, she feels shaky as she is unable to open the door with the house key. She asks her husband if there is any way that he would lie to her knowing that if someone finds them trespassing will make their life hell if the owners find out anyhow. Han Sanchen claims that he knows about that already but since they are about to access their own house, he isn't thinking about it much. Yingxia sighs and opens the door with the key which only gets her even more surprised, and when she finally gets to see the inside of the house, Han Sanchen advises her to check out her own house. The house not only has the shiningest walls, but on that wall, a framed picture hangs which is of their own marriage where Yingxia looks quite annoyed reminiscing about the fact that she didn't want to marry Han Sanchen from the beginning. Yingxia cries her eyes out as soon as she meets eyes with the framed picture of her marriage, and she claims that when her grandfather forced them to take the wedding photo, she didn't want to see the finished version at all as she didn't agree to get married with someone like him. Now it has been three years and she thought that the photo was long gone, but she is surprised to see that Han Sanchen has taken care of it for all this time. Han Sanchen insists that there is no way he would lose the photo, but Yingxia requests and begs him to take it down, but he doesn't understand why she would want to do that. She then points out the unwillingness on her face in her own wedding photo and questions why he would treat someone like her so nicely which makes her cry unbearably. Han Sanchen only answers her saying that she is his wife after all, and it is nationally certified at the same time, which makes it only normal for him to do so. 
After hearing Han Sanchin, she runs into his arms elaborating that she doesn't want to see it so he can throw it away and burn it down since she wants to reshoot the photo with him once again. Both of them get engaged in a romantic kiss as Yingxia finishes her sentence while Han Sanchin does the same, feeling astonished. When Yingxia gets a grasp of the situation, she releases the kiss and wonders why she wasn't able to resist herself in the first place. But at that moment, Han Sanchin gets up on her to elaborate on the fact that it was his first kiss just now while Yingxia thinks the same in her own mind. After all this time reaching the first checkpoint of his life, Han Sanchin ends up asking her if they are about to have the first night of their whole life while touching her chin. But as Yingxia gets embarrassed by the whole situation, she ends up kicking him on the fact insisting that he should get out as she starts to feel awkward. Yingxia runs away in embarrassment only to lock the door of the bathroom and Sankin keeps on knocking to ask her if she is about to hide inside for a lifetime or not as she is forgetting that they have still to check out what their new house looks like. But on the inside, Yingxia continues to regret not taking decisions to take hold of the situation thinking that men typically do the work and now feels like she has screwed up badly. She thinks to herself that maybe the image in Han Seichen's heat must be ruined now knowing how she reacted after losing control. But while she is deep inside her thoughts, Sankin keeps on asking her what brand her lipstick only to provoke her even more so she ends up unlocking the door in the end. Suddenly, her phone rings up and it's her mother who is yelling to know where she has been all this time being concerned about the day tomorrow knowing that they will have to arrange something to go up against everyone. She also insists that if Yingxia doesn't come back home soon, Han Sanchin will have to sleep on the street as he has already done enough damage for them this time. Yingxia lies to her mother saying that she is working overtime and they will be back soon when she finishes and wraps up for the day. Yingxia thinks of giving her mother a pleasant surprise and she decides not to let them know anything about their new house. She thinks that everyone who is waiting to laugh at their face tomorrow will go insane and feel like getting slapped by her when the time finally comes. The next day, Tang and his whole family including all of his classmates are waiting for the car to arrive so they can visit the new house and hoping to embarrass them there as well. He and his son continue to contemplate if they have a house in the same community or not and his son looks confident thinking that it might not be the case since they are way out of their league. They are unable to think that Han Sanchin could manage something better than what they currently have as they still have the image of useless Han Sanchin inside their mind. Tang's son calms him down by suggesting that he will be changing houses if they end up buying a house in the same community since they don't want to be in the same neighborhood as them. But at that moment, Tang suggests his son make better decisions when it comes to spending as he shouldn't be making hasty decisions even though it is more than one million a year. Everyone in the neighborhood start praising Long as he has a stable job to admire about as they continue to shower him with praises. Long then elaborates the fact that he has been preparing to change to another company and when it becomes successful, he will be telling everyone about that as well to make his popularity even more. The others standing around him couldn't help but wonder why he would change companies even though he is earning one million a year since it is like a dream to them. Long starts to brag about going to work for Qianxi Estate soon while making a point of the fact that Qianxi Estate is a sub-company of Yan Jing's Han family who are supposed to be the top rich family in the whole country. As soon as the crowd hear about the news, none of them could believe how Yan Jing Han's family would come to Cloud City for their business, while others think that working in that type of place means that he is typically working for the Han family that has a boundless future in the end. As they wait suddenly, a luxury bus appears out of nowhere, which gets them flabbergasted as soon as they notice a classy butler coming out of the vehicle. The butler gives them a green signal to them to get inside the bus since they are about to go to Han Sanchin's house, so he will be taking them there. Tang and his son Long both are out of their mind about how expensive the bus tour might be since it doesn't look like these sorts of guides cannot be bought by ordinary people in society. Tang starts to have doubts about their theories so he ends up asking his son if he was right about saying that his friend will have a worse house or not. Long then claims that there is no way they would have a better house than them if they do not have a house inside the Mountain Alley Villa, which is the most expensive place in the whole country. Meanwhile, in front of the entrance of Su family's villa, Su Heishou, his father, and even Yi Han are flabbergasted out of their mind as soon as they arrive for not being able to grasp the situation. The butler of the luxurious bus elaborates on the state of the event to all of the family members of the Su family that he had been entrusted to pick the whole family up to get them at the new house of Han Sanqin. Everyone belonging to the Su family grasps under pressure wondering where Sanqin might have bought his house and the amazing state of the luxurious bus, 
makes them wonder more about what comes ahead of them as they are quite unsure of the situation. They are now sure that Su Yingxia didn't really make money from the company as the state of the situation makes them realize that she made millions at once, which is quite unbelievable. At the same time, some of them blame Yingxia for stealing money of the company, thinking that all the things they are seeing in front of them must have been made by stealing from the company as she was handling the matter with the Qianxu industry herself. But Su Heixiao is confused remembering the conversation that he had with his companion and most of the details continued to match that Han Sanchen has already sent buses to people to make them visit their new house which matches the description of visiting the Mountain Alley Villa knowing that too many cars aren't allowed inside the area. He burns in jealousy wondering how Su Yingxia and his useless husband might have done something like that wondering if they have surely bought some place in the mountain valley of Yunding. Su Yi Han continues to blabber about Yingxia to make the correct of the situation thinking that she was moving away huge amounts of money under their company. Su Heixiao claims that he will make sure of that once he returns to the company promising that Yingxia will not be able to any kind of amount from the company anymore while making her promise that she will be honest with him from now on, otherwise, they all will be dragged into the mud at the same time along with the others. But while Su Heixiao is taking deep breaths thinking about how to move on with the situation, the whole crowd of the Su family in the back of the bus grass, an excitement feeling like they are moving into the wrong place thinking that there is no way Han Sanchen could buy something so luxurious. They point their finger toward the villa area of Yunding Mountain and keep on questioning the guide if they are coming into the wrong place, and then the guide corrects them by saying that they are indeed going to the Yunding Mountainous Villa area this day. Instead of understanding the situation, People continue to ask the guide if they are the wrong people being taken into that place or not and the guide confirms that he indeed made a correct decision as they belong to the Su family since they are going to the new house of Han Sankin. The guide calms everyone down by saying that they should just return back to their seat since they are the only Su family in the city. After making it to the entrance, everyone grasps and shivers as they are standing in front of the most luxurious place in the entire Cloud City, which was placed under 100 million bidding prices. None of them were about to find out about the owner, but all they know is that he is someone who has a lot of money and is nothing less than a gold master. Su Heixiao and Yi Han both are confused wondering what the hell is going on since Han Sanchen decided to send them somewhere luxurious. Heixiao only thinks that Su Yingxia might have framed them since entering the area brings a lot of restrictions, which is considered an illegal tact for the trespassers considering it is private property. Not only that, the consequences of violating the rules might be more serious than what they can truly think of as they start to think that leaving the place might be their only hope currently. Hoikcho feels like he was about to be killed by Su Yingxia, who has conspired against all of them as he starts to leave with Yi Han and his father. But as they are about to leave the premise, the same white car driven by Han Sanchen arrives in front of them, and out of that car, Su Yingxia and her parents come out including Han Sanchen himself. Han Sanchen asks if they are planning to go back home, but since they are already in front of his house, they should just go inside and sit down to enjoy their day. Without verifying the incident, Su Heiko holds onto his collar, almost instantly asking him if he and his family want to execute them all unfairly. At the same time, Su Yi Han yells at Su Yingxia asking if she doesn't know about the prorogating rules of the area knowing that bringing them illegally will be a serious offense according to the rules. On the other hand, Han Sanchin squeezes the hand of Su Heixiao, questioning him about his nervousness, if he is scared of their house being bigger and better than theirs, which might make him lose his bet. He then exclaims, claiming the fact that his grandmother knows about the situation might be harmful to him, while everyone in the Su family starts to blame the parents of Su Yingxia as they begin to feel out of place in the middle. At that moment, Su Yingxia decides to speak up as they are only about to enter their own house and the fact that they are only trying to embarrass her own family members makes it truly unacceptable by astonishing everyone. Su Yihen thinks that she is only pretending too much since someone like her cannot afford a place like that, and Yingxia ends up showing the key to their house asking it isn't her, then if it is her or not. Su Yihen claims that Yingxia is only pretending but everyone will find out the truth when she goes to open the door. By observing the situation, Su Yingxia ends up opening the door of the house to make them realize how wrong they are to misjudge her answers as the whole crowd gets shocked. Su Yingxia starts to get inside the house while welcoming everyone inside. Su Yihan knows that even as the person in charge of the Cheng Xi project, Su Yingxia would never be able to make up so much finances to buy something like that. 
Not only the Su family, but all the classmates of Yingxia's father continued to wonder how someone like them could live in such a place like that as it is such a hard idea to digest inside. Lon's girlfriend then questions him about his consciousness as he has already told everyone that Su Yingxia would never be able to buy such a place as the mountainside villa. Wang claims that they might have borrowed the house for a while, but the idea doesn't seem so suitable since no one would have lent such an expensive and luxurious villa to someone even if they decide to pay a gracious amount. While Long continues to burn in jealousy, Han Sanchen stands in his own pride which makes him think if Han Sanchen is the secret gold master everyone is talking about. But he couldn't match the description since to everyone, Han Sanchen is nothing but a waste in the whole cloud city which makes it quite impossible for him to buy such a house like that. Watching Su Yingxia, Long curses her in his own mind wondering how someone like can her live in a mountain villa while he thought that he will be the one taking advantage of his position when she entered the Qianxi estate to make it difficult for her. He thought that his actions might have taken her to his bed, but he didn't realize that she would have the opportunity to live in a mountain villa worth hundreds of millions of dollars right now. While Long realizes that his plans have fallen through again, Yingxia's mother welcomes everyone to her new house so all of them can have a look inside. Despite everyone's jealousy, they are excited to see what a billion-dollar villa looks like inside as Su Haixiao and Su Yihan are still in their thoughts of digesting the whole incident unfolding in front of them. Su Haixiao is heavily confused to realize that he could have slandered Su Yingxia by taking the company's money, but even if she hollows out the assets of the Su family, there is no possibility of her being able to buy the place. Then Su Yingxia continues to wonder if they might have taken Han Sanchen the wrong way as their grandfather used to refer him to marriage with Su Yingxia. But it still doesn't make sense to Su Heikxiao, knowing that all these years, Han Sanchen only acted as a useless waste in front of everyone. Yi Han agrees with his statement, knowing that there is no way someone so rich as him might have been humiliated in Su family house for three years. Everyone starts to praise as soon as they enter the house feeling that their house looks nothing but noble despite its simple interior. As everyone begins to praise Su Yingxia's parents, they blush gulping down all the pride inside and Yingxia's mother faces her uncle asking if the grandmother is about to come to visit them while claiming that she might be blaming her uncle for not bringing her in their house. Instead of listening to any of the words, Yingxia's uncle starts haggling with her father asking if he truly bought the house as he remembers that a mysterious buyer bought it with a big deal but there is no way that his wimpy brother will be that person which makes it sound more than impossible. Her mother comes between backing up her husband claiming that they have bought the villa with real money so there shouldn't be any kind of issues in between. Su Heiko comments about her family's financial situation which makes it quite impossible for them to have someplace like this. When she notices that Han Sanchen is looking right at her and smirking, she argues with Yingxia's uncle claiming that she doesn't need to declare the amount of money in front of them. When their questions don't get them anywhere, they start to make a ruckus asking if Su Yingxia's family is dealing with something illegal which might represent the amount of money they have right now claiming that they might not want to be involved in such a thing at all. But Yingxia's mother starts to rage in that situation knowing that she wouldn't want someone to talk about her husband like that insisting that they are all abiding law and doing nothing illegal, so it doesn't give them any kind of right to make such ruckus. Then Su Heixiao and Su Yihan come in asking the same question as always and not only that but also, Heichou comes in questioning Su Yingxia's characteristics, implying that she might have a secret relationship with some people who might have traded money for her body. Surprisingly, Han Sanchen and Su Yingxia were standing right in front of them at the moment and Sanchen isn't amused at all after hearing the nonsense out of Heichou's mouth. When Han Sanchen doesn't say anything, Yingxia's mother calls Heichou out and insists that he should shut up his stinky mouth as he isn't allowed to slander her family like that for no reason or proof. But Su Heikxiao isn't someone who can be laid down that easily, and as he asks the same question, Yingxia's mother shuts up on her own as she has nothing else to say except for looking right at Han Sanchen narrowly. After staying silent for a while, Yingxia's mother claims that she isn't afraid of being sued by someone like Su Heikxiao as the money came from the old man who compensated her husband which surprises her husband even. Hearing the nonsense out of her mother's mouth, Han Sanchen smiles on his own while Su Yingxia reacts quite badly almost instantly. Every son in the Su family now starts to talk to each other wondering when the old man might have compensated their brother, and since he has passed so long ago, it makes it quite impossible for their father to compensate one of their brothers realizing they might have found out about it sooner. While some of them question them about the small treasure left by the old man, 
Others keep on asking them about its source, questioning them if they have taken the insurance money left by the old man, knowing they have the right to inherit the money at the same time. All of them demand to have a share of the money, which makes them feel that they all have shares in the mountainside villa, and after witnessing the story unfold, Tang and his son are quite happy as the whole family starts to clash with Su Yingxia and her parents. Su Yingxia's mother gets tired of the whole family's demanding shares of their money, as she claims that they do not have a heart while instigating that the old man left his fortune for them when he felt sorry for letting Han Sanchen joining their family, and the money was left as compensation to them. Not only that but also, she makes a fabricated story of some fake regulations, saying that they couldn't be using the money for three years, and that is why they had to work so hard for all these years to wait for this day. When Yingxia's uncle has a grasp of the situation, he senses that it is nothing impossible for the old man, knowing that he used to love Su Guo so much and the fact that he forced Yingxia to marry Han Sanchen increases the possibility. He asks his brother how much the old man left for him, to which his wife claims that he has left 100 million for them, which leaves the whole crowd in shock. The crowd then starts to believe the story made up by Yingxia's mother, knowing that they might have been holding the anger all these years, and that is why they have been spending a lot. After witnessing the whole event, Su Yingxia looks at Han Sanchen, sensing that her mother is lying to everyone continuously, which makes her uncle's blood boil in anger. Her uncle then leaves saying that he needs to go to the toilet and Yingxia's mother knows that he is about to call the old woman to verify the incident, but she already knows that the grandmother cannot do anything in this whole situation. When Yingxia asks Han Sanchen about the situation laying in front of them, Sanchen claims that he doesn't mind if he doesn't get the credit for it, but it is her mother who is taking all the credit in front of the family and friends. He thinks that it is better knowing that none of them would believe that he is the one who has bought the villa and her mother's explanation helped them a lot in the whole event. When Yingxia tries to say sorry on behalf of her mother, Sanchen reveals that there might be some other thought-provoking ways to make it correct, and that can start by letting him sleep on the same bed as her as a start. Soon Yingxia's uncle comes in front of the crowd claiming that the old woman is about to face the incident soon as she has already started her journey toward the villa. Yingxia's mother keeps on acting brave claiming that the money was given by the old man, so she doesn't have anything to be afraid of. When Yingxia's uncle starts to talk about picking up the grandmother, Yingxia's parents realize that they might be in big trouble since the security doesn't know about them knowing the fact that it wasn't them who bought the house. Suddenly, Yingxia's mother calls out for Han Sanchen to order him to receive the grandmother from in front of the security border with a big smile on her face. Meanwhile, in front of the gate of Yunding Mountain Villa, the grandmother of Su Yingxia finally arrives and she and Han Sanchen both go to face the security to help her get inside the villa. The moment the grandmother gets out of the car, she starts to ask Yingxia why her father didn't invite her to the opening ceremony of the house and Yingxia tries to cover for her father saying that he didn't get the opportunity to do so since many of his classmates are inside which left him with no options. The grandmother then claims that they shouldn't be forgetting that the money that helped Yingxia to buy the villa came out of the Su family's pocket insisting that the villa belongs to her as well since the old man's money is her money after all with pride. While Yingxia starts to converse with her grandmother, Han Sanchen realizes that the old woman might try to take the mountain villa as her own which makes him prefer that he will be giving it in the name of Yingxia, as it seems like the best option to take. Suddenly, the old woman gets grumpy saying that they will have to carry her back inside of the house, and when Yingxia acts reluctantly, Han Sanchen claims that they should be respecting the old people while following through with their orders as he sits down on the ground. While Yingxia holds the cane of her grandmother, Han Sanchen starts to walk down the road with the old grandmother on his back while she continues to bicker with Han Sanchen for not being responsible enough. As they continue to walk down the road, Yingxia feels like it would have been better for her if she could hit the old woman with her cane, but she keeps holding the thought inside her head knowing that the old woman might try to take the villa away thinking that it is the money of Su family. When they finally arrive in front of the house, the grandmother thanks her husband for leaving the house for her as she desired the house for a long time. She then wonders if he might be the reason why she can visit the place now, but she doesn't know why he would leave the money for her son instead of her. As soon as she enters the house, she commands her son to let all of the other people inside the house including his classmates, and as soon as they hear his mother, they start to move away fast from the place. While leaving the house, Tang and his son think that they are acting quite arrogant because of their current achievement, which makes Long promise his father saying that they will take care of the old woman from the Su family in the future, since he is already working in the Qianxi industry. 
but the most surprising thing about the whole thing is that they have never expected the old man to leave so much money for his son to live such a luxurious life. But Long believes that spending money like that will leave them with only a little time as everything comes to an end in the end. Moreover, he couldn't fathom the fact that some trash like Han Sanchin could live his life in a mountain villa of Yunding, while thinking that he might be able to buy a mountain villa someday if he continues to work under the Han family. Back inside the villa, the grandmother asks for an explanation from her son, and before he speaks up, Yingxia's mother tries to explain the whole thing on behalf of her husband. The grandmother screams in anger seeing the audacity of the woman and claims that she doesn't have any right to speak when she is not questioned. Then Yingxia's father starts to elaborate that his father left him the money when he realized that Su Yingxia might not be happy about the money, and the money would act as a way to compensate for the whole thing for life. As the matter was complicated in the end, he just wanted Yingxia to live happily along with the others, and at that moment, his brother speaks up claiming that he needs to worry about the part of his father's money as well. He addresses saying that someone like him might have threatened their father to get the money and suddenly, the old woman claims that the whole family deserves to live in the villa if it was bought with the old man's money. At that moment, Yingxia's mother speaks up yelling about the fact that the money was only left for them, and she wanted to respect the grandmother, but she doesn't think that she will be dividing the villa for everyone. Instead of listening to her, the grandmother yells at her asking if she has the right to speak against her in this place, and Han Sanchin slides into the conversation to let her know about the rules of Yunding Mountain Villa. He claims that even though he doesn't have any kind of objection to the whole matter, she will need permission from another heavenly family first to make that happen. The grandmother then notices the audacity of Han Sanchin and questions his sudden change recently, which makes it truly clear that he is trying to teach her the rules. He then fires back at her stating he doesn't want to embarrass the old man while listening to her when it comes to the Sioux family. Also, the fact that makes it more dangerous is that there are many rules laying around in the villa area of Yunding Mountain that even accidentally violating may create a big problem for them. For that reason, Han Sanchin then charges at the grandmother asking if she can make sure that everyone follows the rules which make everyone grasp while Su Heiko starts yelling at him, saying that he should just shut his mouth. Instead of stopping his mouth, Su Heiko continues to put dirt on his name by reminding his position in the Su family stating he is only talking about Mighty for currently residing inside the mountain villa, while he is nothing but an outsider to the family. When he finishes, the grandmother claims that she had never talked about everyone living in the mountain villa, but she doesn't want him to make any kind of trouble while asking everyone to confirm if the money surely belongs to the Su family or not. Then Han Sanchin comes in asking what kind of qualifications the grandmother has to live in a place like Yunding Mountain Villa, which shocks everyone inside the room. Yingxia's uncle instantly gets up from his seat and Su Heikyo does the same asking if he had taken the wrong medicine beforehand as he starts holding his collar to move around. When he starts to claim that he should be the one getting out of the house as the money was left by the grandfather, Su Yihen joins his bandwagon ordering him to do the same as their grandmother is the head of the family having the right to live inside the villa. Instead of being mad at the situation, the grandmother insists Su Heikyo leave him so he can tell her why she isn't qualified to live inside the house. When Heikyo leaves his collar, Han Sanchin brings up the fact of how the grandmother behaved with Su Yingxia all these years and protected Su Heikyo from everything while Su Yingxia lived in the family as an outsider. Then he starts yelling in her face bringing up the fact that she didn't do anything when Su Heiko framed Su Yingxia and made her almost fall into the hands of Cheng Gang, while Heicho was forgiven in the end as if nothing happened. As Han Sanchin presents the reasons for the grandmother not being able to live inside the house, the grandmother starts to grin her teeth speechless while Yingxia looks at him with tearful eyes. Then he replies to Han Sanchin only by telling him that he should be the one to leave the villa and Su Heicho can do anything he wants as he belongs to the family. The whole family starts to laugh hearing the whole argument when the grandmother orders Yingxia to divorce Han Sanchen, and Su Yihan chimes in only to order Yingxia the same thing. But it seems that Su Yingxia has made her own decision already, and she is not about to divorce Han Sanchen at any cost, since she is the one who married Han Sanchen in the first place. But the grandmother presses on to the situation once again claiming that she has to do it anyway and asks her if she wants to accept her verdict or not. But Su Yingxia isn't someone who would leave Han Sanchen for anyone right now, and she holds his hand even more tightly to let everyone see her love for Sankin. The moment she rejects the idea of her grandmother, she bangs her cane on the ground as she has dared to challenge her, and since she has already grown up as an adult, 
She has no further objection, so she starts to leave the villa. When Su Heikyo tries to stop her, she claims that she wants to leave anyway while Su Heikyo makes the whole situation more insane by claiming that Han Sanchen might have been thinking to take over the whole Su family property in the future, which only makes it clearer if they want to check up with Su Yinchu's behavior. At that point, the grandmother claims that there is no way she will let that happen since she is about to take precautions to tackle the situation, which is Su Yingxia isn't ever about to be the chairman of the company. She then advises Su Heichou to contact Zhang Liang immediately for her knowing that she has something to talk about with him. As soon as Su Heichou listens to the good news coming from his grandmother, he starts to run following behind her saying that he is about to contact Zhang Liang right away. He thinks that Su Yingxia is about to suffer the massive consequence after a long time, which will finally make her feel like she is about to regret her decisions in life. The next day, Yingxia's mother lets her know that they have already picked a room and asks her if that is okay for her to do so, but when she notices that it is the master bed, she decides to question her where she and Han Sanchen are about to choose if they end up picking it up. She claims that there are many other rooms to pick up from so they can end up choosing any of them. Instead of listening to any of the things Yingxia is about to say, she moves on with her husband pressing on the fact that they have to start moving in instantly. Then his father ends up questioning Yingxia why would they want to rob him of his rights as they are already old and need a bigger space to avoid bumping into each other without asking about her feelings at all. Then Yingxia makes it clear that she has never seen them bumping into each other even though their previous house used to be small and cornered compared to what they have right now. Then when they move on, she starts to apologize to Han Sanchen, acknowledging the fact that her parents have made him wrong once again. But Sanchen isn't that concerned about where they are about to sleep since he only cares about staying in the same bed as her which matters the most to him. He is ready to take even the utility room if she is about to stay with him in the end right now which makes Yingxia bump into his head claiming that her parents can go to the utility room by themselves if that happens. Then she asks his permission to question him about something which is the fact that she is quite curious about how much money he actually has in his bank account because it wouldn't have been possible for him to actually buy the mountainside villa if he didn't have a mountain full of money. Instead of answering her question directly, he claims that buying the villa was like pocket money for him and asks if she would believe him if he said something like that. But Yingxia isn't about to believe something like that as she claims that he might be some big-headed ghost who would have handled 100 million as pocket money while Han Sanchen claims that it is the truth no matter if she believes in him or not. Then after ignoring all his big nose bragging, Yingxia claims that she would still support him in the future if he ends up running out of money for buying the villa for them happily. That makes Han Sanchen make a joke out of the whole situation insisting that she even has to feed him from now on as she is now the person in charge of the Cheng Xi project so he will be counting on him from now on quite differently. Yingxia realizes that he isn't serious about the whole thing at all, but she remarks on the fact that according to the behavior that her grandmother has seen this day, she isn't about to spare her that easily from her grasp knowing her previous records. She wonders how much time she has before she ends up losing her position. But Han Sanchen claims that she shouldn't be worrying about it at all since whatever happens, the Qian Shui real estate industry will be working with her and with the Su family if she stays on the same boat. That way the old woman will never be able to deprive her of her status which is quite marked in golden words for him. Then at the Qianxi Industry Company building, Su Heixiao and his grandmother approach Zhang Liang and they thank him for making time to meet with them. Then Zhang Liang claims that the old lady is too polite for him and he will always make time to meet her anytime she wants as she is quite important to him. After saying this, he then moves on to ask them what they really want as he didn't know that they were looking for him. After hearing his words, both of them get quite impressed and the old lady states that she wants to discuss their operation once again while pointing out that Su Yingxia's ability is quite limited and the fact that she wants to delay the Cheng Xi project is quite foreseeable. Then instead of rejecting the idea of the old woman, Zhang Liang agrees with her statement by claiming that Su Yingxia's ability isn't as strong as they thought, but she had been trying her best since her learning ability is quite strong which makes her quite capable of improving to illustrate her into a responsible person compared to the others. The old lady then decides to negotiate the fact by calling Su Yingxia responsible for the fact that she gets ready to do everything she can in her abilities, but she points out her humane limitations to point out the fact that there is always a gap between learning and perfecting something. The old lady then moves into the main point of their discussion which is that she wants to change the person in charge in order for them to cooperate better from now on. 
As soon as she finishes her sentence, Sue Haitko makes an offering saying he will be suited better to the project even though he hasn't been able to participate in the project from the beginning judging the specific matters of the project promising a seamless connection between them. Sue Haicho then goes on to brag about how he has a higher right and a deeper understanding of the whole operation promising a better performance than Su Yingxia. The whole statement made by Su Haicho makes Zhang Liang ask about the credibility and power of Su Yingxia in the Su family company, which doesn't leave her the position to make the final decision and stands up instantly from his own seat. Zhang Liang remarks on the fact that he thought Su Yingxia could speak for the Su family, but he had never expected that she wouldn't be given any kind of rights from the get-go. As soon as he finishes his statement, he starts to proclaim the fact that he will be needing to consider meeting the Su family's demands regarding their cooperation which ends up making Su Heiko happy as he gets excited claiming that it will be wise. But when the old man makes him repeat his statement, Zhang Liang makes it clear that no matter where the project is, their real estate business will not be changing the person in charge of the project since this is what their boss meant from the start. The old lady gets shocked as she starts to correct her statement by claiming that it wasn't what she meant by being worried about Su Yingxia's abilities, but Zhang Liang isn't about to hear about it any further. Zhang Liang then announces that they shouldn't be putting his boss and the real estate business in their eyes since there is no meaning behind them collaborating with each other in the end after all. He doesn't just stop there but questions the capabilities of Su Haishou. He claims that they have been trying to change the person in charge to Su Haishou multiple times, but as they have already investigated his background, all they could find out that he is nothing more than an idiot who has zero credibility at almost everything. The grandmother insists that Su Haishou should be apologizing to Boss John and to make over his mistakes. Haishou instantly kneels down on the ground to ask for forgiveness accepting the failure on behalf of the Su family. He promises that they are never about to attempt to change the person in charge ever again, begging for another chance for their family, but Zhang isn't ready to hear anything from him since there isn't no use in changing his mind anymore. Since Su Yingxia cannot speak for the company while her low status is also delaying the cooperation between both companies. After hearing this, the grandmother grins his teeth claiming that she will be giving all rights to Su Yingxia to make everything correct on behalf of the family business so she can make any kind of decisions regarding the Cheng Excited project from now on which will leave her in proper freedom as she will not be needing to report to anyone, not even her. But Zhang still claims that begging is unnecessary and will be wasting their time since his boss is the only person who will be deciding in the end. He then leaves the room to meet his boss Han Sanchen while insisting that Su Heicho and his grandmother can just leave the company premise for real. Su Heicho gets nervous realizing that their whole company will be gone in an instant if they lose the deal this time and the old woman knows that Su Yingxia is the only person who will be able to fix this tragedy for them. In the moment of desperation, the grandmother advises that Su Heicho should start getting wiser and stop acting like an idiot otherwise, he is never about to become the chairman when he is needed. Meanwhile, Han Sanchin decides to have a conversation with his employee Mr. Zhang Liang regarding the matter of Su family asking for their reaction when the announcement was made. Zhang Liang then explains everything that happened back in the reception room and even the fact that the old lady wanted Su Yingxia to have the rights of their company to continue on her own accord and will. Han Sanchin is pleased to hear that Su Heiko knelt down on him, but he is still feeling bitter about the fact that the old lady didn't do the same. For that reason, he is only about to spend time making them realize how important Su Yingxia really is while focusing on that matter properly. Then in the Su family building, everyone in the company starts discussing the dangerous matter at hand as they continue to blame the grandmother for not asking any of them in advance since Su Yingxia was doing a great job before they got involved in the matter personally. They feel like the cooperation is about to be over which will affect everyone in the company which makes them question the credibility of Su Heikshou, realizing that he wouldn't be able to save them all from this death trap. The grandmother then sighs while sitting in her own position knowing that the only thing she can do now is to wait for the news coming from Su Yingxia as she has already gone to the Qianxi industry office to make them come to an agreement once again. Suddenly, Su Yingxia enters the room and everyone including the grandmother is excited and nervous to know about the current situation as they start asking her various questions. But Su Yingxia doesn't have any good news for them as she had been trying her best to communicate with the company manager Zhang Liang via phone calls and even by visiting the company office, but there was no response coming from him as if he is ignoring her permanently as he refused to meet her for once. Instead of being sympathetic, the grandmother growls while questioning asking her if she didn't try her best or beg for the company, 
which Su Yingxia ends up protecting as she ends up throwing her bag to complain and reveal the fact that she has been thrown out of the Qianxi industry office as she waited there for eight hours straight. Su Yingxia had enough of their bullshit, and she isn't about to act like their donkey ever again. Since the grandmother and Su Heiko took the situation into such a bad position, she demands they both should fix the situation since everything is out of her grasp already as Su Heikshou and his father keeps looking at her with surprised eyes while the grandmother sits at her seat speechless. But the grandmother then changes the tone of her voice begging Su Yingxia to think of a way knowing that the life and death of the Su family now lies down in her hands to which Yingxia claims that she is ready to do her best for the Su family as she belongs to the same family. The grandmother announces that Yingxia will be the one to be fully responsible for the Cheng site project in the future if she can manage to get back the proposition again. When the grandmother then asks for everyone's objections, Su Heikshou and his father claim that they have no objection to the matter hoping that Yingxia will be able to resolve the matter soon enough. Even though Su Heikshou has agreed to the proposition made by the grandmother, he starts to react badly inside his own office as he decides to have a meeting with his father. His father remarks the fact that Su Yingxia not only has the power to manipulate the company matters but she also lives in the mountainside villa which is too much for them as they have nothing compared to her. Su Heiko is desperate to find a way to make everything right for his own sake before they turn into people with low voices in front of Su Yingxia if she continues to succeed in her path. Even though his father wants the same but he insists that Su Heiko shouldn't be making any kind of mess around this time knowing that their family business can lose its breath if he messes up like before. His father then asks him calmly if he knows the gravity of the situation in front of him right now as he knows what can truly happen if he makes any trouble for Su Yingxia this time, which will leave the whole Su family bankrupt in the end. Even after all this confrontation, He Cho isn't ready to accept the authority of Su Yingxia in his heart. Then Su Yihan comes in front of them, both asking them to find out who gave her the betrothal gift imagining that by doing that they might be able to find the solution to everything by changing their status in the Su family. She thinks that if more powerful people can cooperate with the Su family's business, they will no longer need to be subjected to Queen Shri industry anymore, which is clarified by Su Hei Cho himself as well. He then starts to think about who truly received the gift, and when he realizes that after Su Yingxia, Su Yi Han is the only person left to be married, making it look as if it was for her only. After hearing the suggestion from Su Yi Han, Su Heikshou claims that he will start to investigate the matter soon and he doesn't care if the man values Yi Han or not as he only needs the person in his grasp to make everything better for him in the first place as he isn't about to let Su Yingxia stand above him and has all the glory while he watches from afar. On the other hand, Han Sanchen notices that Su Yingxia is upset once again as she gets inside the car while he was waiting inside. Su Yingxia then explains that her grandmother and Su Heiko have done something stupid again asking Zhang Liang to change the person in charge once again which left the man completely offended that made him go out of the cooperation pact for real this time. Not only that but also, she explains that the man doesn't even answer his call while refusing to see her as well which makes the cooperation getting delayed. Then Han Sanchen claims that his old classmate is currently out of town so he will not be able to help her this time as he wouldn't be able to reach him. Then Su Yingxia asks her husband to help her in this matter to which Han Sanchen pouts and claims that it will be a little difficult for him. But at that moment, Su Yingxia states that she will be sleeping with him on the same bed from now on if he does the job for her which makes Han Sanchen start his car immediately to see through the situation to which Su Yingxia gets surprised not knowing what is about to happen. She couldn't help but wonder why he agreed to help her even though his old classmate is out of town, but now he is quite excited to meet her amends all of a sudden. Yingxia thinks that he only targets to get her embarrassed which is why he acts hard to get all the time. The moment Su Yingxia and Han Sankin enter their house, Yingxia is furious to see her mother rearranging the whole house with useless decorations to make the house look weirder and weirder each time. When she thinks that the house looks better thanks to her arrangement skills, Yingxia claims that the house only looks like a junkyard right now which gets them into a fired up argument. When Yingxia reacts to seeing the cheap decorations, her mother asks for more money to buy the better version of the decorations to make the house look better which makes Yingxia leave in anger as she leaves for her room. When Yingxia's mother wonders why she cannot arrange the home the way she wants he asks Sanchen for his opinion, but he doesn't want to speak out about anything accurate. 
And then she goes as far as asking him about money from him, claiming that their family was humiliated because of him, so he will be the one compensating her from now on by handing them a good amount of money, such as $1,000 each month, despite the fact that he is the one who bought the villa with his own money. When her husband asks her to be quiet, she doesn't want to hear any of his words and insists on the same request to hand Sanchin to which he rejects the idea of them controlling him claiming that they aren't about to get a single penny out of him as he leaves them both shocked. The moment Inksha's mother remarks on the fact that Han Sanchin has been acting bold for a while and she needs to put an end to this behavior to deal with him in the future, a few security guards start to ring their doorbell. The security guards claim that they are from the property department of Yunding Mountainside Villa District, and they will be taking away all the junk that she brought recently to decorate the house. Then the guards enter the house almost instantly and instead of listening to her pleas, they continue to take away everything that she brought for some reason while she starts to haggle some of them while they are about to take the items out of the house. But the men aren't ready to listen to her at all claiming that she is only hindering their work and at that time, Han Sanchin is watching the whole story unfold in front of him from up the stairs. The moment she notices Han Sanchin looking at her, she requests to stop the men working to take away everything that she brought feeling like they are robbing them in daylight when she wasted all her own money on the things. Han Sanchin claims that he is the one who brought the men inside, and she realizes how much he actually despises her and her activities. Then Han Sanchin reveals that he truly despises her, and she is shocked to witness the truth coming out of his mouth and demands him to bring all of her things back instantly without losing her fire. Instead of listening to her order, Han Sanchin demands to know what she can do if he doesn't listen to her as if she is able to kick him out of the house, and at the same time, he threatens her not to move things around the house as she wouldn't be able to blame him for being impolite to her despite their relationship. When Sanchin notices his father-in-law behind him, he orders him to take care of his woman while reminding him that he is the real owner of the house who can kick them out anytime he wants so they aren't allowed to move anything without his permission. Instead of calming down even for a bit, Inksha's mother calls him a jerk claiming that he is acting high and mighty as he bought the villa by himself and the fact that she wants Han Sanchin to learn a lesson to show him who is in charge of the family. Her husband insists that she is the one who is about to get them into trouble while calling her unreasonable, but she isn't ready to hear any of the words her husband has spoken while questioning him about the fact that Han Sanchin doesn't have any qualifications to disrespect her since she is his elder as she starts to slap him unconditionally. But her husband doesn't think that she is someone who can be called a proper elder, and since Sanchin is the one who bought the house, that leaves him with the authority to do anything inside it. Suddenly, Inksha's father grabs her hand to put an end to her act asking if she thinks that she can ride on Han Sanchin's back all the time. He remarks on her words to make her find out the differences between the previous and current Han Sanchin, but all she could say is that he is nothing but a waste of trying to avoid recognizing his changes after all this time. Inksha's father agrees to disagree with her statement, saying that this is the waste who bought the mountainside villa, which she is nagging about so much and since it is his own home. He can do anything he wants as he can make her drive away from here. Then she gets an idea of getting the name of her daughter in the property title and certificate thinking that it will be a safer option to which Yingxia's father starts to feel hopeless about the whole situation realizing that his wife isn't about to change, ever. While she thinks of an idea to move away Han Sanchin from the position of the owner, Han Sanchin thinks that he should be hiring someone to cook and take care of the house since it is quite big of a house. Then while Han Sanchin is sitting inside the office of the cleaning company, some people start to make a ruckus calling a woman a dirty thief claiming that she has stolen all of their gold and silver jewelry worth tens of thousands and left. She also protests for the fact that the cleaning company didn't take any kind of responsibility for her activities, and at the same time, the woman doesn't want to admit it at the same time. The woman announces to everyone that they should be looking at the face of the maid, insisting that they shouldn't be fooled by her, while the maid continues to cry all over her face while sitting down on the ground insisting that she didn't do the stealing. The moment the rich woman hears that out of her mouth, the woman throws a slap on the maid once again demanding to know why someone like her would be slandering her for this little amount of money as she is nothing but a lowly person to her questioning if she truly lacks money. Then when the rich woman is about to throw another slap at the woman, Han Sanchin gets in the middle to put an end to it asking the old woman honestly as she is the one being accused of stealing. Instead of calming down, the rich woman starts cursing Han Sanchin, demanding to know where he came from, and he decides to threaten to rip out of her mouth if she doesn't start to behave. 
The woman then doesn't listen to him and claims that her old lady's status in Yunqing is not something for someone inferior like him can imagine. But Sanchen ignores the woman and questions the helpless old woman about the truth. When the rich woman notices his arrogance, she gets furious in anger and decides to prepare herself to throw a kick right at Sanchen's back right away. The moment Han Sanchen is about to get kicked by the rich woman, he ends up placing a hard slap on the woman's knee which makes the woman fall down in pain and anger as she starts to scream almost instantly. The old maid suggests Han Sanchen to run away from the place claiming that he can get hurt at any moment and she wouldn't be able to withstand it. But Han Sanchen insists and holds onto his word saying that he is looking for someone to hire as his house servant and she can be that person if she can prove her innocence somehow. At that time, the rich woman behind him starts to blabber about making him apologize to her by kneeling him down and Sanchen claims that he will be waiting for her to see through it till the end. Then ten minutes later, some people start to come inside by holding in through the crowd and it seems that the husband of that woman came with his companions to end the matter. The moment they end up standing in front, the woman points her finger toward Han Sanchen, claiming that he is the one who hit her, and her husband starts to act like her little white knight who will be facing Sanchen to end the matter. It seems that the man is somehow popular in the town and his name is Liu Guang. He is infamous for his gangster behavior, and once he had a conflict with one of his workers about low wages, he broke his legs and threw him out from the labor market to let the public witness the situation unfold. When Liu Guang comes in to save the day, the woman starts getting even more arrogant than before claiming that Sanchen has to apologize to her and lick her shoes clean as she isn't about to let him go off the hook that easily. If that wasn't enough, Liu Guan repeats the same thing to Sanchen and even orders him to go under his crotch to disrespect him in front of the crowd. But Sanchen isn't intimidated at all and asks if it's all they're asking for while the old maid insists that he should be leaving since she doesn't want him to get hurt on behalf of her. Sanchen then once again hits the woman, and this time on her foot, which makes her fall down on the ground while yelling about her leg's condition. The moment Liu Guang is about to react to it, Sanchen ends up throwing a kick on his crotch, which makes his ball feel as if they are cracked like chicken eggs. None of the people including the old woman can believe what is happening in front of them as they continue to look at Sanchen in surprise. Then the men of Liu Guang start to approach Han Sanchen to teach him a lesson and at the same time, Mo Yang starts to come in with his men and starts to communicate with Han Sanchen feeling that it was some coincidence to meet him in a place like this. It seems that Mo Yang came to this place to check out something fun after hearing about it from his subordinates and he wasn't expecting to see Han Sanchen at all. The moment Liu Guan notices Mo Yang standing in front of him, he starts to bake him saying that he has to save him by making Han Sanchen pay but Yang directs his men to beat Liu Guang for better reasons. After a while when the man has enough, he begs Yang and his men to stop and questions why he flipped on him like that even though he didn't do anything to provoke him. Then Mo Yang introduces Sanchen as his brother so no one should have the guts to provoke him and after hearing that, Liu Guang starts kneeling down to him to ask for forgiveness and pleads to them to let him go. Han Sanchen advises the old maid to tell the truth in front of everyone since now he has his friends with him, knowing that nobody will dare to embarrass her at all. Before the old maid is about to speak, the rich woman starts to shift the blame onto the maid once again, but this time her husband suggests her to keep her mouth shut. Then the maid claims that she had brought a young woman with her to the house, and he is the one who stole all the gold and silver jewelry, and as she went to clean in the morning, she had seen him leave in panic. When the old maid brings the truth out in front of everyone, the rich woman claims that she is slandering her and ends up blabbering the truth that she had paid the young man with her out of the clubhouse, and there was no way someone like him would steal from her. This time her husband starts to react and throws a heavy slap on her face for her act of stealing behind his back. No matter how many times the woman tries to deny the fact that she didn't do anything wrong, the husband already knows the truth after listening to the whole thing that went on. As the husband continues to slap the woman continuously, Sanchen brings up the fact of compensation of the old maid for making a mess in her life and the husband agrees to it without any kind of objection. The husband then orders his woman to kneel down in front of the old maid claiming that he cannot lose face for her anymore. The woman listens to the commands and asks for forgiveness from the old maid as the maid claims that she is heavily thankful to Han Sanchen since otherwise she would have had to commit suicide to clear her name. Sanchen then starts talking about the most important thing, which is that he wanted to hire her for working under him, and the woman asks his proposition almost instantly. Mo Yang then claims that he still has something to do and asks Sanchen what he wants to do with Liu Guang. 
Sanchen insists to Yang that he doesn't care about a person wearing a green hat so he should just forget about it as they leave the matter just as it is. The old maid and Sanchen arrive at the mountainside villa, and she is quite astonished, so she asks him if he lives there. Sanchen then insists the woman call him Sanchen as he isn't used to someone calling him Basso or anything. Then for the first time, someone recognizes him by his first name which is Han, and as he blushes at such popularity, the woman apologizes to him for getting a little excited. Soon they head into the house and Yingxia's mother asks him about the identity of the woman and Sanchen claims that he has invited her inside the house, and she will be doing all the cooking and cleaning in the future from now on. The moment his mother-in-law understands that he is supposed to bring a helper inside, she starts to shout as if he didn't feel like needing to ask that question to her beforehand while claiming that she can cook for them herself. After hearing that, Han Sanchen advises the maid aunt to only clean the house in the future as someone is already eager to cook for them. But it makes his mother-in-law flip on him again as she claims that Sanchen isn't qualified to eat her cooked food. Then when it comes to payment of the maid, Han Sanchen makes it quite clear that he will not be paying a single penny from her pocket. Sanchen then takes the woman to show her around her room and the mother-in-law starts to react to the fact that he is even ready to get her the guest room where the future guests would stay. She insists that the maid can sleep in the utility room, but as the owner of the house, Sanchen shows his authority over her and decides not to listen to any of her orders and leaves the place. As Sanchen moves out advising the maid to adjust and feel like her own home, his mother-in-law determines herself as she is thinking of kicking the woman out of the house already. The next day, Yingxia's mother starts bothering the maid by acting as a pain in the ass and starts filling the ground with melon seed shells to make it harder for her to clean up. Also, since Jiang is the only person who spends most of her time inside the house, she starts bothering the maid however she wants, and not only the tub cabinet but also the living room floor starts to get cleaned up by her. Then Jiang gets her to move in through the stair railings as well just for the reason that she can live inside the mountainside villa for her luck. Jiang continues to threaten the woman saying that if something goes wrong, she will be getting fired by her daughter claiming that Han Sanchen isn't the boss of the house. This makes the maid, An He promises her that she will definitely be working hard and she will always be cleaning up whenever she gets called by her any time on her own accord. But she still gets berated for the fact that she cannot do everything on her own and needs help finding dust anywhere in the house. Then after threatening to divide the monthly salary by half, Jiang leaves the house claiming that she is about to spend her time outside, and she better not see anything dirty when she gets back, otherwise, An He will be in big trouble. As Yingxia's mother hang out with her companions, they all continue to praise her for living such a luxurious life as she is currently living in the mountainside villa. They keep on insisting that they should be visiting her place someday soon enough while she continues to brag about how big her place is and how it is hard to take care of the whole place single-handedly which made her hire a servant for the house. She lies about how she is paying the servant thousands of yuan a month. While they are talking and discussing the mountainside villa, one of her companions noticed some high-status woman coming directly toward them with her bodyguards which represents her status even more. Her companions ask her if she knows about the woman and gets curious about the reason for her to head in toward them and the woman presents herself toward Jiang Lan asking her if she is the one. When Jiang Lan confirms her identity by asking who she might be, the woman ends up slapping her face with all her might which makes her wonder what kind of grudge the woman has against her. The woman then slaps her multiple times as Jiang Lan falls down to the ground asking for her identity. The woman identifies herself as She Xi and warns Jiang Lan not to stand out too much from then on and announces that troubling him will only continue to make her regret being born as she leaves the place. While the woman leaves the premise, all of her friends keep on asking for the reason she hit her claiming that she might not be someone ordinary and which can only imitate the fact that her family must have provoked someone powerful as the woman seems to have a great among money, while Jiang Lan promises to get her the slaps back at her in future. Back inside the villa, Jiang Lan starts torturing An He for seeing dirt inside the house and orders her to leave the house in an instant. It seems that she had wiped the house multiple times already and started cleaning up once again as she is ordered to do so. The woman keeps on asking for another chance but Jiang Lan isn't ready to listen to her since she is only focused on getting off of her anger by behaving badly with An He. As soon as Yingxia's father notices the argument between his wife and some unknown woman, he comes forward to his wife asking who had bruised her face that badly as he is concerned about her. Angry and jealous Jiang Lan tells him that it was done by the servant hired by his son-in-law and nobody else, 
and as soon as he finishes listening to his wife, he starts slapping the hell out of Aunt He without even investigating the incident for once while ordering her to get out of the house immediately. Aunt He then confronts Yingxia's father saying that she isn't the one who did something like that and it was unfair for him to act rashly at her. But that man isn't ready to believe something like that and lashes out at her once again believing the lie set up by his own wife which gives Jiang Lan a chance to pressure her to leave the house permanently insisting that nobody in the family needs her. This makes Yingxia's father throw her out on the ground while Aunt He continues to apologize for her behavior even when she didn't do anything wrong in her position as she is about to leave for real. While she starts to climb upstairs to be prepared, Jiang Lan's husband keeps on saying how shameful it is to beat the master of the house, acting superior in front of his wife. Later when Han Sanchen and Yingxia return home, he starts asking both of them about An He's whereabouts as he couldn't see her anywhere. At that time, Yingxia's father starts protesting how shameful the person An He was that she even dared to fight against Yingxia's mother, which serves him a sense of doubt quite instantly. When he notices An He leaving the house, she thanks Han Sanchen for helping her so much and claims that she doesn't want to embarrass him even more. Han Sanchen instantly grabs the hand of An He while reminding her of the incident in the labor market and insists her on telling him the truth otherwise nobody will be able to help her at all. Also there is a question about managing her daughter's living expenses and the situation gets more critical as the incident of the labor market still arises so many questions, so he insists her on telling the truth to him. An He then starts explaining how Jiang Lan went outside of the house in the afternoon and came in having severe wounds on both of her cheeks and Han Sanchen believes every word spoken by Aunt He. He understands how she came after getting beaten outside but started to blame the others for nothing and warns Jiang Lan not to challenge his endurance limit in a straight face. Jiang Lan then fires up at the fact that Han Sanchen uttered her name with his mouth despite the fact that she is his elder and Yingxia tries her best to find answers from her mother regarding the person who hit her in the first place as it led her to blame Aunt Zhu He. Yingxia's father then joins the bandwagon asking her the same question and Jiang Lan is severely disappointed by the fact that nobody is believing her. While Jiang Lan questions everyone's conscience, Han Sanchen claims that he will let the property management department adjust the monitoring camera to check out if she was wounded at home or outside for the matter. As soon as the situation starts to deepen, Jiang Lan claims that she was beaten outside and demands his answers asking what he can do about it. As soon as Yingxia's father listens to the truth he starts to lose all his trust placed in her while she claims that he isn't his man after all as he doesn't have any kind of ability to avenge her at all. As both of them continue to bicker among themselves, Han Sanchen demands them to apologize to Aunt He for their behavior since they have both wronged her, but Jane Lan instantly goes against him to argue about it even more. But Han Sanchen isn't about to listen to her blabbering and orders her to apologize to Aunt He at once or she can think about getting out of the house as it is his own house which leaves them all in a tough position. When the situation doesn't get any better, Han Sanchen promises Jiang Lan that he will find out the person who hurt her and make her apologize to her if she apologizes to Aunt He in the first place. Jiang Lan considers his words as a joke thinking that he is some waste of money regarding the fact that the woman had a bunch of bodyguards around her so there is no way that he will be able to avenge her. After thinking for a while for her own good, Jiang Lan apologizes to Aunt He and her husband does the same for acting impulsive without even knowing the whole story as Aunt He claims that the whole thing was a big misunderstanding. When Aunt He starts to leave to reach her room upstairs, Sanchen asks who is the person that hit Jiang Lan and she claims that she had never seen the person before, and her name is Shi Jing which leaves Han Sanchen astonished. Han Sanchen couldn't help but wonder how someone like her would do something like that and that person is none other than the daughter-in-law of the Han family. It seems that when Han Sanchen was seen in Han's house, Zhu Lin Wan's heart wept thinking that he was still useless, so it made her do something like that on his behalf. As Jiang Lan asks whom the person is claiming that if he is able to avenge her, she will definitely start to treat him differently, but Han Sanchen rejects the idea of doing so almost immediately. When Jiang Lan starts to blame him for boating in front of her like that, acting as a capable person in front of her, he explains how that person carries 12 bodyguards with her when she travels and each of the bodyguards is retired from special forces masters, and they cannot be provoked by someone so ordinary. When Yingxia is shocked after hearing about the incident, Sanchen adds that even Yunqing Ting and Jia didn't dare to provoke someone like her, which gets Yingxia's father confused not knowing how his wife has provoked someone on that level. 
Jang Lan continues to persist as she doesn't even know that person and Han Sankin tells her not to worry about anything as the matter has already been resolved since she has already hit her knowing the extent of her ability. In fact, someone like her can subvert the whole Su family just in one night, which makes Jiang Lan wonder what the woman really meant by keeping herself low-key and not embarrassing someone that she was mentioning. As Han Sanchen instantly leaves the house, Su Yingxia advises him to be careful after sensing the extent of the situation that is unfolding badly. Then at the Peninsula Hotel, Han Sanchen is restricted from entering the premises by the bodyguards as their boss didn't tell them about him beforehand. The bodyguards request him not to embarrass them since they will have to start acting up if he takes one step further into the building. Han Sanchen gets ready to show them his bluntness and the bodyguards get to know that he is already offended by them and prepares to attack him directly. As soon as they jump onto Han Sanchen, he ends up smashing them up in an instant with a single punch, which surprises all the other bodyguards around him as they have never seen him so powerful in their whole life. But knowing that they cannot let him get inside with the message from their boss, they get out their batons without caring about anything to get Han Sanchen down on the ground unitedly at once. But the situation doesn't go well for the bodyguards as all of them fall down on the ground one by one. After that, Han Saknian pushes the door of their boss where there is Shi Jing sitting on the sofa where she discusses how Old Jian once mentioned to her Han Sanchen's great talent as she now can see the true reflection of it right now. As soon as Han Sanchen sits down on the sofa, he asks her why she was looking for Zhang Lan and it seems that, as a mother, she didn't want someone to look down on her son, so she did what he had to do. Han Sanchen then starts to react saying that he doesn't need her intervention at all, and hopes that she will not be creating trouble in the future. His mother claims that even though he might be dormant on his own currently, it is nothing in the old lady's eyes, and if he is truly strong, he has to show it to others which will get him recognized. But Han Sanchen isn't interested in talking about the big things, and he just wants his mother to return back to Yanjing as soon as possible, since Yunqing is not a place where she can accommodate her Buddha. She then claims that she will be leaving since he came to see her, but even though Han Sanchen is living in Yunqing, she advises him to remember that nobody should be hiding their strength, to which Han Sanchen claims that a gentleman surely hides his weapon in his body and moves when he waits for time. As soon as Han Sanchen leaves the room, his mother wonders where he got such momentum to swallow the mountains and rivers as even the Han family has never possessed something like that. No matter how capable he is right now, his mother doesn't like him taking everything too simply as she knows that the old lady would have definitely let Han Sanchen go to jail instead of his older brother Han Jun if he didn't get her the opportunity of Kuan Shui Industry Real Estate since they are the Lee Shang brothers who are almost exactly same in appearance and outsiders are barely able to distinguish them at all for obvious reasons. Back at the mountainside villa, Jiang Lan asks Yingxia if the villa has her name on the property certificate and Yingxia claims that it doesn't, and it doesn't matter to her at all. Her mother thinks that it will create problems in the future, and she wants Yingxia to take care of it right now, but she is too busy with the matter of Kuan Shui Industry Real Estate. She then brings up how she will have no security in her name if Han Sanchen decides to divorce her, and having the villa in her name will get her some protection in the matter. Judging by his attitude, Jiang Lan thinks that it is only about to get worse from now on, while Yingxia thinks that her mother deserves it all as she brought it on to herself. Yingxia claims that she isn't interested in listening to these matters as the villa was bought with his money, and it should be in his name for that matter. But Jane Lan isn't someone who would listen to anyone so she asks if Han Sanchen is about to stay the same as his current self, while calling her daughter stupid. As Yingxia hears out her mother, she claims that it is impossible that she will ever divorce him even if he has a change for her in the future. It makes Jiang Lan think of ideas on how to make it true thinking that her old lady will be able to help her regarding that matter. Then when Han Sanchen gets back home, Yingxia asks him about getting in touch with his old classmate as he is the one who can communicate with the Qianxi industry. And since Yingxia noticed that the construction has already stopped, she is concerned about the future of her family's business. Han Sanchen claims that he will solve that matter for sure so she shouldn't be worrying about it while taking a look at his wife's legs. Then as Yingxia starts to relax, Han Sanchen decides to massage his wife's legs while she continues to make weird sounds making Han Sanchen comfortable in a different way while Yingxia hides herself in the blanket. Han Sanchen and Yingxia both go on a run in the morning and Yingxia elaborates to Sanchen how she used to dream of doing a morning jog in Yunding Mountain countless times, but she never really expected it to happen. Han Sanchen claims that he will be happy by seeing her happy and as he looks at the beautiful face of Yingxia, 
and starts praising her for it. Yingxia starts feeling like her husband is sweet-talking to her and Han Sanchen insists that he is only telling her the truth and not sweet-talking at all. To make it more exciting, Yingxia asks Sanchen how beautiful he thinks she is, and he starts blabbering as much as possible which starts to give Yingxia goosebumps which gets her embarrassed. Then Yingxia starts running toward their villa so he ends up quitting to talk about silly things, and as Sanchen continues to run behind her, he wonders how good it will be for him to stop running for money and fame and live with Su Yingxia with his current financial resources to have a carefree and happy life. But as he remembers the face of his grandmother, his mother, and his imprisoned brother, he realizes that stopping in here will only turn him into a stepping stone for the others, and it will heavily affect Yingxia later in life, which is forcing him to become stronger from them to protect her from the others. Then in the Su family building, Su Heichou starts confronting Su Yingxia for still not being able to fix their issues between the Queen Shi industry and asks if she is having a hard time reaching her goal or not. He also adds that their grandmother has high expectations of her, so she shouldn't be letting her down, and it forces Yingxia to remind him that he is the reason why they are in this situation in the first place. At that time, Su Yihen tries to get back at her by saying that her skills are surely lacking, which is why their grandmother wanted to change their places and claims she knows about the method which she used to impress the owner of the Qian Shi industry. When Su Yihen starts to imply dirty things towards Su Yingxia, Su Yingxia then doubles down on her by mentioning the matter of the company's current affairs and bringing up the fact that she is relying too much on a man who doesn't even show up after sending the betrothal gift to her. But Su Yi Han thinks that there is nothing wrong with that, and she keeps on believing that her life will change so much that she will not even need the Su family beside her. At that time, Su Yingxia charges on the fact that she is still her personal assistant, and she will have to listen to her so she should start praying already for her man to show up so she can be relieved of her position. Then Yingxia takes her leave out of their sight ordering Wai Han to move into the conference room as she has an important announcement to make after 15 minutes. When she takes her leave, Su Heikao talks about how Su Yingxia is doing too much by ordering them around, and Yi Han asks Heikao about how his investigation is going on about the man who sent her betrothal gift. Heikao states that the process is a little bit difficult, but he is already doing his best to find the man and the only thing that he found out is that the man is from the Han family in Yanjing. Heikao thinks that if the information that she had is true, she must be in for a ride knowing that her life is about to change and it makes Su Yi Han dream about what is about to happen in the future as Han family is one of the wealthiest in Yan Jing, which will get her a chance to trample Su Yingxia under her feet. Then in the conference room, Su Heiko thinks that Yingxia should be giving them a piece of good news as soon as possible, and if it is too much for her, they should find a way for her to deal with it. But Su Yi Han insists that it is not their responsibility and holds her grandmother accountable for the whole thing, so Yingxia should be finding a way out of the situation on her own as they aren't about to take any kind of responsibility. Finally, Su Yingxia claims that she has already solved their issue and which is the main reason why she arranged a meeting to inform them about it. Shocked Su Heiko asks how she made that happen as she didn't even know anything about it the day before, and Yi Han demands her not to joke around about it. Su Yingxia then reveals the phone log claiming that Boss Zhang called her to inform her that he is about to continue the project and that if they do not believe her, they can call Zhang themselves to verify the information. Su Yingxia then states that she had already informed their grandmother about it as she doesn't have time to joke around with them, and then everyone else in the conference room start to praise her for saving their butt. Meanwhile, Su Heiko continues to wonder if she must have intentionally avoided telling them about it in the morning so Su Yi Han and him both could make fun of each other in the conference room. While he was busy thinking about what has actually happened, Ying Shi claims that two of them are about to be present on the construction site starting from the next day, and they are about to be Su Heichou and Su Yi Han. After hearing the announcement, Su Heiko starts to react as he is a senior of the company, so there is no way he is about to go on site every day. Su Yi Han insists that she is about to follow Heicho's path of rejecting the commands and Su Yingxia should be the one to be present on the construction site instead. After hearing them both, Su Yingxia fixates her mind on letting their grandfather acknowledge the situation, and she will be the one to decide what is about to happen regarding this matter. Instantly, Su Heicho claims that she doesn't have to go that far and Yingxia questions him back asking if she ever rejected his proposal to go on site ever in her whole life. So if he still has a different thought about the orders, he should be informing their grandmother about her filing a complaint about it. 
When Su Heiko realizes there is no way to get out of it, he ends up agreeing to her proposition and Su Yi Han follows the path of Heicho while warning her not to be full of herself, threatening that she will regret it in the future. Also, Su Yingxia is ready to face whatever is about to come for her, so she ends up accepting the challenge as well and adjourns the meeting in an instant. Then in the nightclub owned by Lin Yang, Yang Peng is about to pay him 3 million yuan inside his suitcase and elaborates that he needs him to break someone's leg for him. He is surprised to see that Yang Peng has some deep hatred for someone which gets him ready to pay him that much money at once. Yang Peng explains that someone has his woman, and he wants him to beg for mercy for his life claiming that the woman surely belongs to him. At that moment, Han Sanchen comes into the room and the men around him start greeting him at once, including Lin Yang himself as he starts calling him brother. When Yang Peng is having a hard time digesting the fact that Lin Yang is calling him his brother, Sanchen asks Yang Peng what he is doing inside with Lin Yang, which gets him nervous and flabbergasted at the same time. Yang Peng thinks of the matter and thinks that it doesn't even matter anymore so he points at Han Sanchen and claims that Sanchen is the trash he was talking about previously and all he needs to do is just break his legs. Lin Yang gasps thinking what an idiot Yang Peng must be and orders him to take his money and run the hell out of his clubhouse. Han Sanchen then sits down on the couch asking whose leg is about to get broken for 3 million yuan and orders him to figure out the matter by himself. As the situation deepens, Lin Yang orders his men not to just stand there and start working on it as Sanchen has already made the information clear for them. Lin Yang's men then start dragging Yang Peng out of the club forcefully while he starts to blabber his mouth about how he paid him 3 million to break his leg. But before he can make anything out of his mouth, Yang's men start breaking Yang Peng's leg instead which forces him to ask for mercy but it doesn't end well for him at all. After a while, Han Sanchen instructs Yang's men to stop beating Yang Peng and makes his announcement clear that he will not be letting him mess around with him just like the last time. Not only that but also, he claims that the broken leg will be working as a living lesson for him and if he still wants to continue living, he will have to stay away from Su Yingxia. But instead of listening to any of his words, Yang Peng claims that he will have to watch himself as he promises to get back to him twice as much as what he did to him this day. Han Sanchen realizes that the man still didn't learn his lesson even after receiving a beatdown and after announcing his last warning to him, Han Sanchen advises him to be careful, otherwise, his whole family will be suffering with him as Yang's men throw him out of the club. As Yang Peng gets thrown out of the club, Han Sanchen asks what had happened to Mo Yang since Lin Yang asked him to come to meet him at his place. Lin Yang then informs him that Boss Mo had recently come to the bar with people from the underground boxing arena and Sin claimed that he suffered a lot and got severely hurt in the process. When Han Sankin thinks about the underground boxing arena, he remembers that Yi Fi is the boss of Yunqing's underground boxing arena. Lin Yang then explains that Yunqing has three underground boxing arenas, and they are all under Yi Fi's name. It seems clear that he didn't like Mo Yang coming out of the cave, which probably means that he is about to take any necessary steps to interrupt Mo's momentum for sure. But even after hearing everything, Han Sanchen thinks that it is all simple, so he just asks Lin Yang to invite Mo Yang to come over as he is about to help him solve the matter by himself. Then surely Han Sanchen and Lin Yang get on with meeting Mo Yang to elaborate that he already knows about the situation regarding the underground boxing arena and asks if he needs a help in that to set it in motion. Mo Yang asks if he can find him some masters and even asks if he needs to spend money for that since many of Yi Fi's subordinates are now injured and hospitalized while their hands are tight. Then Sanchen claims that as a master he will not charge him even a penny if he goes out, but Mo Yang isn't ready to hear that. Mo Yang insists that if it is the only way he should just go away as he will be beaten by others, but Sanchen claims that he is underestimating him for no reason and makes a proposition of showing his skills to the underground boxing arena. Then at the underground boxing arena, Yi Fi's man announces to him that almost half of the men under Mai Yang have already gone to the hospital, which makes him think that the Cloud City is way different than how it used to be back in the day. But when he is huffing and puffing talking about his own bravery and capabilities, one of his men runs up to him and announces that Mo Yang has arrived once again, which gets him mad at his man knowing that Yang has arrived once again to create more mess and chaos despite the fact that all of his men are already hospitalized by his man the previous time. But his man claims that it doesn't seem as if he is getting ready to create more chaos as he is watching the game in the audience like everyone else. After hearing the answer coming out of his man's mouth, 
Yifi starts to laugh wondering if he is here to learn how to fight and what not, and gets ready to feel like Gang is about to lose once again. On the other hand, Mo Yang continues to wonder where Han Sanchen might have gone as he didn't return back to him after going inside the toilet, but Lin Yang remarks that Sanchen isn't someone who would do something like that. Soon the referee makes an announcement saying that the special session is about to start soon, and now anyone can go on to the stage and experience the feeling of fighting a boxer as it is open season right now while guaranteeing the safety of the boxers. While several men continue to chit-chat about who would dare to fight some professional boxers, Han Sanchen raises his hand from the crowd wearing a weird mask to hide his identity. As soon as the referee allows him to get inside the ring, Sanchen swiftly jumps over the barricade to present himself in front of his opponent, which makes the referee double-think his decision and he advises the boxer to be careful around his opponent. But the boxer thinks that Sanchen will be some small fry like the others while Yang and Yang continue to wonder about the masked man's identity. They soon realize that the man is none other than Sanchen and starts feeling like he is about to die soon in the hands of his opponent. As soon as the fight begins, Sanchen starts shit-talking to his opponent which makes him lash out at him as if he had gone crazy which makes an opportunity for Sanchen to throw a skillful kick on the man's head. As soon as he throws the kick, the huge man hits his head on the ring's barricade and loses consciousness in that instant which leaves the audience in awe. Not only the audience but also Yang and Yang both are losing their mind recognizing the skills of Han Sanchen, while Sanchen gets ready to change his opponent almost instantly. Sanchen continues his wrath of smashing up more of his opponents continuously, while Yang and Yang both go insane watching him dominate on the ring feeling like Sanchen is about to knock out the entire boxing field himself, all alone. But Yang still has doubts about Sanchen as all of the men he is fighting are Yifei's masters, while Yang cannot comprehend how none of the two fighters could lay even a single hit on Sanchen despite their skills and training. Apart from everything, Mo Yang is mostly surprised about how someone like Han Sanchen would be willing to join the Su family and suffer to be treated as a wasteful person by the entire Yunqing and Yang, remarks that he might be the same as him as he is ready to sacrifice everything for his woman. At that time, the referee asks Sanchen if he wants to continue, and Sanchen remarks that if they continue to bring out rubbish, he will not be wasting more of his time which makes the referee promise that he will make the strongest boxer in the boxing field to come forward this time who will not be letting him down. The man orders his men to call out someone named Knife 12, and after hearing the man's name, Yang struggles to answer Mo Yang. It seems that his record of playing games is quite low, but he is the man who had never lost against anyone in his whole career as his luckiest opponent was sent to the hospital to lie down for half a month. As Knife 12 was sitting on his chair in a dark room, one of the men goes on to call him to the stage, but it seems that he isn't supposed to have any matches this day. The man tries to explain how it is on the stage, and he should be the one to go against the undefeated mysterious man, but he isn't ready to hear any kind of excuses since he is only present in the underground to make money. Tall Knight grabs the man by the neck and starts to ask for money as it is the only reason he fights against someone, and the man then remarks how this will be counted as the cost of his two games. After hearing this, Knife 12 throws the man away and starts to leave for the stage as the referee starts to announce the man in front of the crowd. Knife 12 is surprised to see someone so tiny as Sanchen was able to smash the whole place and starts suggesting the city hospital for his treatment, but Sanchen suggests he should be doing the same to make a fool out of him. As soon as the bell rings, Nike 12 starts threatening Sanchen and both of them end up throwing a fist at each other as they clash heavily. As soon as both of their fists clash with each other, Nike 12 starts to wonder who the guy is as he had never seen someone like him who can go head to head with the person who clashes with him. Assuming that he has to go hard on his opponent, Nike 12 starts raining countless punches at him to see how long he can last, but Sanchen still doesn't go down which makes him realize that he isn't a bad opponent at all. When Yang thinks that Knife 12 is twice the power of two perverted, but Yang thinks that it is quite the opposite as he has already experienced the wrath of Knife 12 himself. But Yang thinks that the situation isn't that good for Han Sanchen so he decides to go forward with Yang, knowing that he has to save one of his own despite the fact that they will have to go against Yi Fei in his own venue. At the same time, Knife 12 is quite impressed with Sanchen as he still didn't go down after eating so many punches, which makes him the first to withhold like that. When Knife 12 goes on to place one of his most powerful attacks on Han Sankin, he lays a dropkick on the man's chest which gets him into a tough situation as he had to go back quite a distance to calm himself down. 
Mo Yang and Lin Yan both are now in awe seeing that Sanchen was able to place a powerful blow on someone like Knife 12. And at that moment, Knife 12 decides that he doesn't want the money for the game anymore, so he withdraws himself from it. Knife 12's request was about to get thrown away by the referee himself, but he decides to throw the referee away to prove his point that he is only about to follow his own idea as he has made a promise. After the match, Han Sanchen is checking up on his body to see how much he had to lose to have such bruises on his body, and Yang offers Sanchen to have a checkup at a hospital. But Sanchen declines the idea and claims that he will be fine if Lin Yang drives him back to his place. When Mo Yang starts to talk about Night 12, it seems that Han Sanchen isn't that concerned about him at all as he will be someone who will have a very hard time dying against him, and at the same time, their mission is fulfilled as well. When Sanchen finally arrives back home, he starts to feel the pain that was left on his body by Knife 12 as he continues to have a hard time walking and even brushing his own teeth. Then when he returns to his room, he doesn't see the mattress on the floor anymore, and it seems that Yingxia is already on the bed proposing to him to get on, as well since he has kept his promise to fix the situation with the Qianxi industry. When he excitedly jumps on the bed to get close to his wife, Yingxia has already marked half of the blanket with a red marker which he shouldn't be crossing, but he has his fair share of doubts as Yingxia will surely break the chain of command pretty soon. When he finally wakes up in the middle of the night, he starts to feel some kind of steaming bun on his body in the dreams, but it seems that it is none other than Yingxia who had already crossed the line, but she starts to avoid the confrontation by sneaking somewhere else to keep her face up. In the morning, Han Sanchin starts to feel dizziness and pain all over his body which makes Yingxia question if he is about to go on a run as he always does. But when Sankin decides to take a day off, Yingxia grabs his arm as she isn't ready to go out without him which makes him accept her offer anyways. As the day continues, Han Sanchin decides to keep his wife's request, despite all the bruises he has on his body, and as they are watching the skies and nature, Han Sanchin starts to describe how beautiful the city of Yanjing truly is. But Yingxia is quite anxious about the place as it is called the capital of power, and as Su family isn't that qualified to be there, she wonders how they can be qualified to be there someday. Sanchen promises that he will be taking her there to see a different scenery, and Su Yingxia believes in her husband just as always while keeping a big smile on her face. She then takes his hand to continue running toward the villa as it is already getting late and throughout their run, Sanchen continues to feel unbearable pain all over his body. Then when Sanchen doesn't want to drive the car, Yingxia continues to get more suspicious of his activities and Sanchen decides to come clean saying that his hands are hurting. Yingxia instantly starts to worry about her husband and asks if it is quite serious or not as she was holding onto his hand for a while. Then when Sanchen claims that he will be fine if he doesn't drive but Yingxia keeps on pressing him to have a checkup at a hospital which he then had to agree to in the end. As soon as the doctor does an x-ray on Sanchen's hands, he starts questioning Sanchen about what happened to his hands as none of his bones are intact except for the thumbs. After hearing this, Yingxia starts crying demanding to know why he didn't tell her anything when she was holding his hand some time ago and she is concerned about him hurting himself in the process. Then Sanchen answers that since that was the first time, she ever took his hands, and it was enough for him to keep his pain in check to which Yingxia starts to react as she can always hold his hands in the future, and she doesn't want to hurt himself just for that simple reason as holding hands. But Sanchen isn't someone who can be understood that easily as he is ready to do anything for his love, and their uncanny flirting starts to make the doctor feel uneasy. Both of them regain their consciousness when the doctor decides to interrupt their intimate conversation and he suggests that he will need a plaster cast, and he shouldn't be doing any sort of heavy work during the recuperation period. As the recovery period starts from then on, she will be needing to take care of him as much as possible. But Sanchen claims that it will not be needing 40 days as he had always experienced this sort of thing before and recovered in the time span of about a week, while insisting that he will not be needing a cast at all. But the doctor isn't about to listen to his superhuman talk, so he challenges that he will be needing 40 days full and Yingxia insists that he should be listening to the doctor as much as possible which takes a toll on Sanchen, and he decides to listen to their advice. Then Sanchen is forced to sit down with Yingxia in her office every day and she orders him that it is about to be his routine for a while since she cannot take care of him as he will be away from her. When the assistant leaves their food on the table, Yingxia starts to feed Sanchen with the spoon knowing that he cannot use his hands for a while. But our guy faces a big challenge in the toilet as he cannot even unzip his own pants with his hands as both of them are plastered right now. 
he couldn't help but wonder that someone like him is about to hold his pee in and die afterward. At that time, Yingxia barges into the toilet which gets Sanchen in a tough position as he wasn't expecting her to check up on him in a place like that. When Yingxia senses his problem, she places the emergency board in front of a women's toilet even though she herself was having a hard time dealing with it. As soon as they enter the bathroom, Sanchen starts to feel giddy about it but with Yingxia's help, he finally manages to pee comfortably even though he kind of peed on his shoes somehow. Then after a while, Sanchen goes on to meet Mo Yang who then listens to his whole story and has a hard time controlling his laugh after hearing about the legendary Han Sanchen's troubling incident. At that moment when Mo Yang chimes in to help Sanchen to light up a cigarette, he elaborates on the fact that Yi Fei is sending over people around to inquire about his news so he should better be keeping a low profile to keep himself safe as he is injured for the time being. He insists Sanchen to be careful as someone like Yi Fi likes control people and use them. And if he senses that Sanchen cannot be used by him at all, he will be finding ways to finish him off as he doesn't like uncontrollable pawns. Then when Sanchen claims that it isn't about to happen that easily, Mo Yang remembers that Sanchen is known in the Cloud City well as trash which will make no one doubt him so which makes him an invisible character in front of everyone even though he is the one who is about to be researched about. Sanchen then claims that Night 12 is about to be very useful, and he insists Mo Yang find a way to bring him over to their team. Mo Yang claims that he will be sending someone to check it out as he feels like there must be some reason why Knife 12 is working under Yi Fei in the first place. Then at the Su family mansion, Sanchen arrives there with Yingxia as her grandmother has called everyone in there to discuss a solution for one of their most difficult problems. It seems that there is a problem regarding the cooperation in the Western City project, but Yingxia wasn't expecting that it will be happening so soon. Sanchen thinks that raising funds from various companies will work as a long-term solution which makes Yingxia wonder how their grandmother is about to take it. When the announcement begins from the grandmother's side, she claims that the company's book is already empty and Heichou thinks that taking a loan is the most viable option in that case. But the grandmother has already talked about it to the banks, but none of them are eager to help them which makes her feel like someone is interrupting their business behind the scenes and find some people suspicious of that. When Su Yihan asks for a solution from their grandmother, their grandmother suggests that selling all their valuable assets such as houses will be a better option for them for now as it will help the family overcome all difficulties for the time being. When her son asks where they are about to live in the future, their grandmother suggests that they will be staying inside rented houses temporarily as the current problem is more injurious than anything else in this matter. But he then adds that even after selling their houses, it will be doing nothing as if their houses are not more than worth only a few dollars, so that isn't about to solve any of their problems. At that time, Su Yihen brings up the proposition of Su Yingxia selling the villa, as it is more than worth all of their houses accumulated, which is agreed by everyone as they continue to vote by supporting it. After hearing this, Han Sanchen realizes the situation and Su Yihan continues to press Yingxia on that matter, as she should be preferring to help the company overcome the difficulties and remarks on the fact that their grandfather left the money to buy the villa. Then their grandmother suggests that the money given by the Han family will also be pawned off to make the company's account as Yi Han was left with the bride price, which makes her react so badly that she starts to lash out at her quite instantly assuming that the Han family will not agree with her. When their grandmother questions her credibility, Su Yi Han proudly claims that she is the one who is the most qualified one so it cannot be someone else other than her, as she is quite arrogant about her beauty. But at that moment, Ying Xie questions her if her villa can be sold for the company, and why her bridal price cannot be added to that as well, to which Yi Han answers her saying that it is her only chance to get married into such a rich family, while Ying Xie's villa was bought by the money left by their grandfather, so it is only natural. When Sanchen listens to the whole debate, he suggests something to Yingxia while whispering and she decides to listen to her husband's advice and claims that she can manage to get a loan from the bank on behalf of their company. But there will be a condition that will be taking care of that, and that is, Su Yingxia is about to take care of all their finances from then on which starts to get Su Heixiao and his father crazy as they weren't expecting to hear that. Su Yihen joins the bandwagon and blames her for being greedy as she wants to swallow the whole company by herself which makes Yingxia argue with her as she hasn't even taken a penny out of the company's fortune for her own need while they continue to embezzle the company's fund each and every year. After shutting up the whole crowd, the grandmother asks if she can really find a way to get them a loan from the bank, but Su Heikxiao isn't ready to listen to any of her propositions, claiming that Yingxia is trying to wrest the power out of their company. 
Instead of paying any attention to Heichao, the grandmother asks how much she can get as a loan. And at that moment, Han Sanshin claims that it will be 1 billion which makes Heichou question if he has any kind of right to talk about as if he is getting addicted to bragging in the first place. The grandmother also instructs Sanshin to do the same. But Yingxia protests her grandmother telling her that he isn't joking at all, and if she manages 1 billion as a loan, she should be given the financial control of the company. But her uncle calls her out that it is not possible in her lifetime as even the market value of Su family business isn't that much which will be impossible for her to get that amount of money in the first place. Then the grandmother claims that she will be keeping her promise if she can get a loan of that amount, and she will be given financial control for real. After getting outside of the mansion, Yingxie is heavily tensed up about the situation and asks Han Sanchen if he can manage something like that or not as if it doesn't, their villa will be long gone for real. But even after the reaction made by his in-laws, Sanchen reassures them that he will make it happen with no issues as he gets inside the car. Meanwhile, in the bank, the director reaches President Du about the situation on hand with the Su family for the fact that their big customer Han Sanchen is about to guarantee a loan for them. But as soon as the president hears about it, he instantly refuses the offer and suggests that the Su family should get lost as soon as possible. But the director is concerned about the situation as their big customer is about to move out somewhere else if he doesn't act accordingly, but the president doesn't seem to care much when he asks about the amount of money he has in his bank. But when the director claims that the man has 10 billion worth of assets in his name, he starts to lose his shit and decides to agree to all of the loan propositions and claims that they should be making an appointment the next day as soon as possible. When the director leaves the room, the president reminisces how he promised some companies that he will not be giving the Sioux family anything at all, but now he doesn't really have anything to do since they are about to lose such a big customer. Then back in the villa, Sanchen reveals to Yingxia that he has managed to have a discussion with the president the next day which quickly surprises Su Yingxia as she never expected it to happen this early. When she starts to ask for what kind of prize he will be needing in exchange, Sanchen decides to act humble claiming that he will not be needing anything in exchange as she is his wife, which gets her furious seeing that he cannot even make any kind of demands assuming that he isn't about to make any attempt ever in his whole life while staying as a mysterious character doing nothing to save himself. When Su Yingxia continues to treat Sanchen as if he is some sort of child needing to be taken care of, his mother-in-law suggests he should just stay at home, but Yingxia doesn't want that as she will be needing to take care of him in the first place as if he doesn't have anyone else. Then Yingxia's mother asks if she doesn't have to go to the bank to negotiate the loan and adds how it will be inconvenient to take Sanchen with her for the fact that they have Aunt He at home to take care of him. Sanchen then insists that it will be fine as he is wanting to take a rest at home, and she ends up listening to his request in the end. Then when Sanchen and Zhang Lan both are alone at the house, she ends up asking him when she is about to add Yingxia's name to the villa and Sanchen claims that the villa can be written in her name alone as long as she wants, and it doesn't matter to him at all as he only bought it for Yingxia in the first place. He then realizes that it is the only reason why she wanted him to stay at the house and she starts to hurry him up and find time to get this matter done as quickly as possible which was her plan from the beginning. Then Sanchen claims that if she wants him to get out of the Sioux family, she will have to regret it very quickly, and at that moment, the woman ends up stating that his money is almost spent anyways, so there is no reason for him to act so arrogantly. It makes Sanchen brag about it as he claims that he can buy 10 more villas like the one that they are living in. But the woman doesn't believe him at all and only continues to claim that even if his ability to improve hasn't gone up much. But his ways of bragging things are getting better and better every day, while adding that even if he had so much money, she doesn't care about it at all for once. Sanchen then doubts her words as someone so money-grubbing like her saying those things doesn't make any sense to him at all which makes her lash out at him as he never expected that someone like Sanchen will be confronting her head on. When she doesn't seem to understand the situation even for a bit, Sanchen says that he will be making her regret if she tries to ruin the relationship between him and Yingxia so much that he will make her regret being born in the first place which leaves Zhang Lan in awe as she gets reminded of the woman who she was slapped by that day when she went out with her girlfriends. She realizes that the same thing was said by the same woman who slapped her, and she even had the same tone and expression. She tries to keep her composure by thinking that it all might be an illusion as no one that powerful will have anything to do with someone like Han Sanchen, so she can continue to think about settling the score with Sanchen. Then back at the bank, 
Su Yingxia starts to face the director and the president all alone on behalf of the Su family, and the president calmly decides to explain the situation to her as none of the banks in Yunqing City are ready to arrange a loan for them. But Yingxia claims that he can believe in them as they are surely capable of paying the loan back as soon as possible as they are already aware of the value of the Western City project. Then when the president gets ready only considers the matter because of their common friend and Su Yingxia, realizes the common friend he is talking about must be none other than Han Sanchen as the man hopes that she can bring him along with her sometime. The whole matter makes Yingxia remember the Crystal Restaurant incident where the situation around Han Sanchen started to get more and more complicated which truly reflects that he is not a simple person, but he never wanted to show it to her before for some reason. When Su Yingxia asks the question to the president more about the matter deeply, he doesn't want to disclose any kind of information about it, so he suggests she should ask the man herself. When Su Yingxia starts to leave the bank premise, the president remembers how pissed the other companies will be after hearing about the incident, but the director insists that he shouldn't be worrying as long as they have such a big customer as Han Sanchen with them, while Su family is cooperating with Quanshi Industry on the Western City project, which will be a big future development in the near future. Then when the president couldn't remember Sanchen's name, the director helps him to be reminded of the man which makes him react so much as he is known as the famous trash son-in-law of the Su family. But the director believes that there is no way he can be a loser while the director continues to think that the big customer will be someone with the same name as the Su family who never paid attention to that useless son-in-law in their whole life as it is only normal to do so. When Su Yingxia gets back home, she starts questioning her mother asking for Sanchen's whereabouts and she only answers her questions by saying that she has already talked to him regarding the matter of changing the name of the villa to hers so she should be hurrying up to finish the matter with him as soon as possible. Yingxia realizes that it was the only reason why she wanted Sanchen to stay at home, and she answers positively which makes Yingxia claim that she doesn't want the house while slapping her hand at the same time. When her mother continues to press her on that matter, Yingxia gets serious about it and claims that she doesn't have to stay with them if she doesn't agree with her and she can move out of the house as soon as possible, which only makes Zhang Lan heavily furious. As soon as she gets inside the room, Sanchen asks her how the meeting went for her, but Yingxia is concerned about her mother bothering him once again. It seems that Sanchen didn't mind much as it's not that hard to put her name on the villa, but it makes Yingxia tear up as she already knows the intention of her mother so he shouldn't be agreeing with her at all. When Yingxia starts reacting, Sanchen states that she will be the one to decide it after all as he trusts her in the end, even if he doesn't trust her mother as they both engage in their intimate kiss after that. She then explains how the president was ready to get her alone and questions him if his face is worth a billion as he claims that one billion is nothing compared to her kiss. Then Yingxia insists on the fact that the president wanted to meet with him and Han Sanchen promises Su Yingxia that he will be meeting with the president soon and claims that if she wants the Su family to develop, keeping connections will be valuable for her in the future as connections are truly priceless. But Yingxia doesn't calm down with his indirect answers, so she questions him the same thing once again which makes Stanchen reveal his net worth in the bank with a sarcastic face which makes Yingxia think that he might be joking with her from the beginning, and insists that he should forget the question as if she didn't even ask him that. Stanchen makes a joke about it once again as she isn't believing in him once again which makes her claim that she will be better believing in ghosts instead of trusting his words. Then when Sanchen goes on to meet the doctor, he looks at the repeated tray of Sanchen and is quite surprised to see that he has made a surprising recovery in a week as if he is some kind of superhuman. Then when Sanchen decides to leave the hospital premise, the doctor instructs him not to lift anything heavy for a month in total. As he is about to leave, he reminisces how he will be missing Su Yingxia's care when both of his hands were plastered and decides to have a meeting with President Du as he has requested him to meet him face to face the other day. As Sanchen greets the president face to face, the president starts to wonder if he is the one who married Su Yingxia as he is uttering the name of her directly. Then the man couldn't cope with his curiosity in himself and got ready to ask Sanchen to inquire something from him. But it seems that Sanchen knows about his concern already. He then reveals the crucial information saying that he is the son-in-law of Su family and none other than the famous Han Sanchen which gets both the president and the director surprise as they weren't ready to see the reality like that. None of them couldn't comprehend how someone like him having 10 billion in his bank account would be holding up such humiliation and suffering for nothing. Then Sanchen states that he will be owing the president in the future as long as he is helping Su Yingxia so he can ask for anything from him any time he wants to which the president thanks him cordially 
as he promises that he will be doing his best to help his wife. Then Sanchin moves on to the director as she had helped him multiple times and gets ready to let her handle some financial product for him as an experiment. The director then hands him some wealth management product information recently launched by their bank and realizes she is about to profit a lot if someone like him decides to buy even any of them in between. Surprisingly, Sanchin states that he will be spending a million just for fun, which astonishes them once again. As their discussion ends, Sanchin gets ready to leave as he has to pick up his wife from her office while both the director and president continue to shiver in astonishment. Then one day when Han Sanchin is walking down the road, he notices that the friend of Yingxia is running barefoot directly to run into him, which makes him wonder what in the world might have happened to her. When he asks her if she is being hunted down, she begs for him to carry her. But Han Sanchin continues to avoid her, which makes her wonder why he would do such a thing. Then some lady comes in front of Han Sanchin along with some bodyguards of her asking if he knows the lady, but Han Sanchin starts avoiding the fact that he knows her in the first place. It makes her lash out at Han Sanchin as he is trying to avoid her despite the fact that she is the best friend of his wife. The woman who came along with her bodyguard insists that Han Sanchin should go away out of her sight since he is only delaying her work. Sanchin starts acting stubbornly asking what she would do to move him away from her. The woman then warns that if he doesn't want to get beaten, he should be moving away from her and directs her bodyguards to take care of him. Then as his bodyguards continue to bicker among themselves, intending that they will be beating up Han Sanchin and Ningxia's friend, claims that she will be finding the best doctor for him in the city if he gets hurt in the altercation. While she continues to cry like a baby, Han Sanchin insists that she should let them find out where the best orthopedic hospital is for obvious reasons. Soon, the bodyguards rush at Han Sanchin, but as they rush into him, Sanchin starts beating them from top to bottom as if they are wet clothes, which surprises Yingxia's friend as she had never expected him to get so good at fighting. When the beating session ends, Han Sanchin asks her what truly went in the background, and the woman who ended up bringing all her bodyguards claimed that his friend tried on clothes in her shop, scratched them up, and then ran away from her place, which is basically ruining people's things and make them lose money in the first place. When Han Sanchin realizes the situation, he starts apologizing to the woman claiming that he will be paying for whatever she ruined in her shop and also the medical expenses of the security guards by himself without making any kind of excuses. Then while going on their way, Yingxia's friend thanks Han Sanchin for covering for her and promises that she will be paying him back soon enough. Sanchin suggests she should be careful next time since she cannot be lucky every time as he will not be there to protect her in the future. After that, she starts asking Han Sanchin if he will be attending the alumni reunion the current year which makes him ask her about the alumni association since Su Yingxia didn't tell him anything about it. Then her friend claims that Yingxia used to join way before in the summer welcome every year, but that changed ever since she married Han Sanqin. According to her, her classmates are taking Su Yingxia as a joke right now because of her even though her status in the circle of classmates used to be in the highest place. Even many male classmates pursued the summer with the idea of getting the moon first, but the moment she got married to Han Sanqin, the male classmates who used to chase after her would sneer at the class reunion and it is obvious that Su Yingxia now avoids all of them for obvious reasons. Then she starts talking about Ron Momo, who had a grudge against Yingxia when she was in school, and now that Yingxia is married to him, she is using the whole incident to consider her worthless. After hearing the name of Momo, Han Sanchin asks her about the depth of such a weird name, and it seems that Su Yingxia and the others call her Mammy Rong instead of Rong Liu, which is her real name as she is an unruly woman and nasty. So they call her Mammy Rong, then as they are about to leave, she requests Han Sanchin saying that Su Yingxia has received a lot of appointments for her so he must be the one to help her to express her ill anger. Han Sanchin claims that he is taking note of all the things and if she doesn't have to talk about anything else, he would go to pick Su Yingxia up from the office. As Han Sanchin decides to part away, she claims that she will be paying him back when she gives rich and on the inside, she keeps feeling some sort of empty as if she is warming up to Han Sanchin in one way or another. Then when Han Sanchin finally gets to meet Su Yingxia outside the office, she starts to react as she didn't want him to get outside of the house to pick her up and starts acting bubbly to make her realize that he doesn't need any kind of rest anymore. As soon as she realizes that Han Sanchin has already taken out all of the plasters, she fires up at the fact that the doctor wanted him to take 40 days to recover as she gets a feeling that he doesn't want to keep his hands intact anymore. Realizing that she isn't about to believe in his words alone, 
Han Sanchin suggests that they can go to the doctor together as the doctor has finished checking him out. But Yingxia isn't someone who is about to believe that easily, so she again asks Sanchin if he is lying to her and Sanchin claims that he isn't about to lie to her at any cost. After getting inside the car, Su Yingxia remarks how the doctor is about to have a hard time believing that he is recovering that fast, and Sanchin states that if he didn't move that fast, his eyes would have fallen to the ground so the doctor was lucky that he didn't stuff it back in for him, which makes Yingxia smirk that he is now acting as a pure smug right now. As they continue to poke at each other, Sanchin remarks how he met her best friend Shen Lingyao on the way from the hospital to the company and Yingxia claims that her friend hasn't contacted her for several days as if she doesn't know where she is right now. Han Sanchin then begins telling her how she scratched the clothes in the store and was chased by several security guards running all over the streets and that is the main reason he ended up meeting her in the first place as he ended up beating all the security guards. Then Yingxia begins squeezing his cheeks in curiosity if he can just hit people and get hurt himself in the middle, so he isn't allowed to fight the others without her permission from now on. Han Sanchin, as obedient as he is, promises her that he will now be beating up whoever she wants him to hit and no one else. He then also begins talking about how Shen Lingyo told him about the reunion and the topic that she wanted them to participate in it together for obvious reasons. But Su Yingxia doesn't seem like she is interested in all that anymore. Even so, Han Sanchin remarks how he has already promised her that he will be taking her there which makes her say that he can go take her instead so they can hold hands together. Then Su Yingxia remarks how her friend has been drooling over her for a long time ever since she realized the truth about him and confused Sanchin remarks that he is a married man and that isn't about to happen. She then elaborates on how her classmates treat her like a joke right now and Sankin presses on the situation saying that it is the main reason why she should be going even more as she is in charge of the Western City project while she now lives in a hillside villa, so nobody is qualified to laugh at her anymore. When Su Yingxia tries to make an excuse for not going once again, Han Sanchin stops her there and remarks that as long as she doesn't want to treat him like a loser, no one in the world is qualified to look at him like that. Su Yingxia making a puppy face states that she doesn't think of him like that anymore which makes Sanchin's point, and he thinks that it will be better for her to go to the reunion with him as it is good to go and see the world then. Meanwhile, in the Su family company, Su Heicho is quite relaxed that he didn't hear from Yingxia about the loan thinking that it is yet to be negotiated which will force her to sell the hillside villa as there is a good show to watch this time. Suddenly, Su Yihan is forced into the room's door to spread the news of Su Yingxia finalizing the loan as the finance department claims that the loan has already been credited into the company's account, which starts to make Su Heicho a sharp burn in his confidence. Obnoxious Su Heicho starts asking how much the loan was for, and it seems that his fear is now becoming a reality since Yingxia has already managed to reach her target, which is about a whopping 1 billion. Su Heicho is having a hard time believing that Yingxia made it happen after all, and at that time, Su Heikshav suggests that they should be going to the finance department and Su Yihan claims that there is no reason to do so anymore as she came in to call them to join the meeting as their grandmother has called for one already to discuss the situation. Meanwhile, in the meeting room, the grandmother seems quite expressive about the situation as she is quite grateful to Su Yingxia for managing the loan in the first place. Then the grandmother lets everyone know that she is about to keep her promise by making Su Yingxia the head of the finance department from now on because of her newly made achievements. But it seems, in addition to that, she has to make another announcement on the same day as it is quite important for everyone. When the grandmother is about to make the announcement, everyone starts to wonder if she is really about to keep her word and her son starts stating that the whole thing is a big deal for the company so she shouldn't be taking it too lightly. Su Heicho then starts supporting his father saying that she cannot let someone outside of the company have a hold on to the company's finances. After heeding that, the grandmother starts claiming that the whole thing will be a burden for her to take care of so she will be appointing someone who would help her with it. Then she adds that Su Heiko will be the deputy director of the company from now on as he will be fully assisting Su Yingxia in the Western City project. After hearing the announcement, Su Heicho gets so happy that he claims that he will be trying his best to live up to her expectations with a cunning look on his face. As Heicho looks over the situation, he anticipates that half of Su Yingxia's power will now be in his hands so he can do however he wants from now on which makes Su Yingxia realize that the grandmother still doesn't trust her, but she couldn't speak out about it on the surface in her face. She now knows that no matter how much she does for the company, she will always stay inferior to Su Heicho as he is a male figure in the company. 
The grandmother then repeats her decision to make it clear that she will have to cooperate with Hai Chao to fulfill her duties, and Ying Xia agrees to her decision without making a sound. After that, the old woman decides to take her leave saying that the rest can be handled by them as they will now take care of how the company is about to be developed. As the grandmother leaves, Su Heikao starts making dirty remarks on how her grandmother doesn't trust her no matter what and his place will always be something unreachable for her. But even so, Yingxia fires up saying that she will review all the transactions no matter what since he will have to explain every penny spent on behalf of the company. As she starts to leave the room, Hoiko berates her for the fact that Yingxia is still trying to take care of everything despite the fact that the grandmother doesn't care about her position. The rest of the family starts remarking how they aren't about to take care of any of the words being spoken by Su Yingxia, and they are eager to see how far she is about to go to reach her mission. Heicho's father starts acting all brave and mighty stating how his son is the deputy director of the company, which makes it clear that they do not have to worry about Yingxia's activities as now they have one billion in their hand, and it will be letting down their ancestors if they aren't about to take any of it for themselves. Everyone gets excited in the office as they are happy about Heicho's position as they are now counting on him while shaming Yingxia in the best way possible. Then back inside the car, Yingxia lets Han Sanchen know that her friend had invited them to her home since Sanchen helped her that day in the shopping mall. As Yingxia lets him know that she will be directing him to her friend's house, Sanchen out of curiosity asks her why she would make such a face even though she managed to get the loan. She then clears up the situation of how the grandmother made Su Heicho the deputy director of the company on the grounds of helping her share the pressure, and she even asked her to share all the information with Heichao. Han Sanchen isn't surprised about the whole situation as he knew that she was about to do something like that, but he is quite surprised by the fact that she would go this far to hold her back. But Yingxia isn't ready to accept that the grandmother would keep siding with Heicho no matter what, as if she doesn't care if Heicho is about to ruin the company's ground. According to Han Sankin, he knows that the grandmother isn't about to get Yingxia influential in the company for various reasons as Hei Chao was her candidate to become the next chairman of the company. Sanchen clears up her confusion saying that she already knows about Su Yingxia not leaving the company which gives the grandmother the authority to do whatever that she is doing just because she is so sure. As the three of them are about to leave for their program, Su Yingxia seems phased to hear that someone has booked Fuyang Resort for them even though it is quite hard to manage the booking. According to Yoyo, Momo Rang's husband is the one who managed the booking for them as Yang Qi. The owner of the Fuyang Resort is the uncle of his husband. After hearing that, Han Sanchen remarks how Yang Kai is a strong man and every big boss in the city now has to give him a face because of his authority. Yoyo then asks Sanchen why he would talk about other people and their prestiges, since all she heard about Yang Kai is that if he didn't win the jackpot three years ago, he would have never been able to build so many resorts in the first place. The moment Sanchen listens to her remarks he is quite amused because he knows about the whole thing otherwise. But Yoyo keeps her opinions the same about the whole incident, so she just repeats what she heard from the others. The whole remark makes Han Sanchen reminisce about how he invested in Yang Kai in the first place which lets him grasp the situation of how Yang Qi managed to use the money that he invested in him. Meanwhile, Yang Wen is having an intimate meeting with his love Rong Liu after bringing his uncle's car to spend time together and she is happier to see how everyone else is praising her husband's money claiming that her life is quite inevitable. At that moment, Rong Liu then remarks how she would have never accepted him as her husband if he didn't think of letting her have such an expensive diamond ring as she gets out the diamond ring in front of everyone. As her friends start to grasp after looking at her diamond ring, Rong Liu speaks so highly about it as it is worth over 100,000 and she also plans to have him buy her an even more expensive and bigger diamond ring for her wedding anniversary the next year. Yang Wen then takes the situation to his advantage and states how he has a surprise for her as everyone is now present in front of them. According to him, he has already ordered a custom ring for her on a special day, and after hearing the remarkable conversation between the couple, the audience continues to gush over their love story as they continue to have an intimate kiss between them. Soon Su Yingxia arrives with Yoyo and Han Sanchen as she remarks how long it had been since joined the reunion. As soon as they arrive, people start gushing over Su Yingxia for her beauty while remarking the fact how she is still beautiful after all these years as she used to be their class flower. While people continue to cheer up after seeing Yingxia after a long time, Rong Liu starts to get jealous of her as she believes that she is being ignored even though she is the one who is more beautiful than Yingxia. 
She then starts to make dirty remarks about her including all the male students in their reunion as if they are trying their best to get under her skirt as much as they can. Rong Liu then changes her strategy by saying that Yingxia must have been using some cheap perfume, which is making her smell this bad, while acting eager to lend her some Chanel perfume to make it better for her. Then she also claims that her husband gifts her one each month, and that she is more than unable to make use of it for all in her next life. After hearing all of these cruise remarks, Yoyo couldn't hold her anger, so she starts to protest on behalf of Su Yingxia by mentioning that she only uses first copy. But Rong Liu protests her situation by saying that she isn't the one to use something like that while she drives Ferrari right now. Yang Wen comes into the scene as a hero acting like a humble person, insisting that they are all his classmates, so she shouldn't be acting mean to them. At that moment, Yoyo feels like she is looking at something familiar as he might be wearing the same shirt as what Han Sanchen had been wearing in the video of him playing the piano. Su Yingxia then introduces Han Sanchen to the crowd, and the moment everyone lays their glances at him, no one could believe how someone looking like him would be useless as the whole city continues to mention as he is looking quite elegant. While others continue to wonder how he might be someone to live off of woman, Yang Wen makes his entrance saying that Sanchen must be a kept man out of curiosity. Han Sanchen then suddenly comments how his uncle wanted Yang Wen to keep a low profile for his situation to get better, and the moment Yang Wen hears about it, he is surprised to know that Sanchen even knows about his uncle in the first place. Without knowing about Sanchen's background, he starts to mock Sanchen even more as he points out how he is better than him in everything when it comes to fashion and acting out. It makes Sanchen claim that if he doesn't know how to become a person with a low profile, he would love to teach Yang Wen how to do so on behalf of his uncle. As they finish their short introduction to each other, Yingxia suggests Sanchen that they should sit for a while to wait for the remaining of her classmates. While they continue to move away from the place, Rong Liu and her husband keeps on gossiping about Sanchen and Yingxia as they are both excited to trample on them since they are yet to be satisfied. When everyone get into the resort most of them start talking about the video where Han Sanchen was playing the piano but none of them know the identity of the man who'd done it in the first place. Some of them think that the whole piano scene was made up by some agency to hype up the man as he hasn't appeared for a long time in front of the public. After hearing that, Yoyo suggests Han Sanchen to perform once again, so they all get shocked and amazed by his demeanor in real life since all of them are about to get jealous when they get to know that the person who played the piano is none other than Han Sanchen, husband of Su Yingxia. But Sanchen disapproves as he came into the program as a supportive husband to Yingxia and Yoyo is having a hard time to accept that as she doesn't want everyone to trample on her for no reason. Then suddenly, Yang Wen goes on to the piano and people start talking about how he is the hottest man in the whole place right now. Even Yoyo gets frustrated to accept that Yang Wen is about to take the role of the amazing piano guy in front of everyone, while Han Sanchen and Su Yingxia stands beside her shocked. Then to get the people's excitement to a new level, Ron Liev starts bragging about her husband portraying himself as the real piano guy, who played the piano in the viral video adding the fact that her husband started playing piano since he was a child. As the foolish classmates of her hear saying something like that, they get quite excited believing her every words as the piano guy is one of their most anticipated character in the society. As the people continue to sing about the piano guy's appraisal, the couple continues to blush over their achievements and everything. But Yoyo couldn't keep herself away from the fake assumptions, so she comes in front of everyone to prove how wrong they are with their talk. As soon as Yoyo starts claiming that Rong Liu's husband isn't the piano prince, she realizes that something is about to happen as Yoyo came meddling in their business once again. But she continues to trust her instincts believing that nobody knows who the real piano prince is and keeps on arguing with Yoyo to save her husband's picture in front of everyone. Yoyo protests her words knowing that Rong Liu is only trying to get her classmates jealous for not having Yang Wen in her life and the whole thing isn't that fun to begin with. Then she takes out the video of the Piano Prince and slams down the proof that Yang Wen doesn't resemble anything compared to the Piano Prince as the only resemble that he has is the color of shirt the man was wearing that day. Then everyone around the place starts talking about it realizing that Yoyo is indeed talking about the truth as Yang Wen's face shape doesn't match with the Piano Prince's. Then Rong Liu blames the whole thing on the phone's camera angle to save her husband's reputation in front of everyone and blames it all on Yoyo saying that she herself hasn't seen the man. But when Yoyo claims that she knows who the real piano prince is, the whole crowd gets flabbergasted while Rong Liu continues to act confident in front of the crowd to maintain the balance. As the crowd starts to support Rong Liu, 
They keep on supporting Yang Wen on the idea as they have at least some kind of resemblance and according to them. The rich women are paying a lot of money to find out who the man was that day. Ron Leaves supports the crowd once again as if they have joined the bandwagon together and even enters Yingxia in the whole topic who wasn't even meddling into the whole argument. She even goes far as saying that Yoyo is acting like Su Yingxia's dog which fires up Yingxia almost instantly. Then Yoyo meddles in saying that if they are so much interested in knowing who the piano prince is, she presents in Sanchen to go play the piano to prove the reality in front of everyone which gets Rong Liu and Yang Wen speechless. What the couple doesn't believe is they are assuming that there is no way someone like Han Sanchen would be able to be the piano prince and starts laughing at his face thinking that they are only trying to embarrass themselves. As Han Sanchen is about to go for the piano, Ron Liu continues to brag saying that if he ends up breaking the piano, Sanchen would have to pay the fees to buy another one. Then as soon as Sanchen sits on the seat to play the piano, people continue to realize the resemblance between him and the man in the video as he continues to play the same music that was played in the video with a proud face expression. The people soon realize who the real piano prince is and Ron Liu starts reacting to the whole scene. As Ron Liu has inspired his husband to act against Han Sanchen, he states that he will do something by using his uncle soon enough. When Yang Wen's man hits Su Yingxia, Yoyo comes in the middle warning that she will surely call the police if they keep on harassing them. When Han Sanchen finishes playing the piano, everyone in the room is super impressed as he sounded more fluent than what Yang Wen played earlier and even the rhythm was super perfect. As they confirm that Han Sanchen is the real piano prince, Yoyo is having fun while arguing with everyone as they are all confirmed right now. She starts asking Rong Liu how it feels to get hit hard in the face and starts to tease her about it and Rong Liu starts to ignore the whole topic saying that Han Sanchen can be pretending as well despite the fact that he looks similar. When Rong Liu claims that Yoyo starts to point it out to the whole crowd to make her own point and claims that her vain characteristics to take it to the extreme make her so sick. At that moment, Yang Wen claims that he is about to go to his uncle to bring some of his people to help her out in the matter as he is about to make her kneel down and apologize to her. Rong Liu claims that she wants Yoyo, Su Yingxia, and Han Sanchen to be humiliated in front of everyone so they do not ever think of messing with her in the future. Yang Wen reassures her saying that he will make it happen since he knows about his uncle and his power. He is quite confirmed that the three of them will be regretting even coming to the reunion when he is done. When Yang Wen's uncle gets to hear about the incident, he fires up in an instant as he doesn't expect anyone to humiliate his niece-in-law and Yang Wen starts to paint the situation even badly, so he takes the matter more seriously. When his uncle hears until the end of it, he claims that he is about to send someone over later to help him out with it. Then in the private room, Han Sanchen is having a good time with his wife and her friend and suddenly he thinks of going into the bathroom for some reason. It seems that he was guessing that Yang Wen would act up since he isn't someone who is about to let it go that easily which makes him eager to have a discussion about it with Yang Qi so he can handle the matter before it gets worse. But at the same time, he knows that Yi Fei is asking around about his news so he cannot be making too much of a commotion as three years ago, Ling Yang was placed in charge of the forces in the Grey Zone and Yang Qi opened up contracts in Yun City for him in case of emergency. As he hasn't been inside his office for a long time, Sanchen wonders where he is as he comes in front of the office of the general manager. On the other hand, some gangbangers come into the private room asking for everyone to get out of there, and it seems that those men came because Yang Qi ordered them to come and Rong Liu wants them to take care of Su Yingxia and the others. Yang Wen claims that it will not be a good idea since Su Yingxia is still a member of the Su family, but Rong Liu is not about to listen to him since she wants Yingxia to be unable to lift her head in front of her. She also remarks that Yang Qi wouldn't be taking the Su family seriously so it wouldn't be much of a problem for him to call her husband a coward as she as his wife was bullied by Yingxia. When Yang Wen gets motivated enough, he decides to do as his wife said and he claims that he will be going there now to tell them secretly. When Yang Wen gets in front of the man who came in, he starts to warn him claiming that he should be getting away from him. As the leader's men notice Su Yingxia and Yo Ao, they start to make dirty remarks commenting about their skin and asking if they are about to have some drinks with them. Suddenly, one of the classmates comes in to ask the men out as they have come in without asking for permission, and the man gets kicked by the gamebanger in the stomach. The man starts questioning Rong Liu about how she can behave like that to her classmates, and he starts to comment that no one would make a fuss in this place without Yang Qi's permission, 
so it must be them behind everything. But to make their acting realistic, Rong Liu claims that the men aren't hearing from Yang Wen as well while commenting that Su Yingxia and Yoyo's revealing dresses might have provoked them to do something like that. Yingxia claims that Rong Liu cannot be doing something because of their conflict and Rong Liu continues to make dirty remarks about her as if she didn't hear her at all. Then the man sent by Yang Qi starts to get all over Yingxia commenting that they have already spent nights together and when Yingxia starts to feel annoyed, she calls it a bullshit and ends up slapping on his face heavily. When the man feels like he had been disrespected, he ends up throwing a slap on Yingxia's face as well. When Yang Wen's man hits Su Yingxia, Yoyo comes in the middle warning that she will surely call the police if they keep on harassing them. The man who came to back up Yang Wen starts laughing at Yoyo's face, saying that he doesn't care about the police as he visits them regularly, and now it only feels like a second home to him for being regular in there. He keeps on threatening Yoyo, saying that if she makes the mistake of getting him and his men arrested, she will not have a good time when she comes out of her house as he would be the one knocking on the door of her house every day to make her feel like she is going through hell. As Su Yingxia shouts at Rong Liu asking if she had to go this far to make her point as her feud with her is that the boys that she liked in school liked her instead of Rong Liu and for that, she cannot just hire someone to hit her to make her feel terrible. The moment she finishes the sentence, Rong Liu throws a drink at her face claiming that those people have nothing to do with her so she can do her own dirty deeds without blaming her claiming that Su Yingxia only pretended to be innocent. But her private life was a mess filled with multiple men. Then Yoyo decides to fire back at Rong Liu as if she is describing her own personality in the first place while making it quite clear that Su Yingxia didn't have any kind of relationship with anyone in the school while Rong Liu changed boyfriends every three days. Then Rong Liu goes on to attack Yoyo by holding her hair knowing that it is the truth that gets Yingxia to fire up, so she goes on to attack Rong Liu as well. As Yang Wen notices that both of the women attacked his wife, he orders his men to attack both of them, and the man does it by kicking and punching back and forth at Yingxia and Yoyo at the same time. As Rong Liu commands her men to hold Yingxia for her, she keeps on slapping her face deliberately threatening to apologize to her, while Yoyo gets punched in the stomach by Yang Wen for hitting Rong Liu. Meanwhile, while both of the women continue to sit on the ground crying and losing all hope, Han Sanchen meets Yang Qi, the uncle of Yang Wen, to let him know that he came with his wife to see her reunion and came to meet him for some specific reasons as they haven't been seeing each other for three years. The man gasped saying that there is no way he would forget Han Sanchen as even if he forgets his last name somehow, he could never forget the great kindness Han Sanchen did to him. Then Sanchen makes him realize that the things that he gave him once, he can take them as well if he wants which makes Yang Qi lose all his shit and he starts begging him not to do so while kneeling down on the floor. But Sanchen only came to him to remind that and nothing else as he doesn't want to destroy the relationship of three years and when he completes his sentence, hopeless Yang Qi claims that he can be assured that the man will be staying as his pet for the rest of his life and will never be complaining about it at all. After telling him to get up, Han Sanchen starts asking him about his nephew Yang Qi and asks the man's him to answer if he wanted to be high profile which makes the man lose all his shit. He begins explaining how he isn't about to have any child and he will have to take care of it in the end. That is why he started treating him as his own son and when he asks Sanchen if something has happened, Sanchen answers by saying that Yang Wen's wife is in conflict with his wife but all he wants him to do is warn him not to do so. But the moment Yang Qi hears that he starts reacting badly as if something terrible has happened, as Yang Wen asked him to deal with someone named Su Yingxia. When Sanchen gets to hear that he demands an explanation which makes the man elaborate on the truth as something might be happening inside the private room when Yang Wen asked him to send some people to the room. The moment Sanchen hears about it, he fires up immediately and reminds him that he should be praying that Su Yingxia is okay otherwise he is about to bury his whole family with him. Meanwhile, the situation in the private room is quite rough for Yingxia every moment as Rong Liu made her men hold Su Yingxia so she can humiliate her as much as she wants. While Su Yingxia starts to struggle being held by the men, Rong Liu wonders why Sanchen didn't come back already since he could be able to help her if he wanted to, but at the same time, she doubted if Sanchen left the place already since he is known to be a famous loser around the whole town. Rong Liu is quite confident that nothing will be able to touch her this time as Yang Wen's uncle is the boss around here so now, she can torture Yingxia as much as she wants on her own and she starts by ordering Yingxia that she will have to kneel down to her. 
When she notices that Yingxia isn't responding accordingly, she starts threatening Yingxia, saying that she will have her men all the way with her if she doesn't start kneeling down to her. Suddenly, Han Sanqin dashes inside the room, ordering Rong Liu to let her go, and the moment he walks in, he straightaway punches Yang Wen on the face and all his men at the same time deliberately. After releasing Ningxia, he starts asking her if she is hurting, but Yingxia insists that she will be fine, and at that moment, other men instantly raise the chairs inside the premise to attack Han Sanqin. Fired up Han Sanqin bets that he will finish them all off, and he starts beating them all to the pulp as they continue to lose blood and teeth, while others stood in the line fearing what is about to come for them. But Sanchin isn't about to stop as he continues to break all the furniture on all of the goons, which makes Rong Liu wonder how a loser like Han Sanchin would be able to hit hard like that. When Yang Wen comes to the scene, he realizes that everything is already over for him as Sanchin has fired up. And instead of knowing about the situation at all, Yang Wen continues to use his mouth, which makes Sanchin hit him so hard that blood starts to gush out of his face. When Rong Liu notices that, she starts rushing toward Han Sanchin to get some kind of payback. Han Sanchin then holds her head with his hand to remind her that even though he doesn't hit a woman, he would love to make an exception this special day. He starts going crazy on Rong Liu as well as he bashes her head on the ground which starts to make everyone talk around him and warns Sanchin that he will not be able to leave with his life. If Yang Wen's uncle lashes out at him, everyone starts suggesting he should take away Su Yingxia and leave the premise constantly and even Su Yingxia starts requesting that they should leave. But Kong Sanchin advises her to sit down and rest as he reassures her that he will be taking care of it. At the same time, Yang Wen starts talking against him instead of backing away warning that he will be making him a heavy price as he knows that Yang Wen is talking so highly because he is backed by his uncle Yang Qi. He immediately yells at Yang Qi to come in front of him. As soon as Han Sanchin starts calling for Yang Qi, he starts running inside the room making his presence clear and his nephew Yang Wen starts acting all innocent to ask him for help saying that Sanchin had beaten him and his wife. But instead of listening to him, Yang Qi slaps heavily on his face telling him to buzz off and immediately starts kneeling down to Sanchin which surprises everyone as none of them were expecting to see such a scenario even Yoeo and Yingxia herself. The moment he gets on with kneeling down at Sanchin, Yang Wen continuously asks him for his reason to kneel down to Sanchin as he is wishing that his uncle would finish Sanchin and avenge him. The situation makes Yang Qi rage so much that he once again punches Yang Wen while asking him if he is trying to get him killed in the first place. He then starts stomping him on the ground non-stop claiming that he will now be finishing him off by beating him to death and Rong Liu starts making him calm saying that he must be stomping on the wrong person since he is his nephew. Then Yang Qi shifts his glance at Rong Liu as he slaps the hell out of her to ask her what she is good at instead of causing more trouble for him since she thinks of herself as such a big shot. He then deliberately continues to slap the hell out of her demanding she should elaborate on how she would live such a lavish life if it wasn't for him. Yang Qi then gets both Yang Wen and Rong Liu to kneel in front of Han Sanchen and Su Yingxia as they have to ask for forgiveness from Su Yingxia. Then when Yang Wen focuses on being his nephew instead of apologizing to Su Yingxia, Yang Qi states that from now on he will have to do nothing with him and when the whole crowd witnesses the scene, all of them are out of their minds not being able to digest the whole thing in their mind. They are so shocked to hear that, even though Yang Kai is Yang Wen's uncle who made him feel like he is his father, now he wants to cut all ties with him of this incident. Then sensing that the situation has gone quite wrong, Yang Qi kneels down in front of Han Sanchen, once again accepting that it is all his fault since he made Yang Wen such a foolish and ignorant person in the first place, and claims that if Sanchen wants to finish himself, he will be accepting that without saying a single word. Meanwhile, both Su Yingxia and Yoeo are shocked to see that Yang Qi is calling Han Sanchen brother even though there is a huge age gap between them as there must be some reason behind it. Then when Han Sanchen what he should do since someone wanted to harm his wife and Yang Qi, then points out Rong Liu to a man saying that he now can do anything to her any way he wants. Then as the situation starts to alleviate Rong Liu starts crying out to her husband and Yang Wen starts begging his uncle to remark that she is nothing but his nephew-in-law so he cannot do something like that. Then in rage Yang Qi claims that no matter who the woman is, even if it is his own wife who did something like that to Su Yingxia, she would have to face the same fate for obvious reasons since she is the one to be blamed in this whole scenario as she brought it on herself. Then instead of sensing the play of this whole drama, 
Yang Wen once again goes on to state that he will make Sanchen suffer to take his revenge, and at that moment, Han Sanchen makes it quite clear that he only regards Yang Wen as an ant as he doesn't have any kind of qualifications to take any kind of revenge on him, and as even if he is given the opportunity, he will only continue to dig his own grave once again. At that moment, Su Yingxia calls out to Sanchen claiming that she wants to go to the hospital, and before leaving the premise, Sanchen makes it clear to Yang Qi that if his wife has the slightest scar on her face, he will have to start preparing a coffin for him without making any exceptions. In the next scene, Su Heicho can be seen yelling at Su Yingxia on the phone as he demands her to hurry up and come to the front gate of the construction site. When the grandmother notices that she took a week off and now she is saying that she is supervising the construction site, she starts to rage at Yingxia as if she is trying to avoid working and fulfilling her duties. The moment she finishes saying her nasty words, Yingxia comes over to the scene asking why she came to the scene in person on such a hot day and Su Heikov starts blaming Yingxia saying that she intentionally took her time to come around to the construction site to meet the grandmother while she came ahead of time before him. Then the grandmother starts asking for an explanation from Yingxia as she had been avoiding coming to work and boss Zhang beside her starts vouching for her saying that she had been supervising the construction site the whole week. He then starts praising Su Yingxia for having such a dedication to her work, and he even starts elaborating how Su Yi Han and Su Heikshou continued to miss work for all these days as they left the site in a hurry after less than 10 minutes. Boss Zhang then also remarks how it is a blessing for the Su family not to have Su Heikshou in charge, which makes the grandmother say that if he wants to give Heikshou a task to make a judgment of his capabilities, he can do so any time to make him like Heikshou. Boss Zhang then makes it clear that he doesn't need to do such a thing to such a delicate boy like Hei Cho, as if he doesn't do it well, he will be implicated in the first place, since his boss only trusts Su Yingxia and the Su family, and he would not want anyone else in the family to get involved in this whole thing, which shocks the whole family member in an instant. Then the grandmother advises Su Yingxia if the boss likes her so much, she cannot be letting him down at all, no matter what happens. Su Yingxia then guarantees her grandmother that she will be doing her best, and she also remarks how she still has a lot of things to deal with in the company, which may not be able to keep her presence at the construction site every day. At that moment, the grandmother announces that her son Su Gulen will be coming to the construction site from now on and the moment he starts protesting her requests. She starts shouting at him and makes it quite clear that if he cannot do such thing, he can forget coming back in the company ever again. Then Golan begs her to stop as he will be doing as she requested him to do so which clears up the whole situation for the day. Then when Sanchen meets Yingxia in the car, she thanks him for advising her to be present at the construction site two days earlier knowing that she would have been caught by him. At that time, Sanchen makes her understand that she had to avoid work since she was recovering from injury, and with Su Heikyo's character, he would never miss such an opportunity to bring her down at any cost. He then starts bragging about his wife about her beauty complimenting her that she has recovered the best way possible from her scars, and Yingxia starts to act all gushy claiming otherwise. Then Han Sanchen promises her that he will never let anyone hurt her ever again while holding her hand, and it makes Yingxia ask him if he was being honest about destroying Yang Qi if it left a scar on her face. Sanchen remarks that he wouldn't only target Yang Qi but his whole family to uproot them one by one. Then Su Yingxia requests Sanchen to go back to the company as she wants to talk about some problems in the financial accounts to her grandmother since she wants to cut off their financial path so they cannot embezzle in the company in the future since all that 1 billion loans were managed by Sanchen himself. But Sanchen believes that talking about all that to her grandmother isn't going to bring any kind of change. She is always going to take Heicho's side no matter what and the whole family is against her right now. Then Su Yingxia asks him if he is afraid and Sanchen claims that he would always be ready to go against the whole world without being afraid of anything as he starts wiping all the tears off Yingxia's face. Then inside the Su family building, Yingxia starts explaining the matter of the funds that were withdrawn for no reason as the amount accumulated up to more than 4 million hoping that everyone will be able to present her with a reason. Then at that moment, Su Yi Han and all the others are put in a tough position, they start to keep it to themselves, thinking that the amount wasn't such a big amount. At that moment, the grandmother suggests Ningxia lead the matter as it is since they are all working for the company, so she shouldn't be doing that ever again. It makes Su Ningxia fear the fact that she managed to get a loan on behalf of the Su family, and if she is unable to get the funds back, can she still be able to save the whole family? She realizes that to protect Su Haikshou, 
The old lady must have been sacrificing the safety of the Sioux family and knowing that she couldn't keep her anger all bottled to herself. She starts shouting against the grandmother judging the altercation and starts explaining what Boss Zhang elaborated the situation to her as the project isn't completed yet, so they aren't about to get any kind of money against it. She fears that when the company faces another economic crisis, they aren't about to be able to fill the hole at all. At the same time, Han Sanchen is seen poking around some shabby-looking neighborhood looking for the number one person in Yun City's underground boxing ring. He is feeling quite out of place after noticing the whole area as he is having a hard time believing that someone like that would be living in such an area while the person is supposed to live a lavish life. According to Mo Yang, Dao Shai is a native of Yun City, and he is living as a single father with his daughter, while being a professional kickboxing athlete before and after retiring, he originally found a job as a security guard. But when his daughter became seriously ill, it all got worse for him since, despite the fact that his daughter was cured in the end, he ended up falling into a crippling debt of several million won. It seems that Dao Xi was forced to quit his poorly paid job to do black boxing in Yi Fi's boxing underground to manage money for his daughter's treatment. But the debt is yet to be repaid. Mo Yang comments that the man is now acting as a cash cow in Yi Fi's hands and even if he pays off his debts later. With Yi Fi's ruthless style, he will be using his daughter to threaten him to continue work for him for sure. Then after hearing the whole thing, Han Sanction grasps the understanding of the man's story which is his daughter, and remarks that if he can pay off his debts and keep his daughter safe, he would make the whole thing work out for him. Sanction decides to go have a look, and the moment they walk up to the premise of the ruined house, they notice some men are creating a huge crowd to ask for money from Dao Shai. It seems that Dao Shai is trying his best to make them understand that he just paid tuition for his daughter's education and doesn't have any amount of money on him, but even though he continues to make them understand that he will be paying them back, they aren't ready to hear him out as he had been saying all that for a long time. The man goes as far as saying that Dao Shi must let her daughter see that he owes them money, while calling him a debt dogger which starts to get Dao Shi worked up as they have mentioned his daughter in the first place. But when the men start to threaten him by saying that they will call the police to sue him for not paying back the money that he already owes to enforce it and get him locked up, he decides to get the man out of his bounds knowing that he is quite hopeless right now. At that moment, Han Sanction comes in with his companion asking them about the amount that Dao Shai owes them as he will be paying on his behalf. After hearing out the men, Han Sanction leaves a bundle of 20,000 for them insisting that they should divide it among themselves to take the rest as interest. Han Sanchen starts feeling bad after looking at Dao Shi's face as he has never expected someone like him who had never lost a single fight would be unable to pay back such a small amount of money to someone. Dao Shi asks Sanchen why he is helping him and when Sanchen remarks the fact that he is indeed the man who is at the top of underground boxing, Dao Shi realizes that he must not be a good man since he knows him as well. When Dao Shi asks what he wants, Sanchen claims that he admires him and states that he is wanting to ask him to help him while agreeing that he will be getting directly to the point. The moment Dao Shi makes a comment saying there is no way he would admire him by just meeting him for the first time, Han Sanchen throws a lower kick at him, which Dao Shi had to stop with the best of his will. Dao Shi remembers that Sanchen is the man wearing the mask who fought him that day and Sanchen proposes the deal of paying all his debts and taking care of him and his daughter so they can live a better life. Then Dao Shi claims that there are things that he doesn't understand so he should just get on with leaving since his daughter will be coming back soon enough as he doesn't want her to meet some strangers. Then Sanchen remarks that he must be fearing that Yi Fei would be targeting his daughter and it must be the reason why he continued to stay with Yi Fei even though he is exploiting his pay in every game. Han Sanchen claims that he will be helping him with the Yi Fi matter but Dao Shi doesn't seem to believe his capabilities despite the fact that Han Sanchen is a great fighter himself and at that moment, Han Sanchen adds that he shouldn't be worrying so much about it as Yi Fi is about to die the same night with a devilish smirk on his face. Then Han Sanchen starts preparing with weapons for the night and Mo Yang starts asking him if he is about to go to kill Yi Fi alone because it seems like Han Sanchen is out of his mind if he is planning to do so. According to Han Sanchen, he believes that Yi Fei is looking for him everywhere which makes it necessary for him to finish him off way sooner than he finds out the real identity of him, which will create even more danger for Su Yingxia in the future. Then there is also the benefit of being able to recruit Dao Shai if he ends up succeeding in his mission which will be like killing two birds with one stone for him. Then Mo Yang starts reminding that he doesn't know who Yi Fei is as he is the boss of the boxing ring, 
and there will be countless bodyguards around him who are all boxing experts. No matter what they will be around him, and it seems that the number of bodyguards is always more than four, which will continue to complicate the situation for him. But even Mo Yang knows that it might not be impossible to finish Yi Fei off, but if he ends up making too much noise, the impact of the situation will be too wide, which will probably end up getting tangled him in the situation. Then Han Sanchen claims that they are never going to know if they do not try, and since he knows that the man will be reaching for the Golden Bridge City Entertainment Center the same night, he feels like it will be the perfect opportunity for him to finish the man off. Then Mo Yang starts asking him about his plans, and if he feels like he and Lin Yang should be cooperating in this movement as well and Han Sanchen claims that there will be no need for them to help him so they can just chill and wait for the news until he comes back to help him with the aftermath. Then as Han Sanchen is about to enter the entertainment center, Yoyo ends up noticing her from a taxi while he is about to enter the place. The moment he enters the premise, a woman starts asking him about the floor he wants to go to since there are various facilities presented on each floor. Han Sanchen makes a choice of the third floor, and the woman starts directing him to the best private room they have. The moment they get in, Sanchen claims that he is a little tired so he will be taking a rest and the moment she needs to call, he will be doing it himself. As Sanchen pays the woman, she decides to mind her own business leaving him alone, which gets him the opportunity to look at the corners for all the security cameras around the floor. Realizing that he will not be needing to hide around as there are no security cameras, Sanchen continues to move on but is barricaded by some guards who are supposedly hired by Yi Fei. When they advise him to go away, he swiftly takes out his pocket knife instead of complying with them so he can finish one of them off almost instantly. The moment another one of the guards is about to take out his weapon, Sanchen slashes his throat as well leaving them no chance to protect themselves while Sanchen continues to head toward his goal. On the other hand, Yi Fei was waiting for his service to come in to get him pleasure as he is waiting for them naked, but the whole situation in the room changes the moment he notices that it is Sanchen coming out to take his life. Both of the bodyguards around Yi Fei start to come at him, while the other two surround him from behind his back as he stands in the middle with his hidden knife in his hand. When each one of the guards continues to lash out at Sanchen, he starts swiftly moving in between them, and in the end, only Yi Fei survives who is left on the ground alone and helpless, naked obviously. Realizing that his death is near, Yi Fei starts giving him choices that he will be able to get him money, women, and anything that he wants in exchange for his life as he continues to cry while wrapping himself around his feet. But as the man of the word that Sanchen is, he decides to act on his accord to finish Yi Fei off to create a better situation for him, and at that moment, all of the other guards are already entering the room to catch the culprit. Before they are about to catch up to him, Sanchen ends up leaving the room by breaking through the glass from the third floor while they continue to look at him running away wondering how someone can run away after jumping down from the third floor. When he gets back to his home, he notices that the light in his room is still on meaning that Yingxia must be inside waiting for him. But something unexpected happens the moment he walks in as Yingxia claims that he can go back to his position on the floor once again as he used to do in the past. But before moving on to the bed, Yingxia adds that he doesn't have to send her to work the next day as he doesn't have to follow her either which makes him wonder what might have happened to her as she was just fine the previous day. Then the next day, Mo Yang is quite surprised to see the depth of Sanchen's ability since Yi Fei is finally dead and how it seems unreal how powerful Sanchen really is. Then Sanchen adds that the Golden Bridge will be trying its best to hide the matter since underground boxing isn't that easy either. Mo Yang thinks that the whole thing depends on Dao She, as even though he isn't that popular, his strength is recognized by everyone in the underground boxing, which will make it clear that nobody will be able to disapprove of what he thinks of in the end. Then after getting out of the car, Mo Yang thinks that they are allowed to play a little trick since the big guy loves his daughter so much which gets approved by Sanchen as well. After that incident, Dao Shi can be seen reacting to the information given by the principal that his daughter has been expelled from the school and it seems that the reason why the principal had to do it is because his daughter doesn't listen to her teachers while fighting with the other classmates. But no matter what, he refuses to believe that as he knows that his daughter is well behaved and obedient so there is no way that she would be fighting with the others, and the principal remarks how he is the same unreasonable way as his daughter. The principal seems determined to keep his statement the same no matter what happens to him, which makes Dao Shai exit the room in rage believing that he can make something happen. The moment he gets out of the room, he notices Sanchen patting his daughter's head, and as he starts asking about his intentions to be in the school, his daughter comes up to him asking if she really cannot study anymore. 
When Dao Shi starts to make her understand by saying that he will find another school for her, she starts to sob at the fact that they only have one school in the town. At that time, Han Sanchin comes in the middle making a proposal saying that if he starts working under him, he will get his daughter the best school in the city no matter what, so he doesn't have to worry as Yifei is dead already. Then when Sanchin shows Dao Shi the picture, he starts believing in him as Yifei has actually quieted down after a long time and he asks what he has to do for him. The moment Sanchin makes him a proposal saying that he has to take over the boxing ring and help him to convince everyone, Dao Shi agrees to his proposal in an instant without even thinking twice. Then back in the mansion when Sanchin wakes up while yawning, his mother-in-law claims that her daughter has packed out his things to live in a separate room from him, which makes her ask why he doesn't consciously get out of the house now already. Realizing that his mother-in-law is acting all high and mighty, Sanchin reminds him that the owner of the villa is indeed him, so it is not about to happen. At that moment, Insha comes in saying that if he doesn't want them to stay, they can move out of the villa right away, which starts to make Sanchin feel so awkward, as he starts to feel like he doesn't even know her anymore. When he demands answers, Yingxia brings out the photo of him going inside the Golden Bridge, which shocks him so badly that he couldn't wrap his head around the whole incident. He starts elaborating to her that he didn't attend that place for that kind of thing, but he also knows that he cannot say that he went there to kill someone. But the mother-in-law gets in the middle to charge at him, saying that he knows about her intentions since she knows about the place as it is full of whores and rich people. She starts demanding a divorce, but Sanchin claims that he hasn't done anything wrong and claims that he will be explaining the whole incident to her when the right time comes. After hearing him out, Yingxia states that he can move back to the room when he can explain it to her. But Sanchin knows that the incident cannot be handled right now, so he would need some kind of way to solve the misunderstanding otherwise, they will have to continue sharing a separate room for years. Meanwhile, in front of the Qingqing prison, Nangong Kan Kyu, the old lady of the Qin family is about to meet someone named Han Jun as the butler makes the way for her before she enters the place. The moment she enters the prison room to visit prisoners, it seems that the guy whom she is meeting is none other than her older grandson and the elder brother of Han Sankin. Han Jun starts asking his grandmother when he is about to get out of the prison as he doesn't want to spend another day in a place like that and it seems that his grandmother is eager to get him out of the prison as well. He then asks his grandmother how she wanted Han Sanchin to take his place in jail, while calling him trash as he looks exactly the same as him, which will create no suspicion. The moment she goes on to say, but, Han Jun flips on his grandmother saying that he didn't expect her to put her hopes on Han Sanchin when she treated him with all her heart. To make the whole situation even deeper, he starts banging his head on the table claiming that he doesn't want to live anymore, which gets the grandmother so emotional as she starts claiming that she cannot live if he happens to die. It seems that the main reason for Han Jun to be in prison is that he ended up killing a few people, but he doesn't think that it makes sense that he will get beaten every day for it. The grandmother then assures him that he shouldn't be worrying as she is looking out for him to sort everything out while Han Jun continues to laugh devilishly behind her. Meanwhile in the Yanjing No. 1 hospital, Han Sanchin's mother is seen sitting beside her husband trying to make him understand that Han Sanchin has really changed, and despite what everyone thinks, people continue to feel like Sanchin is still trash and he doesn't know how to do anything correctly. The moment the grandmother barges into the hospital room, she starts bragging about how Sanchin doesn't deserve to be her grandson. But Sanchin's mother continues to make her understand that they should keep low for a while since a lot of people are keeping notes on them. Then in the end, Sanchin's mother asks for some time from her mother-in-law promising that she will be making the right arrangements otherwise she will listen to her to do according to her orders. After hearing that, the grandmother then calms down saying that she doesn't want to come forward once again as it is not about to be all fine that time. At the same time, Han Sanchin is seen in some sort of martial arts dojo wondering if he can befriend the old man of the Tian family since as long as he ends up befriending him, he will be able to incorporate all the underground forces of Yunxing into his own pocket. While he is waiting, a girl named Tian Ling comes right at him calling him brother and asking if he is the master that her grandfather mentioned to her excitedly. After hearing her, Sankin starts to wonder what kind of master she might be talking about while wondering if she ended up falling in love with him at first sight, the moment she noticed him. As he continues to stand there confused, the head of the Tian family, Tian Changsheng comes in apologizing to him, saying that an old friend of his claimed that he would be bringing a master to their martial arts school this day, and his granddaughter who truly adores martial arts is just too excited for it. 
When they start conversing with each other, the head of the Liu family, Liu Bin comes along with Liu Xiaoxu, the heir of the Liu family asking Chang Shang about considering the bet he made to him the last time. Then as soon as Liu Xiaoxu starts greeting Ling, she seems rather annoyed by him. And at that moment, Liu Bin makes the bet of sparing the Liu family property in exchange for fixing Ling's and Xiaoxu's marriage. But the moment Chang Shang hears about the proposal he starts protesting about the proposal as he cannot think of Ling marrying such a loser like Xiaoxu. But to instigate the matter even more, the old man of the Liu family starts mocking Chang Sheng, remarking on the fact that he must be a turtle since he is backing away that easily which Ling starts to protest instantly as she believes otherwise. Then Ling starts requesting her grandfather that as they have martial arts masters as well, he doesn't have to be afraid of the Liu family so they can compete. After thinking for a while, the old man Chang Sheng agrees to their proposal, and all of them sit serially to participate in the occasion to see their worth. The moment Sang Chen lays his eyes on the men brought by Liu Bin, he realizes that the men brought by the Liu family might be looking ordinary, but their bodies contain explosive power so there is no way that the old man Chang Sheng is about to win. At the same time, he is afraid that Chang Sheng is about to lose his granddaughter to a loser, and as Ling notices that Sang Chen is laughing while looking at them go, she asks him about it directly. As Sang Chen continues to mock the girl by saying that she is about to marry someone else, she starts to lash out at her, saying that she will tear his mouth apart if he continues to speak, believing that her grandfather isn't about to lose at any cost. As they both start to watch, Ling states that her grandfather has many capable masters so it will be enough for him. But Sanchin claims that she can ask for help from him if she wants as he is there to help him. Then the men from both schools mention each other's names to start their own way and the moment the guy from Changsheng's group takes a hit, he realizes what is really going on as he gets thrown on the wall in an instant. Old man Changsheng couldn't believe what is happening, and after seeing the anxious face of Changsheng, Liu Bin is quite happy to poke the old man as he is about to win soon enough. Even though Changsheng believes that he will be winning, his men continue to go on the ground losing the battles one by one, and it frustrates Ling so much that she starts begging him to call out the real master. But according to Changsheng, the best two of his school are already defeated, and at that moment, Ling asks Han Sanchen for help who makes a promise saying that he can deal with the opponent with just a single punch. Chang Sheng requests him not to brag about his abilities and promises that if he succeeds, half of the Liu family assets will be given away to him. Confident Sanchen gets on the stage and starts preparing for it, while Ling fears that there is a chance that Sanchen would be dying. Doubtful Chang Sheng promises his granddaughter that she can count on him since he will never be allowing someone like Xiaoxu to marry her. As Sanchen starts to prepare for the duel, his opponent starts calling him cocky and lunges at him, saying that he can start preparing to go to the hospital already, but as soon as he gets close to Sanchen, something else happens as he gets kicked on the head by Sanchen. As the event unfolds, the old man of the Liu family is having a hard time believing what has happened in front of him in a matter of seconds as Sanchen came out of the duel unharmed. Sanchen has kept his promise and Ling is happy to see that Sanchen was able to make it happen just as he promised which makes Changsheng realize that he might have underestimated Sanchen. Then the time comes when it is about to keep their end of the bets, so Lu family is about to lose half of their property. But the Lu family head instantly enrages saying that it isn't about to happen since Sanchen isn't from his school in the first place. It makes Changsheng mention Lu Bin losing his face if he renages and after hearing that, the Liu family starts leaving the place instead of barking back at him. As he gets up from his seat, he starts thanking Han Sanchen for helping him, and despite the fact that Liu Bin broke the end of his contract, Sanchen is allowed to ask for anything from him. Then Sanchen remarks that what is his will be his anyways in the end, so he will be taking away half of the assets of Liu family, no matter what, but he is about to think about it later. The old man Changsheng realizes that there must be some uncanny aura around Han Sanchen, as he has never heard of such a great young man in Yan City before. When the old man asks for an introduction, Han Sanchen speaks out his name and starts leaving the place while Ling continues to gush all over him as she saves his name in her mind. Then suddenly, she realizes that Sanchen and the piano prince look so alike, and she starts asking her grandfather as there must be a famous loser son-in-law in that name. But she couldn't help but wonder why someone like him would join the Sioux family in the first place. After thinking about it a lot, Ling claims that she wants to be friends with Han Sanchen, which gets approved by Changsheng, who will welcome him to become her husband if he wants to. 
After returning from the martial arts school, Sankin starts forgetting that Yingxia doesn't want him to pick her up and at the same time, he is quite frustrated that he wasn't able to explain the backstory to her, which makes it harder for her to forgive him. Suddenly, Ling appears behind him out of nowhere to get his eyes wrapped with her hand, and Sankin ends up guessing who she is. It seems that she is here to repay his kindness, so she wants to invite him to dinner to taste her cooking skills. But instead of listening to her, Sankin tries to rush away from the location, but Ling isn't ready to listen to him if he doesn't want to make a promise, so he ends up agreeing in the end. As Sanchen arrives at the house, the old man Chang Sheng offers to play a game with him, but even when he doesn't know how to play chess. Ten minutes later when lunch is presented, Chang Sheng seems rather frustrated to keep on losing to Sanchen as he continues to mow down the old man in the game of chess, despite the fact that he acted like he didn't know much about chess. Han Sanchen asks the old man to forgive him claiming that he is best at what he is, but it is a pity that he cannot show it to him, and the old man is salty about the reason that it is his birthday in a few days and a national player friend is coming to meet him. The old man suggests Han Sanchen join in the fun, as well saying that he will be insisting his friend to teach him a lesson and Sanchen claims that he will be looking forward to it. At that moment, Ling arrives with food asking them what they are talking about, and when Sanchen gets to taste her food, he realizes that Ling wasn't bragging when she was talking about her cooking skills. He notices that Ling is looking right at him with baby eyes, and since she has cooked for him herself today, she suggests San can play a tune for her. Sanchen agrees since she wants to hear it, so he will be playing one for her, which makes Ling wonder if he is truly the piano prince, or not since she doesn't know about it already. Soon Sanchen starts playing the piano with the mesmerizing tune possible, and Ling realizes that Sanchen is truly the piano prince. Ling is happy that God gave her a chance to meet him. Meanwhile, a Lamborghini stops in front of the mountainside villa, and when a man gets out of the car, Yingxia's mother starts asking the man some questions, but instead of answering the questions, he heads in to ask Yingxia about Han Sanchen while her mother continues to wonder if she can have a Lamborghini someday. Then, when Sanchen notices the man asking about him, the man claims that his lady ordered him to bring the car for him and Sanchen starts to wonder if it might be Ling. When Yingxia's mother gets to hear about it, she starts blaming him for hooking up with a random woman once again claiming that Yingxia is deeply hurt by what he did, and he doesn't deserve her at all. At that moment, the man who brought the car starts asking Yingxia's mother to speak more politely about his lady since she isn't something she can slander that easily whenever she wants. But Yingxia's mother doesn't calm down and continues to brag with her filthy mouth continuously, and the enraged guy starts mentioning the name of Miss Tian Ling of the Tian family, which starts to get frightened so much after hearing the Tian family since offending the Tian family in Yun City equivalent to offending Yama. Desperate Yingxia's mother starts asking for help to Sanchen, saying that Ling must be close to him if she gave him a car and for that reason, he must be helping her to beg for mercy for the things he said. But Sanchen rejects saying that if she truly thinks that the Tian family would give a face to him who is good for nothing. Then Sanchen notices that Yingxia is moving away from him saying that from now on he doesn't have to explain anything to her as she isn't interested in her affairs anymore, which makes Han Sanchen realize that Tian Ling's gift has deepened the misunderstanding again. Soon after, the Su family is discussing the banquet of the old man of the Tian family as in Yun City. It is the most important thing to keep a good relationship with the Tian family. The old woman suggests Su Heiko take some time to visit the Tian family and try to get them an invitation to go for it. But Su Heiko gives an excuse saying that he is now busy with so many company affairs recently so Su Yingxia can go instead of him as she is in charge of the Western City project so she might be able to get an invitation. At that moment, Yingxi claims that she can go for it but cannot guarantee that she can complete the task and the grandmother states that she can go for it and do her best after all she was turned away every year before. Suddenly, Sankin suggests that he can do it for her, and Su Yi Han and Su Hei Cho both start to laugh at them as he isn't a member of the Su family, so he would only be making a fool of them by showing how insincere they are. At that moment, Han Sanchen claims that he has already got an invitation for himself, and he is just trying to get one for them, which makes Hei Cho remark that Sankin thinks of himself as some kind of big shot since he is bragging so much. Suddenly, someone from the Su family starts yelling since there is a person standing outside of their residence, and he is from the Tian family, which shocks the old woman as she wasn't expecting that the Tian family would take the initiative to visit them. Then a man from the Tian family comes in saying that he was ordered to deliver the birthday party invitation from the Tian family and asks which one of them would be collecting it from him. 
Then the old woman takes the invitation from the man's hand, thanking the old master for giving the Sioux family an opportunity to let them have it. And the man who came in with the invitation says that the letter contains the requirements for the banquet, so they must be reading it before coming into their residence. As the man leaves, the old woman starts to laugh maniacally, thinking that the Sioux family is about to take off finally as they are being valued by the Tian family so much as it will be just around the corner to become a first-line family in the future. To make it cherry on top, Sue Heikshao says that with the Western City Project in their hands, the Tian family is supposed to recognize them to which the old woman says that their Sioux family is no longer the same. When everyone starts to brag among themselves, Sankin starts to wonder if Tian Changsheng would voluntarily send an invitation because of his relationship with them, and it seems like a bargain for them. Soon Heikhao starts to ask Sanchen about his invitation since he said that he has already been invited, and to which Sanchen claims that Tian Shenagsheng invited him personally so he wouldn't be needing an invitation. Heikhao says that Sanchen is still pretending and challenges that if he can go to the birthday banquet, he will be kneeling down to him at the birthday banquet and bark like a dog at the same time. Han Sanchen starts to wonder if he has ever seen such a stupid person who would be bragging about his own doom like Heikhao. Then when Han Sanchen is about to go to his mountainside villa, the security guards are stopping him in the middle which seems new to him as all of his vehicles are registered to the property department and would never make such a mistake while conducting their job. Soon he notices Tian Ling which makes him realize what Zhang Lan said yesterday has already reached her ears which makes it truly a bad day for Zhang Lan. Han Sanchen thinks that he shouldn't care about it much as Zhang Lan brought it on herself, so he has nothing to do with it. On the other hand, Zhang Lan starts to make a fuss when the security guards surround her at once. When the security guards move away, Tian Ling comes in the middle, and the moment she reaches Zhang Lan, she slaps the hell out of her. When Zhang Lan goes on to slap Ting, her bodyguards start holding her apart as Ting starts to provide her judgment as Zhang Lan was talking shit about her the previous day. Then scared shitless, Zhang Lan starts to beg saying that she didn't know who she was talking about yesterday, so she was talking nonsense and Ningxia starts to apologize to Ting on behalf of her mother. At that moment, Ting asks Ningxia why she wouldn't divorce Han Sanchen since she treats him like a loser and Ningxia is having a tough time understanding what she means as she wasn't expecting her to talk about Sanchen. Then Ting claims that she was just joking so she shouldn't be taking it seriously knowing that there is a chance Sanchen will be upset with her if she takes it further. But Tane knows that she cannot solve yesterday's case with just a slap, so she decides to make it into a game and suggests Yingxia's father hit her. But there is a rule, if the slap is light, the guards will be slapping her instead, which makes Zhang Lan wonder if the guards hit her, she will die. Zhang Lan fires up on her husband, ordering him to hit her, saying that if he dares to get her beaten for a second time, she will never be letting him go. Soon, her husband throws a heavy slap on her face instantly, which throws her into a good distance. On the day of the old man's birthday, the Sioux family members realize that it is past the auspicious time but still the old man hasn't arrived, which makes it look quite weird to them. At that moment, Su Heikshou says that it doesn't matter to him as he is wondering why Han Saknian hasn't come and adds that he isn't in the mood to eat as he just wants Sanchen to kneel to him. Su Yi Han suggests Heikshou to calm down since Sanchen claimed that he would kneel every time he saw him so he shouldn't be hurrying and Heikshou thinks that he will be making him kneel like a dog until he is satisfied. Soon, the old man Tian arrives along with his granddaughter and Han Sanchen which shocks Su Heikshou so badly that he starts to wonder why some loser like Sanchen would get so closer to old man Tian. When he sits down with the old man and his granddaughter, Everyone starts to wonder who the young man must be that came in with him, as if he is the future son-in-law of the Tian family, as he looks like a gentleman having a good match with Ling, which starts to make Yingxia anxious wondering how ironic it must be since the old man of the Tian family values Sanchen so much, but the Su family never took him seriously. Suddenly, Yingxia's grandmother suggests Yingxia go and toast to the old man so the outsiders can know that the Tian family thinks so highly of the Su family's son-in-law who will be taking the status of the Su family high. But Yingxia claims that the Tian family doesn't take the Su family seriously, and they do not even care about the Western City Project so they shouldn't care about some suppliers like them as well. Also, she adds that the old man invited the Su family to give a face to Han Sanchen, which makes the old woman say that she doesn't give a damn unless he can make the Su family a first-line family, he will be considered a waste in the end. Suddenly, the old woman notices Tian Ling coming toward her and surprisingly, she starts asking who Su Heikshou must be as she came to them to watch his performance. 
The word performance shocks the whole Sioux family and Hei Chao asks her why she would be looking for him. Then when Ling notices him, she claims that she has never seen a dog barking on its knees before so if she would love to watch his performance and Hei Chao claims that he was just joking with Sanchen before when he said that. Then when Hei Chao seems not to agree, Ling claims that he can do whatever he wants, just his Sioux family will be in trouble for not accepting the arrangements. Suddenly, the old woman starts to lash out at Hei Chao, commanding him to do whatever Ting Ling wants since that is the only way they are about to keep Su family intact after all. Shivering Su Hei Kyo comes in the middle of the premise, and Ting Ling claims that she isn't in a hurry and orders everyone to get quiet since they are about to see a special kind of performance which will be making them smile. Then when Ling finishes her speech, everyone is excited not realizing that the young Ness would have prepared some special show for them and they are looking forward to the show for real. Realizing that he has to do it anyway, Hui Chou kneels down on the ground instantly, which seems like a good performance to everyone as they claim that it is truly a good performance. Hui Chou in anger starts to claim that Han Sanchen should be waiting for him since he will be paying him back the same tenfold, and when one of the guys comes to know about his identity, Ling helps him to recognize his identity saying that he is Su Hui Chou, and as he lost the bet with someone, he is learning how to back. The whole crowd then starts to target Su Hei Chou, saying that they aren't about to give Hei Chou a face in the future, which makes the old woman regret that instead of being close to the Ting family, they became the target of the whole city. Han Sanchen gets introduced to the old man's friend, who is the president of the Yunshin Go Association and a national Go player since he thinks that his friend is the only one who can beat him. Wang Mao is quite impressed after hearing about Han Sanchen's capabilities after hearing about his friend and Sankin decides to act humble when he is introduced to the man and says that he doesn't dare to show his skills in front of him as he just learned a few moves. But since he is requested to play with him, Sanchin says he is willing to do it as it is said to be done. Soon when all of them are seated in a room, Wang Mao's assistant starts to question his boss asking if he is really about to go against Sanchin as he is only in his early 20s, so he might not even be worthy of his attention. Wang Mao orders his assistant Xi Fei not to act arrogant since he has always taught him otherwise, and suggests Sanchin take every step carefully since he takes it as a serious king himself. Han Sanchin promises that he is about to do his best and starts to make his steps before Wang Mao. When the game moves forward, Wang Mao realizes that Han Sanchen isn't about to be someone easy as an opponent and starts to regret not going upwind while making his moves and the old man Ting realizes that Han Sanchen is truly good since he is able to get his friend Wang Mao in a sticky situation that he regrets to be in. The assistant of Wang Mao, Sei Fei is having a hard time believing what is happening in front of him as his master is in an extremely unfavorable situation possible, and if he loses, his master's reputation is about to be ruined which cannot be happening. Si Fi decides to throw away the board along with all the pawns on the board so Han Sanchen isn't able to win and starts to say that his master is tired for the day so he will be playing with him another day. Wang Mao starts to react against his assistant for acting like a self-centered prick saying that it doesn't matter if he loses the game, but he thinks of losing his character. At that moment, old man Ting claims that watching chess without speaking is the most basic respect while he did such an act against every one of them to ruin the game. Si Fi starts to beg saying that he just acted impulsively without thinking for even once and the old man starts to call the Xi family to get in their room. When the old man starts to leave, Xi Fi starts to beg him saying that it was just his impulse and it has nothing to do with the Xi family but the old man isn't about to listen as he has already made his mind to act. When Xi Fi starts begging his master to get forgiven, he seems also enraged at him for being such a man but bad character despite being one of his most gifted disciples, and announces that he will no longer be his disciple from now on. At that moment, Xi Fi's father arrives and starts calling him names to proceed to get him a heavy slap on his face, and the old man Ting announces that all of the cooperation between him and the Xi family will be completely terminated from now on. He also states that he doesn't want to see the Xi family anymore in lunching and insists his father take his son away from the premise so he doesn't have to see his face anymore. Xi Fi doesn't realize why it is happening to him as he considers that he only made a small mistake and Wang Mo offers Sanchin to have another round against each other. Then Sanchin suggests to the old man that he might not be in a good spirit so it will not be fair to him and he claims that he will be playing with him next time for sure which gets accepted by the old man. While chatting with Mo Yang at Lin Yang's club, Mo states that Fang Peng has been very active and should be making his moves, so he is interested to know about his side considering everything. 
Han Sanchen claims that he has a good relationship with the Tian family, so it wouldn't be a problem for him, so they can stop thinking about all that. Suddenly, his phone rings as Xi Jing has called him, and it seems that his father is on his deathbed, so it seems that they are wanting him to meet his father before he dies. But apart from all that, Han Sanchen is rather anxious since his family has long regarded him as an outsider, so it is kind of suspicious for them to let him go back to Yanjing this easily. The scene goes back to past when Han Sanchen's grandmother is getting her grandson's fate acknowledged and according to the Taoist master, her eldest grandson Han Jun had the fate of an emperor and in his hands, the Han family will continue to be rich and prosperous. On the other hand, he said that Han Sanchen has the fate of a traitor and he will be dragging down the Han family with him. When Sanchen requested his grandmother that he wants to go outside to play, she starts to react harshly toward him as if he isn't her grandson in the first place claiming that he will only be embarrassing himself if he had gone out. Then fast forward to the future, when Han Sanchen reached the age of 18. His grandmother kicked him out of the home and commanded him to go outside of Yanjing ordering him not to say anyone that he is from the Han family. Then now back in the present, Han Sanchen is wondering as a decisive person, she wouldn't be wanting to get him back so why would she ask him to get back to the Han family all of a sudden? Then he realizes that it might be the reason because she wants him to go to jail for her other grandson Han Jun Han Saknian, then thinks that if she is really thinking of doing something like that, she cannot be blaming him for acting harshly while mentioning the relationship anymore. When Mo Yang notices that Sanchen is distracted, he asks what is up with him and he claims that he has no place on earth, one bottle and he should be the master of Mount Hang, which is actually his favorite poem. Mo Yang feels like he is talking nonsense and starts asking him about it while checking his temperature, wondering if he has a fever. Han Sanchen then insists that Yang should be remembering his words as he may need to use it in the future and refuses to elaborate further. Then when Han Sanchen reaches the mountainside villa, he notices that Yingxia's grandmother is sitting in the living room and the moment she notices him, she starts to complain about the fact that he deliberately embarrassed Su Heicho in front of the whole crowd and made a joke out of the Su family so he should be making amends for it. Surprised Han Sanchen asks what he should be doing to make amends and the grandmother insists that he should be going to the old man Tian to say a few good things about the Su family and let him acknowledge the Su family's position in Yun City. So he thinks of cooperating with the Su family. Han Sanchen claims that he can be doing that much, but he is thinking about her attitude which is quite dirty toward him. The grandmother doesn't care and goes on to instigate him even further claiming that just because Su Yingxia became the project manager, he cannot be relying on her not to take her seriously since she can always get off her status. When Han Sanchen hears her out, she can do whatever she wants, and after seeing the reaction of Sanchen, the old woman starts to make it noticeable for Zhang Lan as her grandson isn't listening to her at all. Zhang Lan insists that she shouldn't be mad at him as she will be asking Ningxia to persuade Han Sanchen, and the old woman gives him three days time to complete the task. Before leaving, she warns Zhang Lan that if she cannot do it, she shouldn't be thinking about a good life in the future. Soon in the Su family residence, the grandmother notices Su Heicho inside the room and asks him about his presence and to which Heicho claims that they cannot be letting Han Sanchen continue to be arrogant since he has started to do whatever he wants because of Yingxia's position. Su Heicho requests the grandmother to become the chairman of the Su family so he can suppress Sanchen's arrogance, but the old woman refuses. Su Heicho asks the old woman why she wouldn't be handing the position to him as it is about to become his sooner or later and the old woman remarks that it would have been happening if he was a little more promising. The chairmanship would have been his a long time ago. Haicho realizes what he looks like to his grandmother, and the grandmother insists that he should be improving his abilities as soon as possible, otherwise, if he wants to get the position, he will have to wait for the day she dies instead, which makes him start to conspire about her death right at that moment. The old woman is then seen discussing Heicho's requirement of making some improvements as he needs a certain amount of experience to become a chairman. The woman beside her thinks that they can start doing it from the grassroots level, and before the woman is about to finish her sentence, a guy comes in the room hurrying for some reason to make some announcement. The man starts to make an announcement saying that Miss Tian is present and the moment she gets in, the grandmother starts to ask about her presence in the Sioux family company. Tian starts to talk about the fact that Han Sanchen went to her grandfather hoping that her grandfather would be recognizing the Sioux family and from her point. It was quite shameless for her to do so since it is just wishful thinking for a small family like the Su family. After hearing Miss Tian, 
The grandmother starts to think that if Master Tian doesn't want to cooperate, why would she come in her presence as if she is just here to humiliate her even further and starts to curse Han Sanchen in her mind. Then Miss Tian claims that she is doing this just because her grandfather respects Han Sanchen, so he ended up promising to cooperate with the Su family in the Tian family industrial chain selection. When the old woman hears it, she starts to have a shakedown as she wasn't expecting it to happen ever in her lifetime, and as she goes on to thank Miss Tian for it, she insists that she should be thanking Han Sanchen instead while leaving the premise. Excited old woman suggests her assistant call up Su Heicho to come right into her room since she is eager to share the news with him as soon as possible. When Su Heicho arrives, he starts asking her why she would call him in such a hurry, and she suggests Heicho to have a look at the cooperation that they ended up managing with the Tian family, which is about to make their Su family a first grade family soon enough. Su Heiko thinks of the opportunity as a great achievement for them, and the moment he begins asking about the person in charge of the cooperation, she decides that he can be in charge of the whole situation. She also states that as long as he does a good job, she will be making him the chairman as soon as possible, and Heiko promises that he will be doing a good job, but on the inside, he was plotting a heinous plan. Then when he goes on to pour a drink for his grandmother, he mixes some poison with it knowing that he cannot wait too long for her decision. As soon as the old woman takes a sip of the drink, she realizes that something was done by Su Heicho as she starts to feel a little dizzy, but before she was about to do anything, she ends up passing away. Then when the grandmother dies, Su Heicho starts to create a huge drama on behalf of her saying that he cannot live without her while acting all sad and sorry. In the whole incident, he begins to blame Han Sanchin saying that it was his doing and he was the one who killed his grandmother. When Han Sanchin asks Su Heicho about his behavior of accusing him, he asks him back how come Tian Ling came to their house without his permission and announces that his actions are what made it happen to his grandmother. After hearing it, Su Yingxia asks Han Sanchin what has happened and Sanchin claims that he had done what he had promised to them as he has promised that she will be coming to the premise to elaborate on what is about to happen in the future to create a cooperation between both families. Then Su Heikshao starts to question Han Sanchen's behavior saying when he started thinking about the Su family and nobody said that the Tian family was about to cooperate with their family, which means that Sanchen had to do something about his grandmother's death. Han Sanchen then starts to insist that they should be calling in the police if Heichou is so sure, and as Heichou knows that contacting the police is about to create a difficult situation, he starts to ignore the whole topic of calling the police. Huikov starts to claim that the Tian family is quite strong in Yunqing, so there will be no point in calling the police since there was no evidence found so the Tian family would be ready to slander them even further. Su Heiko goes even further saying that Sanchen not only wanted to hurt their grandmother, but wanted to ruin the Su family's reputation, and to which everyone in their family starts to agree along with Su Yi Han and the others as they start ordering Han Sanchen to move away from their site as soon as possible. Han Sanchen finds it quite ridiculous to begin with, and he starts to leave the family residence while Su Yingxia continues to watch him go leaving the place. Then when Han Sanchen leaves, he states that he will be following his grandmother's wishes as the chief CEO of the Su family, and everyone agrees with his decision almost instantly since he is the family's only grandson. He then starts announcing that now Su family is no longer qualified to deal with the Tian family, and he will be carrying over their family even to surpass the Su family in the past. At the same time, he will also be working to find evidence of Tian Ling's crimes to avenge their grandmother, which is nothing but whispers to nowhere. On the other hand, Han Sanchen is walking in the middle of Yun City wondering what might have caused the death of the old woman as it feels like Heicho must have planned it beforehand, but he also knows that nobody is about to believe him so he stops thinking about it. Suddenly he ends up meeting the most familiar face of his life who is Grandpa Yan the man who was the only person that treated Sanchen very well since childhood and all of his current abilities are all thanks to the training given by Yan. Then Sanchen asks him about his predicament and questions him if he is here because the Han family asked him to bring him back. It seems that Sanchen's assumptions are all correct and Han Sanchen apologizes to him for not being able to be happy since he is the reason why the whole family is in shambles, at least that is what the grandmother thinks along with the others. But Grandpa Yan reassures him saying that it is not the case as he starts to tease him, and he advises Sanchin to go over to his birthplace to take whatever that was always his from the beginning. After a long time, Han Sanchin entered the main residence of the Han family, and on the inside, 
He hopes that his grandmother, Nangong Kyankyu, doesn't overdo it since then. She cannot be blaming him for not thinking about the blood relation between them when she crosses all the boundaries. As soon as she meets eyes with Sankin, she starts to roar since he didn't think of saying hello to his grandmother after meeting for a long time. She starts to brag that he is only in their home because Han Jun is now in prison. Sanchen then states that he has heard that Han Cheng, who is his father, is dying and directly asks his grandmother if she wanted him to escort his father to the afterlife or not. The grandmother instantly snaps for calling his father by his name and Sanchen remarks that without him, there would be no Han Jun, so he wasn't saying anything wrong in the first place. Then the grandmother questions compared to Han Jun if he is even worthy of his name as Han Jun is the sole heir of the Han family, while Sanchen is considered as trash that should be living on the streets. Then suddenly the old woman changes her tone saying that Han Jun is just missing the feeling of brotherhood with him and wanted to meet him directly so she will be letting him go this time. But he will have to go with his grandmother to the Kin City prison to meet his brother. Then soon Han Sanchen goes to the Kin City prison and as soon as Han Jun notices his brother, he starts to rage as he thinks that Sanchen would be pretty happy after knowing that he is in the prison and maybe he even came to insult him in the first place. But Sanchen doesn't seem to care about it and Han Jun remarks to Sanchen asking if he smelled a unique aroma while entering the place. The moment the idea enters his mind, Sanchen starts to feel it almost instantly, which is supposed to be some sort of toxic gas. Han Sanchen then realizes that his grandmother really had it all planned beforehand, and when he gets unconscious in real time, Han Sanchen gets kicked away by his elder brother Han Jun as he has the upper hand in all of this. Han Jun continues to blame Han Sanchen for everything as if it is his fault for making him suffer and wait for too long, and he states that from now on Sanchen will be feeling and enduring everything he ever felt. The moment Han Sanchen wakes up in the prison, he realizes why Han Jun might have done something like that. As the inmates with Han Jun start to order him to clean the toilet, he starts to realize that. That doesn't mean Han Sanchen is about to live on the same rules as Han Jun did once. He instantly advises the prisoners not to play with him like that anymore as they will be facing grave consequences. When the inmates start to joke around about him as if they are about to punish him once again and as they get ready to educate him on manners, Han Sanchen unleashes the wrath upon all of them as they were about to misbehave with him and none of them can make a sense of the whole thing as they continue to get beaten by him. When he finishes up the whole accommodation, all of the prisoners are shocked to see how someone like Han Jun is able to fight back becoming so strong all of a sudden. Then when the boss starts to talk to himself all alone, Han Sanchen questions the man about his identity, and the man claims that he will be the boss from now on as he will now be deciding what to do from now on. On the other hand, Han Jun starts to act all nicely with his grandmother as he wishes to go to Yunqing to have fun as much as he wants, and when the grandmother asks him about his intentions, he claims that Sanchen has humiliated the family for too long as he will now be helping their family to get their prime back once again. When Han Jun is back outside of the prison, Sanchen is tied to the chair and his grandmother meets him, and it seems that he wasn't expecting that she will be visiting him anytime soon. It seems that his grandmother is here to tell him that his brother is about to take his place in Yunqing, and the moment he hears about it, he starts to react as if he is about to break the chains tying his hands. Instigated and enraged Sanchen makes it clear that if Han Jun does anything to cause trouble in Yunqing, he will be the one to kill him with his own two hands, but his grandmother doesn't think that someone like will not be able to get out of the prison that easily as she is planning for him to stay in the prison forever. As she is about to leave, Sanchen makes a promise saying that she was the one who forced him to this point so he will be making her regret what she has done until all this time. Then when Sanchen is in the Kinching prison field area, he starts to think about what Han Jun could start to do in Yunqing since when it comes to his character, he is nothing less than a beast, so he needs to get out of the place as soon as possible. Soon one of his men starts to call him and his name is Goffer. Sankin is asking the man about getting out of the prison any way possible since it doesn't matter to him which way. Goffer claims that for anyone who enters the prison it is not easy for them to get out but he suggests that he will be making a perfect plan and make sure that he is out of the place in just three days. On the other hand, Han Jun has taken his place as Sanchen and is wandering around Yunqing, which doesn't seem too bad to him. But he regrets that he isn't as handsome as he used to be, which will make it difficult for him to get around women this time. But as he is wandering around, Yoyo notices him and starts to call out for him thinking that he is Sanchen, which makes Han Jun think of the situation as a prick he is, 
and to make it even sweeter, Yoyo starts to offer him dinner to take him hope hoping that she will get forgiven by him. Han Jun agrees to the offer almost instantly saying that he will be tasting her cooking, but on the inside, he is thinking about having his way with the stranger since he is desperate to have a woman to play around. While Yoyo is trying her best to cook food for him, Yoyo is thinking that no matter if she cannot be with Sanchin, it will be enough for her to spend time alone with him. But she is finding it weird that Sanchin is continuing to stare at her, which is so unlike him. When Han Jun gets too close to Yoyo, she starts to find it quite weird as it isn't like Sanchin who has Yingxia in the first place, and she starts to lash out at him as she didn't expect him to behave like that. According to her, no matter how much she likes Sankin, but Su Yingxia is her best sister, so there is no way she can do cheat behind her back that can hurt her so badly in a vicious way. The moment he hears the name Yingxia Han Jun starts to think that it must be the name of the useless wife, and as he didn't want to reveal his identity this quickly, he decides to leave Yoyo's house almost instantly. The moment Han Jun is leaving the house, Yoyo starts to wonder why Sankin's feelings would change for her all of a sudden, and she decides to ask Yingxia about it knowing that their relationship will be broken otherwise. Then when she calls Yingxia on her phone believing that something must be wrong, Yingxia claims that Han Sanchen has left Yunqing after some misunderstanding. But he told her not to worry about it since he is about to manage everything by himself. As Han Jun enters the mountainside villa place, the security guards start acting their best with him. And even though he realizes that Han Jun is having a hard time wondering how someone like Sanchen would have something good in Yunqing. As he gets inside the house, he starts to realize how pleasing it must be for him to live in such a beautiful house, and the moment he gets inside the house, Jang Lan starts her daily ruckus once again. Jang Lan starts to ask how he still has the face to go back as if it still isn't enough to go out and play with other women, and the moment Han Jun thinks that Sanchen must be deserving this kind of behavior, he thinks of recovering his face before he gets back. He starts asking Jiang Lan to pour a glass of water for him, and Jiang Lan starts to lash out at him, questioning how he could make such an order for her. Then when Han Jun decides to play with her anger, Jiang Lan gets even more harsh, claiming that his courage is running high as she orders him to get out of the house almost immediately. Han Jun then throws a slap on her face to make her shut up, which makes her speechless, and when he starts to threaten her to say that he will be slapping her three times a day, she thinks that she will flip the game when her daughter comes back house. When she ends up bringing hot water, Han Jun starts to react questioning her if he wants to kill him by providing him hot water and knocks the glass off of her hand ordering her to pour another glass for him. Jang Lan then overreacts in this situation thinking that she is about to win by causing a scene but when she goes toward him to pull her moves off, Han Jun throws a heavy kick on her stomach which makes her fall on the door of the house. On the other hand, Jang Lan's husband was having a hard time believing that Han Sanchen would ever behave like that with his mother-in-law and goes on to check up on his wife. Instead of calming down, Han Jun continues to threaten them saying that if they do not know what to do next, he will continue beating them if they still dare to treat him like trash. Then when Su Yingxia gets back home, she is happy to think that Sanchen has returned back home and the moment she gets in, her parents start to hold her to complain about Han Sanchen as they have all been beaten up by her husband as Han Jun continues to sit on the couch. But all she knows is that he would never do such a thing like that and when she thinks that it must not be the truth, Han Jun starts to vouch about his character saying that it is how he is, but on the inside he starts to wonder how some trash like Sanchen would have such a beautiful wife who is ten times prettier than the top models. Then Yingxia starts to ask if they forced him to do something redundant once again and he claims that he is sick of all the humiliation he has received in these three years, so he should be putting an end to it all soon enough. Before leaving the room, he orders Un to cook for him as he is hungry, and Su Yingxia starts to feel like he has become such a different person in just a few days all of a sudden. At night, when Han Jun goes to lay down on the bed, he thinks life outside is so much better than in the prison, and he thinks that Han Sanchen must be getting bullied at the moment as the inmates must be ordering him around to clean the toilets or to sing some songs to get himself embarrassed. Suddenly, he starts to wonder why Yingxia didn't make the time to join him to bed as he starts to think that Yingxia might have never slept with him in the first place. As he starts to get desperate thinking that a woman like her and Virgin at the same time, which might have got him so lucky so he starts to get outside the room to look for her as he starts to think about Sanchen's helpless face. He goes on to unlock the door of the room of Yingxia, and the moment he walks into the room, she starts to question him about his intentions. 
Han Jun claims that he is here to pamper him, but Yingxie isn't about to listen to him, so she continues to order him to get outside. When he insists that he is about to sleep with his wife, she states that he isn't Sanchen as he could not have said such disgusting things to her. Han Jun then insists her to accept him as he still has the look of Han Sanchen which might prove her otherwise but she continues to insist that he should get out as soon as possible. Han Jun still goes on to try melting her heart by acting too close to her, but she continues to resist him, which gets to an extreme point that Yingxia ends up getting slapped by him. Han Jun then forces her to brag about it again by holding on to her hair in which Yingxia continues to wonder why this person would look so much alike Sanchen, even though he doesn't feel like him at all. Suddenly, the parents of Ying opens the door to charge him about it to protect their daughter from him. To make their threat clear, Jang Lan starts to get him scared by using the knife in the room so he doesn't touch their daughter. When Han Jun gets frightened and annoyed by their behavior, he claims that he will be back to see through the end of it. He then gets out of the house thinking that he can find a nightclub to spend his time nicely. Then in the morning, Su Yingxia thinks of the situation and decides to get some help from Lin Yang since Sanjin was close to him. When she knocks on the door of his nightclub, a guy opens the door he starts to act dirty asking what what she came for and she remarks that she is looking for Lin Yang. When she starts to talk about Lin Yang, the man thinks that she is Lin Yang's lover so he cannot be touching her so he ends up bringing her to Lin Yang. Then when Su Yingxia reaches to Lin Yang, the man informs his boss about her presence and Lin begins to wonder who came to meet him. Suddenly he realizes that it is Su Yingxia who came to meet him and as he notices her, he begins to ask her why she came to meet her at this time. Su Yingxia is astonished that Lin Yang knows her and as she notices Mo Yang, she begins to ask him about his presence as she knows him about his identity as the commissioner of Su family company. It seems Lin Yang is surprised to see Mo Yang in the place as well. When Su Yingxia reveals the truth of Han Sanchen's condition to Mo Yang, he realizes that something might be wrong since Sanqin said those weird things to him before leaving. Then when Yingxia doesn't understand the situation, he starts to explain the whole thing to her which Sanchin said before leaving which can be confirming his identity whenever is it needed. Yingxia starts to feel better and decides to go through it, which was suggested by Mo Yang, and after testing out the theory against Han Jun, they realize that they have suspected the right thing and he is not Han Sanchin, which is confirmed for sure. Ling Yang then starts to ask Mo Yang if they should catch the culprit right away or they are about to torture him first. But Mo Yang thinks that Han Sanchen must have planned about it long ago so they should wait before making any kind of steps to see how it goes till the end. On the other hand, the news of Han Sanchen sneaking out of the Kinching prison reaches to Han Sanchen's grandmother and she then gets ready to send her assassin to finish off Han Sanchen as soon as possible. When Yan Jun notices the grandmother making such a hasty decision, he starts to ask her if she really confirmed that Han Jun had the aura of an emperor since it doesn't look like a viable thing to think for him. But the old woman isn't about to hear anything against about Han Jun since she has already made up her mind about Han Sanchin's fate as if Han Jun is the only one who can make the family prosper. Suddenly, the assassin who was about to leave to get Han Sanchin down starts to groan in pain as if something happened to him and Han Sanchin reveals himself mocking his grandmother for hiring someone like that man to finish himself off. The grandmother then starts to curse Han Sanchen making him remember how much damage he is about to cause the family when he decided to get out of the prison and Han Sanchen makes it clear that he is about to fight to keep himself alive for sure. But at that moment, the grandmother shames him for not thinking about the family as he isn't ready to sacrifice that much for the family and she orders him to die for Han Jun as it is the most deserving fate for him. Han Sanchen decides not to take any of her words seriously and states that Han Jun should be the one dying off instead of him as he is now about to go to Yunqing to make her realize who is the real trash and who is the real emperor. The grandmother then states she isn't about to let him go to Yunqing as if he ends up going to Yunqing, everything is about to get revealed and the consequences will be ending up destroying the whole Han family for sure. She starts commanding Yan Jun to finish off Han Sanchen but he decides not to listen to her as he doesn't know what the difference between good and bad really is so she shouldn't be able to give him orders as she used to do. As the old man continues to leave, the old woman claims that he is just a bodyguard so he shouldn't be speaking against her and Yan Jun advises her to wait as she is about to see the real thing very soon. Then when Lin Yang starts to wonder what is going behind everything as the one who is pretending to be Han Sanchen looks the same as him. Mo Yang predicts that the man must be Han Sanchen's twin and at that moment, Han Sanchen makes his presence clear in front of them, 
while uttering the same phrase as he made before leaving to make his identity clear. The moment he finishes uttering the poem, he starts asking about Ying Xie, and if everything is going all right back at home since he is worried about his wife. Mo Yang makes him acknowledge the situation as Su Ying Xie is spending her time with her friend Ling Yao after noticing that Han Sanchen has changed, and he also asks about the man who is pretending to be him in the first place. Han Sanchen then makes it clear that the man pretending to be him is none other than his twin brother and asks for them to find the man to use all of their powers. Meanwhile, Han Jun was spending his time in the nightclub with any women he found across dreaming that Han Sanchen must have never had the chance to get this kind of treatment. He thinks of replacing Han Sanchen while making his life miserable to keep living his life to live at its fullest capacity. But suddenly, Mo Yang entered the room along with his whole gang as he is about to take some actions against Han Jun flustered Han Jun starts asking what he wants and as if it is money that he wants and Mo Yang claims that it is what he wants since Han Jun needs to be paying two millions for the debts that he had taken from him. He also claims that if he doesn't manage to pay his money in the same day, he will be losing all his legs and arms for sure as consequences. When Mo Yang starts to haggle Han Jun, he starts to beg to him saying that he isn't Han Sanchen while wondering why someone so trashy as Han Sanchen would be so much in debt. Then when Mo Yang doesn't believe him, he starts to show his identity card to prove that he isn't the person who they are looking for, and Mo Yang starts slapping him around saying that he is taking longer by showing him a fake identity card. Mo Yang orders him to get him his money and Han Jun starts to beg to keep himself alive and starts to kneel down on the ground while bowing his head and goes on so far as licking the ground like a dog. After seeing his behavior, Mo Yang claims that he doesn't deserve to be someone like Han Sanchen. And at that moment, Han Sanchen reveals himself from the shadows which startles Han Jun so badly seeing that he is finally out of jail. Mo Yang remarks that Sanchen isn't supposed to be in jail since he is his boss after all, and Han Jun doesn't get to grasp how can someone like Sanchen can be a boss of someone like Mo Yang. Han Jun starts to think that Han Sanchen must have hired someone to scare him and goes on to throw a punch at Sanchen. Sanchen then claims that things have changed now and he isn't about to think twice before finishing him off. He throws a kick on Han Jun which throws him against a wall and as he starts warning Sanchen by saying about his grandmother, Sanchen remarks how he would be bringing up his grandmother in every sentence since he is too scared to do anything at all. When Han Jun thought that Sanchen is about to piss himself after hearing about their grandmother, Sanchen ends up throwing a punch on Han Jun's face which makes Han Jun to start talking about the grandmother once again. Mo Yang starts asking Han Sanchen if his brother has some kind of brain damage as he keeps on talking about his grandmother, no matter what and Sanchen suggests him not to be surprised about his behavior and to take him away since it is already the time to take revenge. Meanwhile, Jiang Lan opens the door only to notice that whole Han family is present behind the door while having a mysterious and frightening aura around them. The grandmother starts to ask Jiang Lan where Han Sanchen must be since she was expecting him and realizing that the situation is deep, Jiang Lan calls Su Yingsha to get home as soon as possible to handle the situation as some people are looking for Han Sanchen. Su Yingxia rushes inside the house asking about what has happened and Su Yingxia starts asking the grandmother about her business with Sanchen since she can pass the information back to him. But the moment she finishes asking the question, the old woman throws a heavy slap on her face claiming that Yingxia doesn't have the qualification to talk with her. When Yingxia gets slapped by Sanchen's grandmother, she confronts her about it directly demanding to know how she could do as she pleases at her own home. Sanchen's grandmother doesn't like the tone of Yingxia as she didn't expect her to bark at her and goes on to hurt Yingxia with her cane, but Yingxia ends up grabbing it before it gets to hit her. As Sanchen's grandmother realizes that it isn't enough to hit her, she demands her bodyguards to make her kneel to her and they continue to torture her until she ends up kneeling down on the floor. As she is on the floor, Yingxia asks her if she wants to burn two sticks of incense for her and as she gets that Yingxia is cursing her, she commands her bodyguards to slap the hell out of her once again while Sanchen's mother continues to watch through it. Sanchen's mother then requests her mother-in-law saying that they shouldn't be wasting so much time on her and should focus on calling in Han Sanchen which makes the old woman to force Su Yingxia once again as she starts torturing her to call Han Sanchen in the house. But instead of listening to the old woman, Yingxia ends up spitting on her face making her realize that she isn't about to listen to her at any cost and the old woman then commands her men to last out at her. But before the bodyguards are about to act upon listening to her words, 
Han Sanchen makes his presence clear as he wouldn't let anyone to hurt his wife. He is shocked to see Yingxia in such a bad situation and realizes that he is already too late. Han Sanchen rushed to reach his woman to check up on her and apologizes to her for causing her so much pain. At that moment, his grandmother starts yelling in the background commanding him to go with her voluntarily or she would have to force him to make him do so. He then remarks that she has already crossed her limit and she gets interested to see what he can do to make her realize that she is wrong as he doesn't have the ability to fight but she is dead wrong. Han Sanchen then suggests Yingxia to sit on the couch as he knows that he needs to deal with the men guarding his grandmother and decides to prove his grandmother wrong. He elaborates on why he had never done anything against Han Jun in the childhood as he was afraid of mistakenly killing him in the process and makes everyone realizes that the sleeping tiger is now awake. His grandmother starts to gasp and surprise feeling that it would be such an impossible thing since all of her bodyguards are highly trained by Master Yan himself. Han Sanchin then clears up why he continued holding himself secretly away from everyone, which is that she would corner him by herself, and so he can convince himself to finish her off in the end. Han Sanchin's grandmother is shocked considering that he would be brave enough to annihilate her as he would get struck by lightning, and Han Sanchin reveals that he doesn't want to fulfill the task with his own two hands. He brings in Han Jun, and the moment Han Jun notices his grandmother, he is rather relieved thinking that he is about to get saved by her and starts complaining to his grandmother that Sankin has hired someone to berate him so she must be helping him. The old woman insists that she will take care of it and Han Jun starts to act brave and mighty after hearing her, thinking that Sanchin might get frightened of her. Sanchin makes them both realize how wrong they have been all this time as he didn't think of killing them already and Sanchin grabs Han Jun by his collar to shake some sense into him. He suddenly releases the collar and kicks him on the stomach once again to throw him off into the distance while his grandmother continues to run along. The grandmother says that if Sanchin wants to touch Han Jun, he would have to walk over her corpse and Han Sanchin gives the old woman a chance to commit suicide so she can save her grandson to confirm that she feels sorry for her grandson. Then Han Jun starts to beg to Han Sanchin saying that he shouldn't be finishing him off while begging the grandmother saying that she must be saving him since she has lived for too long while promising that he would burn two sticks of incense for her. The old woman is surprised that Han Jun could say something like that to her as he loved him and realizes that she must have made a mistake while making a decision back in the past. Then, Sanchin's mother comes in and claims that they are about to walk in a different path from each other and the old woman asks her if she knew that it was about to happen way before. Sanchin's mother doesn't say anything and only claims that she must already know who is better than who is finishing off Han Sanchin was her worst decision to take because Han Sanchen is the true dragon of the Han family, and as the old woman gets hit by the realization, she commits suicide by hanging and Han Jun continues to roll over the ground in agony. Then when their grandmother is dead, Han Jun starts requesting Han Sanchen to let him go and Sanchen promises to him that he isn't about to let him die since he still has to suffer inside the same prison cells. Scared shitless Han Jun starts shaking in fear and begging Sanchin saying that he doesn't want to go to jail once again as he is ready to do whatever he wants but Sanchin continues to kick his face knowing that he is not about to be of any use to him. As Han Jun lies down on the floor, Sanchin claims that there will be a special day for the Su family in a few days so she can take back the dowry that she gave before to his mother since he is about to settle the affairs between the Su family later on. Sanchin's mother listens to him and claims that she will be doing what he said and Jang Lan realizes what was the story behind the dowry sent to the Su family as it was sent by Han Sanchin and it was for her daughter Su Yingxia. Suddenly, Jang Lan's husband enters the house while shouting and complaining about the presence of so many people inside the house while acting drunk. When he notices Han Sanchin, he starts to act up as he wasn't expecting to see him saying that he will be teaching him a lesson this time by breaking the bottle of alcohol on his head for trying to hurt his daughter. But Jang Lan stops the man in the middle begging him to stop and makes Han Sanchin understand that he is drunk so she will be taking him back to the room so he cannot make a ruckus. Then her husband starts to ask her why she is acting so cowardly all of a sudden as she was also there where Sanchin tried to rape their daughter last night. Instead of listening to the drunkard husband, Jang Lan yells at him saying that he needs to go back to the room, reminiscing through the fact that Han Sanchin didn't think twice before executing his grandmother so she shouldn't dare to act haughty in front of him as if she had known, she would have died a long ago. After that, the Su family is having a great time altogether for their newly achieved milestone for their company 
and Su Yi Han is seen having so much fun with her cousins showing off her pieces of jewelry and bragging about their prices as they were given as dowry from the famous Han family. All of her cousins are jealous of her as they continue to wonder if only they could marry into a Han family like hers and they request Yi Han saying that she shouldn't be forgetting them for being so richer than them. Su Yi Han decides to act as if she is someone humble and claims that given time, she will definitely make the Han family invest in the Su family so they can prosper together. Suddenly, Han Sanchen enters the room with Su Yingxia and Su Yi Han starts to remark to Han Sanchen asking if he doesn't remember that he no longer qualifies to come into the residence and he insists that Su Heiko asked him to come over so she shouldn't be refusing at all. Then Su Heiko starts to disagree saying that no one would be believing him at all and claims that since he is the person who killed their grandmother, he must not be someone who would get allowed into their premise and advises him to get out of the residence as soon as possible while threatening. Sanchen asks him back if he doesn't find that there must be something strange about their grandmother's death and Su Heiko starts to joke around about it as if it doesn't matter to him at all. Han Sanchen starts to feel disappointed by the whole thing as he would have to break the character very soon and while his mother-in-law is about to get him back into the scene, Su Yingxia forbids her from doing so knowing that he must have a plan. Su Yi Han starts to curse Su Yingxia, saying that she ended up finding such a useless man while her future husband is very rich and powerful at the same time. Then Su Yingxia asks her about the money that was given to her as dowry and Su Yi Han doesn't seem to budge as she continues to mock them anyways. Soon, one man from Su family rushes into the room saying that the head of the Han family has arrived and the person who came is the one who sent the betrothal gift that day. When Su Yi Han hears about it, she gets super happy as the Han family is here again, and Hai Chao suggests she should meet the family together. Then when they proceed to invite the Han family in while showing their happy faces as Su Yi Han gets on with introducing herself claiming to be their future daughter-in-law, Sanchen's mother starts asking them about the present she sent the last time. Su Yi Han starts to show them wearing to her happily while calling her mother-in-law and Sanchen's mother makes it clear that she isn't and will never be her mother-in-law as she is here to take back the dowry she gave that time which shocks Su Yi Han and Su Heikshou, both as they are already speechless. When Su Yi Han hears all the words coming out of Sanchen's mouth, she requests her to call her mother-in-law suggesting that she should stop joking around as no matter who her son is, she is willing to marry that person. Then Sanchen's mother starts to get angrier making it all clear that someone like Su Yi Han doesn't deserve her son at all while Su Hei Cho tries to calm her down by saying that there must be some kind of misunderstanding on her side. The woman makes it clear that the dowry she gave him isn't his at all so she needs it to be returned in full at any cost otherwise she will make the Su family never exist in Yunqing again. Su Yi Han angrily demands an explanation from the Han family and when Sanchen's mother is astonished, Yi Han adds that the new head of the Su family is present before them who is none other than Su Heikshou, so she cannot be stepping on the Su family easily for a little money. After all, they are all in Yunqing right now. Then someone makes their entrance in front of the Su family and demands Su Heikshou asking if he knows about his identity at all, and it seems that the man is the head of the Tian Hongwei family. Heikshou is having a hard time believing how can the number one person in the whole Yunqing is following the woman like a servant as if his Su family is an aunt in front of the Tian family, which cannot be offended at any cost. Su Heikshou then asks Su Yi Han whisperingly to get someone back her betrothal gift. But it seems that Yi Han needs his help. Even though the jewelry might be there, they are lacking 7 million in total from the total amount of 8 million that was given by the Han family. When the whole family hears about her obnoxious behavior, they all start to react as someone like her ended up spending more than over 7 million, one in a few days, as if she is trying to finish the Su family. As everyone starts to blame it all on Su Yi Han, saying that she must sell off whatever she ended up buying in the first place, and Su Heikshou asks for a day of time to pay back the full amount of dowry. Sanchen's mother remarks that it will be a waste of her time if she has to pick it up, but she wants him to hand over the dowry to the house of Su Yingxia. When everyone hears that she wants it to deliver to Su Yingxia, they are all shocked since it is worth more than 10 million which just feels like a coincidence to them. Su Yi Han angrily demands to know why she would have to hand it back to Su Yingxia who just married some good-for-nothing man like Han Sanchen as she is even better than him. After hearing her nasty words, Sanchen's mother slaps the heck out of her for trying to judge her decision. When Sanchen's mother leaves the house, 
Sanchin, on the other hand, realizes that Su Yi Han must have learned the lesson she deserved to learn by now, and Sanchin's mother announces her presence, asking for Sanchin to leave smoking since it is not good for his health. But instead of being bothered by her remarks, he asks his mother if the matter related to the dowry has been solved or not, and for that, Sanchin's mother shows him a picture of a person saying that he is the one who told her grandmother that Han Sanchin is the villain while Han Jun is the emperor. And that is when the treatment of the both of them started getting different ways as even though she wanted to stop him, she was still determined to do what she wanted. When Han Sanchin gets the picture from his mother's hand, he realizes that it is the person who antagonized the Han family from behind the scenes. Then Sanchin's mother elaborates that his grandfather always loved him when he was young and the place where he is buried is empty which shocks Sanchin. According to his mother, the moment he gets to know about the background of this Taoist priest in the photo, he will get to understand everything as he should be thinking about what decision he should make after he finds out. Then Sanchin realizes that his grandfather must be alive and if he did not die, he must have been captured by the enemy and if that is the case, he will be trying his best to find him out no matter where he is right now. Then the next day, Hei Cho and Yi Han are still getting the money together, and it seems that Yi Han has sold the whole house to manage it, but even when Yi Han asks him to save some money from the dowry for her, he insists that she should forget about it as it is none of her business. He also remarks that just with her looks, it will never be enough for her to marry some rich man like that in the future, but he also claims that it was all better than Su Yingxia as she had to marry Han Sanchin. When they knock on the villa's door, Su Yingxia's mother opens the door excitedly, and Hei Cho asks for her where Su Yingxia might be, but since she isn't present inside the house, Jiang Lan excitedly starts to take everything from Su Yi Han's hands, and when Yi Han tries not to leave the stuff to her, Jiang Lan takes it away forcefully. Meanwhile, Su Yingxia wonders why there aren't any of the building materials manufacturers who have agreed to come even though they have agreed on three points. Then after a while, Boss Kang arrives apologizing to her saying that there were a lot of contracts recently, so he couldn't leave in time, and Su Yingxia accepts his apology saying that she can reveal the contract details for him to see. Then Boss Kang claims that if she doesn't increase the price, they would never want to sign the contract which makes Su Yingxia ask him if he isn't about to act generously as the Su family has worked with him for many years already. Kang remarks that since the old madam of the Su family has already passed away, so there will be no need for empathy, but he makes it clear that as long as she decides to stay with him for one night, he would do everything for her with a dirty look on her face. But instead of listening to him, Su Yingxia ends up throwing the drink on his face in anger making it clear that she isn't some slut who would agree to some proposal like that. Kang starts to react roughly calling her a cheap woman who dared to act wild in front of him while banging her head on the table daring her not to do something like that ever again as it can fire back to her. He insists that he will be giving her one more chance to think about her choices carefully. But Su Yingxia isn't afraid of him, while Kang throws her on the floor claiming that she will have to ask him to cooperate eventually no matter what. Then when Kang starts to leave with his women, Su Yingxia makes it clear that she doesn't want to be with some rotten man like him. Then one day later, Su Yingxia realizes that all the companies in Yunqing have already colluded with Kang Ling, and the only way for her to save the company is by looking elsewhere. Suddenly, Su Heiko enters the room predicting that the negotiations have failed, and Su Yingxia claims that she has tried her best, but they are all trying to increase the price no matter what. Then Su Heiko asks to Su Yingxia, saying that the man has told him that she has spilled tea on her face which seems as if she is trying to hurt the company. Realizing that Heiko is trying to shift all the blame on her, she starts to yell at him demanding to know if he didn't know what he wanted to do to her. It seems that Heiko knows about it already, and he claims that the sacrifice will be meaningless as long as it can help the company. Then Su Yingxia suggests that she will be thinking of another way, but she would never do such a thing for the company. Before leaving, Su Heiqiao claims that she doesn't have to do that as he has already promised Kang that he will be taking Su Yingxia personally to the Peninsula Hotel the same night, and Yingxia remarks that Heiqiao just wants to remove her from the company forcefully. Su Yingxia then makes it clear that she is no longer the director of the company from now on and leaves the room. Su Heiko is happy that Yingxia left the company as from now on the Su family will be completely within his grasp. Meanwhile, Sanchin reaches the villa thinking that as the family affairs of the Han family have been finished, he will be able to sleep peacefully from now on. But when he gets inside the house, Jiang Lan grabs his hand saying that he must have done something to Su Yingxia again so he should be apologizing to her already 
and he is surprised to hear that since he didn't do anything like that at all. After hearing that Su Yingxia is crying inside her room, Sanchen reaches her asking to know what has happened, and Yingxia claims that she will be fine as she won't have to go to work anymore in the company. Sanchen demands to know if she is doing it all because of Hei Cho, but Su Yingxia claims that she will be doing it because of her own decision since she has no way of cooperating with the Chinks building project. Then Sanchen pats her head saying that it isn't entirely her fault as it was the fault of the company chairman Su Heisho. The next day, Heiko announces that Su Yingxia has left the company, and he will be personally taking over it as asking others about their opinion. But her father is anxious about what they will do if Rusho company stops working with them after that. Then when the others think about it, they think that they will have to think about the consequences as well since the risk is too great for their company to handle as if it happens, they will have to pay a total compensation of 1 billion to them to leverage. But Heiko doesn't seem to be worried that if Rushri Real Estate stops cooperating with them the construction period will be delayed so at least half a year, and the loss would be enormous for them so he thinks that Rushri Real Estate would never stop cooperating just because Su Yingxia isn't around them anymore. Suddenly, one of the employees lets Su Heiko know that Boss Zhang is already here for him, and Heiko starts to wonder why he would be coming to the office for no reason at all. Then when Zhang enters the room with some of his people, Heiko excitedly greets him saying that he should have informed them before visiting but Zhang, who is uninterested to talk to him, claims that from now on Heiko will be dealing with two of his men for the next two years. Then when Heicho asks him if his men are in charge of Rushi real estate while wondering if the cooperation between them must be fine, and he was worried for nothing. But Zhang claims that both of them are lawyers as their company has breached the contract between them and they will no longer work with them. Also, if Su Heicho isn't satisfied, he can negotiate with them directly as they will have their business card to contract with them. When Heicho gets the card from them, he starts to wonder what kind of violation was done as the contract termination isn't something he can handle and with their corporate background, there wouldn't be an issue if it continues for 10 or 8 years while Su family will be destroyed in a few months. Then Su Heicho beggingly asks Zhang if he has done something to displease him asking for another chance, but Zhang makes it clear that he has already given him a chance and he is the one who continuously digs his own grave no matter what. Su Heiko flops on the ground not realizing what has happened and when he loses all his hopes, people in the office start to blame him for making such stupid decisions as Su Yingxia would have never let it happen for sure. Heiko then engages in them demanding to know if it is his fault as if everything must have been done by Su Yingxia, who must have decided to elaborate everything to Zhang Lian. Then when Su Heiko makes up his mind, he thinks that he will be dragging her down as well since she wanted to do the same to him as he leaves the room. On the other hand, Kang was lying on his bed thinking about Su Yingxia as if he is about to have her no matter what someday. Suddenly, Mo Yang and Lin Yang kick the door open and even though Kang claims that it must have been some kind of misunderstanding, Mo orders his men to hit him instead of thinking about it twice. The men of Mo Yang start to beat the hell out of Kang like he is some kind of punching bag and from the crowd, Sanchen appears out of nowhere. Kang realizes that the person standing in front of him must be some superior as even Mo Yang is listening to his orders and asks if he has ever offended him since he doesn't think that he did for instance. Han Sanchen then elaborates his name in front of Kang and Kang is surprised to see Sanchen standing in front of him as he is the loser husband of Su Yingxia. When he thinks that it must not be possible, Sanchen throws him on the wall asking what he has done to Yingxia and Kang starts to beg claiming that he will never do it again as he will definitely cooperate with the Su family in the future, but instead of listening to the man, Sanchen continues to choke him with a large force in his hand. Su Heikxiao angrily goes toward the mountainside villa to deal with Su Yingxia to make her realize who he is but gets barricaded by the security guard, as no one else except for the members of the community are allowed to enter inside. Su Heikxiao then demands to enter saying that the people living inside this place are from his Su family, but the security guard makes it clear that there is no Su owner inside the place so he should be getting out as soon as possible before they have to beat him away. Suddenly, Su Heikxiao notices Han Sanchen afar and Heikxiao demands him to get out his wife as soon as possible as she dared to hurt the Su family but Sanchen claims that she has resigned from the company so she has nothing to do with him anymore. Then Heicho instigated ends up holding the collar of Sanchen claiming that if not for her, a cheap woman whose job is to please Zhang Liang, their company already did cooperation so Sanchen should know that he is being betrayed to let him have dirty ideas about Su Yingxia. 
But instead of listening to him, Sanchin grabs his hand to move it upwards warning him that if he doesn't want to lie in bed forever, he should be careful with his words going forward from this place. Hoichel remembers how strong Sanchin can be so he thinks that he should be careful with him and only continues to stand angrily thinking that if he was in his freshman year, he would have beaten Sanchin to make him feel regret. The next day when they reach the bank, Hoiko thinks that in the absence of the Chengxi project, they have lost the ability to repay the loan and after that, the bank asks them to pay back the loan in three days as if it is time for them to come down and push everyone out of the company. Soon, the president of Yunqing Bank comes in asking for Dong Su and Su Heikcho, requests the man to give him some time but he thinks that giving him more time will only make him become less able to pay it back. The man introduces that there is good news for him since there is someone willing to buy the company, which is in such a mess, and anyone currently employed in the company can continue their job as well. After hearing Mr. Du, Heiko claims that he will never hand over the Sioux company to anyone else because he is the leader but everyone behind him is dissatisfied with his work as they will be able to live continuously without him. But he ends up making his final decision without hearing any of them out as he has taken the position with great difficulty so he cannot just give up. After thinking for a while, he gets an idea of thinking the way how Su Yingxie used to play chess with Zhang Liang, so he ends up calling Su Yihan as if she can fix their problem right now. When he reaches the home of Su Yihan, it seems that she is planning to go to a rich youth party for the night but Su Heikho thinks that she can be of help for him to save the company. He suggests that she should go see Zhang Liang as he must be willing to give the company a chance and Su Yihan starts to overreact saying that he wants to destroy her future when she wants to get married into a rich family. Then Heiko claims that if Su family doesn't get back its grading, she can never marry into a rich family so it will be her chance to save the Su family. Then Su Yihan thinks of getting in the idea as Zhang Liang is actually quite handsome, and if she can be with him, it wouldn't feel much like a loss to her. Then when she knocks on the door of Zhang Liang, Zhang's astonished to see Su Yihan dressed up like that in front of his door at this hour of the night. Then when Su Yihan claims that she is about to accompany him for the night, Zhang Liang throws her out of the house calling her a dirty woman which makes her realize that he isn't about to listen to her anyways. Then President Du goes to Sanchen with the proposal of Su Family Company to Sanchen as Heikho will be desperate to sell the Su Family assets soon enough, so it is up to him what he wants to do right now. Sanchen claims that he will leave it to him and he will be writing it in Su Yingxia's name. After hearing it, President Du claims that he will take care of it so he doesn't have to worry about it at all as he will be doing his best. Suddenly, Sanchen gets a call from Jiang Lan saying that they are already in the Bin City for the next few days so he shouldn't be making her wait until the Dragon Festival is over. He makes it clear that he will come back after all of his work is done so he will be arriving in Bin City in the afternoon and Jiang Lan claims that they have been overwhelmed lately so he can help her save face when the time comes. Then suddenly in the middle of the street, people notice Tang Zong as he is the biggest boss in Bin City is a legendary young man who started all his jobs from scratch. And it is unbelievable for them to see that he could appear in a rundown place like that. It seems that he is here to pick someone up, and they are gossiping about who is the person that he made Tong Zong pick him up out of nowhere. It seems that Zong is here to pick up Han Sanchen, and he is really happy to see Sanchen after a long time. Sanchen doesn't seem to be expecting to see him, but he is happy that he has been doing so well now as he now even drives a Rolls Royce. Even after all this, Zong is grateful to Sanchen that he helped him two years ago, and if it wasn't for him, he would still be roaming the streets. When one day Sanchen approached him with a bunch of money, Sanchen promised that if Bin City doesn't make him comfortable enough, he would always go and look for him in Yunqing City. At that moment, Zong promised him that he is even willing to go through fire and water just to be with him in the end. Sanchen then advises him to give him a ride first since his wife and the others are waiting for him right now. On the other hand, Su Yingxia's cousin is taking her and her mother to the Bin City shopping mall where her boyfriend is waiting for them there. It seems that the man's name is Liu Zhiji as he owns the company as a boss. He gets an annual revenue of tens of millions which is supposed to be better than Han Sanchen. But when Jiang Lan hears about his capabilities, she claims that even he is far worse than her son-in-law, while Su Yingxia stands far hearing their bickering. The cousin claims that she doesn't know how to joke as Han Sanchen is a coward man and lazy, but Jiang Lan confidently claims that Sanchen will be arriving soon so she will be able to find out how good he is compared to her boyfriend. Soon they reach the famous LV shop and Su Yingxia's cousin had been waiting for a long time to get a bag for her to make Su Yingxia jealous. 
but it seems that the bag is more than 30,000 yuan, so Yingxia suggests her to look for something else instead, and at that time, her boyfriend arrives her saying that she can buy it if she likes. While her cousin thinks that her boyfriend is the best, she claims that if Su Yingxia keeps on going with Han Sanchen, she might never be able to buy expensive things like her. Then Su Yingxia realizes that she will have to make a play to make her regret, so she ends up choosing a bag for her so her sister's boyfriend can pay for it. When she starts to bicker seeing the price, Su Yingxia suggests that she should keep it away if she cannot afford it in the first place as it is worth over 300,000. Suddenly, Sanchen arrives greeting everyone, and he starts to apologize to Su Yingxia for having a delay in his trip, suggesting that she can buy any bag she likes, or she can take them all back home. But when her cousin ends up hearing him talk, she starts to ask if he can really afford them all as she doesn't think that he can do so as everyone calls him a coward in the end for saying nonsense. Then Sanchin takes his credit card out for the worker inside the clothing shop saying that he will take everything inside the shop which astonishes the woman. When all of the branded bags total the amount of 5 million yuan, he ends up buying all of them which makes the shopkeeper happy while the cousin and her boyfriend are losing their mind over it. Then when Zhang Lan, Han Sanchin, and Su Yingxia are about to head back home, Zhang Lan is rather happy that Sanchin was able to make a move which is similar to giving a hard slap on Zhang Wan's face. But when they finally arrive back in the house, Zhang Lan notices that their luggage is all outside of the house, and it seems that Zhang Wan is mad that Sanchin made all the ruckus inside the old shop. She suggests Yingxia to buy her own house at Bin City if they want to live, and Sanchin suggests that he has a friend with an empty villa in Bin City, so they can just live there. When they finally arrive in the villa of Sanchin's friend, Zhang Lan realizes that her husband isn't available via phone, and she doesn't know where they will go on vacation. When Han Sanchin claims that it is possible that he had blocked her number, Zhang Lan doesn't know that they do have a conflict with Zhang Wan, so it doesn't seem like a viable thing for her. She thinks that the Zhang Lan family is secretly playing a trick on her and Yingxia claims that Sanchin has guessed that they were planning a party tomorrow, but they happen to be planning to have a party tomorrow for real. Then Han Sanchin asks his mother-in-law if she wants to save her face since he is planning to book all the hotels the next day for her so when the time comes, if they want to enter, they must need her permission to get in at first, which starts to make her eyes shine as she thinks that her son-in-law is quite brilliant. It seems that all of the people around the hotel are talking about the Zhang family as they are supposed to have a party this year as well, and everyone is talking about how Zhang Lan ended up becoming some kind of person in charge, which starts to get them worried as that distant relatives like them will get ignored in the end. Soon Liu Zhiji arrives in front of the hotel, and this time the banquet is about to be held at the Zhang Wan Hotel. It is noticeable that she herself has prepared the party this time for sure. When Liu Zhiji and Zhang Wan arrive, they get greeted by her mother and father, and everyone starts to praise how handsome Liu is while Zhang Wan will be the perfect match for her. Everyone starts to ask why Liu didn't tell them that they are about to get married since their daughter would love to be the receptionist of the marriage, and Liu suggests to them all that they will be talking about it later after the dinner. When Liu arrives in front of the security guards, they start asking him if he is the guest Sir Han, but Liu is astonished as he isn't Han, but he has made a reservation at the hotel this time. Then the security guards apologize to him, saying that if he isn't a guest of Mr. Han, they are not allowed to enter the hotel at any cost. When Liu starts to create a scene with the security guards, the hotel worker asks him if he is deaf as they have already told him that the whole hotel is booked. Also, if he still insists on entering inside, he should contact the manager to resolve his issues. When the matter doesn't get resolved that easily, the whole Jang family starts to create a scene calling the man names as if the manager himself is about to apologize to them for making a scene with them. Liu orders his family to shut up and at that moment, the grandfather of the Jang family arrives as well. The grandfather then commands Liu not to take so much time so he should be contacting the managers and bosses out right now to explain the whole misunderstanding. Liu falls into great trouble as he knows that the Zhang Wan Hotel is owned by the Tang family so there is no way he wants to offend people like them. He then insists that they should be leaving soon while the Zhang family grandfather continues to make a scene saying that he isn't about to fall because of him that easily which will be ridiculous for them. Then when the hotel worker calls the grandfather asking if he dares to offend the Tang family and the grandfather advises the man not to look down on the Zhang family as he will be making them regret doing so. Soon the manager's car arrives in front of the hotel, so the man advises the others not to get in the way by throwing Liu away and out of the car. 
Han Sanchen, and Su Yingshed get out as if they are the star of the day. Soon Jang Lan and the others get out of the car as well and people of Jang family start to wonder how they could be in Tang Zong's car out of nowhere. Then the grandfather of the Jang family asks Jang Lan how she is here, and Jang Lan claims that she was here a few days ago, as lived in Zhang Wan's house, but she was unfortunately kicked out by Liu. Then Jiang Wan angrily claims that she did that because she didn't want to see her ever again, and she was also the person who secretly blocked her number on grandfather's phone for extra measures. When Jiang family grandfather hears her out, he insists that she should be apologizing to them, no matter what as they are still part of the family, but Jiang Wan still insists that she doesn't want to as she is about to marry Liu as he is from the dignified Liu family. On the other hand, Liu realizes that if they can get out of Master Tang's car, they must be close to Lord Tang in one way or another so even he claims that Jiang Wan has gone too far so she should be going to apologize to them right now. Jiang Wan then starts to react by asking Liu if he has gone mad as she is a woman, he should be taking her side right now which makes Liu claim that he will be breaking up with her soon if she doesn't listen to him. Jiang Wan realizes that she will be losing everything if Liu ends up breaking up with him so she accepts her fate and apologizes to Zhang Lan and Su Yingxia since it is her fault from the beginning. Jiang family grandfather is happy to see that she has finally apologized so they can forgive her already and as it is time for dinner, they should just get in and eat. Then suddenly, Han Sanchen ends up asking him who said that he deserves to eat there and the grandfather starts to remark that if Ingsha didn't get in charge of the company, he wouldn't deserve to stand in front of him as he has no place to talk to him here. Then Su Yingxia remarks that she didn't have anything to do with the hotel and Han Sanchen is the one who did everything including paying for everything. The grandfather then whisperingly states to Yingxia that she doesn't have to keep protecting him as she is disrespecting her elders by doing so. Then when Han Sanchen claims that someone like him doesn't deserve to be a part of the Jiang family, the grandfather ends up shouting by saying that he doesn't care about such a rundown hotel which gets heard by Tang Zong, and he starts to react by calling out the person behind all the ruckuses. He remarks that his hotel is the number one in Bin City and Jiang family grandfather starts to recover the situation by saying that he was about to get kicked out by the hotel employees even though they have booked it while advising that he should be handling the business properly. Then Zong makes it clear that whatever he says in Bin City is about to become the absolute truth so he then asks him if he has any kind of opinion. And it was he who invited the honored guest for dinner so the grandfather is the one who doesn't have the qualifications to come to the hotel. At that moment, Tang Zong and his employees bowed at Han Sanchen apologizing to get later than expected, and Liu and everyone else including Zhang Wan are shocked to see that someone like Lord Tang Zong would get on their knees to have Sanchen in time. When Jiang Lan starts to wonder the same, Su Yingxia makes it clear to her mother that Han Sanchen is not the cowardly man she thought he was as it is just that they didn't know about it until now. Then when Tang continues to accompany Han Sanchen himself, his employees scare away everyone else, saying that if they do not leave the premise immediately, they will have to call the security guards to kick them out of the place. Then when everyone gets in, the Jiang family grandfather sits in front of the hotel to reminisce that he didn't think that Han Sanchen would be someone so powerful as he is not at all the coward they thought that he is. He starts to wish that their family was on good terms with Han Sanchen as they would have entered the hotel as well on his behalf. Then when Han Sanchen starts to get a drink from Lord Tang, someone ends up texting him to come onto the hotel roof for some important reason. Han Sanchen hurriedly leaves the room saying that he has some important business to attend, and he realizes that the man couldn't get stopped by the Qingxin guards as there is no place in the whole world that can hold him off. It seems that the man is asking for Han Sanchen's help as he thinks that if his grandfather is now alive, he should be in the fund which shocks Han Sanchen as if he has heard something out of the world. After a while, Han Sanchen overthinks the idea of sending someone to a prison in the center of the earth as he still needs to find a location point and a suitable person to make it happen. Then he ends up noticing someone who is testing people's luck by using astrology and Sankin comes up to the man asking if he can find out everything in the world, asking if he could find out where Sanchin wants to go. He notices that the man is resembling the same outfit as the Taoist priest in the photo and the man named Pindao claims that he knows it all naturally but as Buddha is above, he isn't destiny and the secret shouldn't be revealed. Han Sanchin wonders if it has something to do with Buddha as they are all the liars as the others. When Sanchin thinks that he made the mistake of thinking that a swindler like him could know of the location of a prison in the center of the earth, 
The man calls him from behind insisting that he should wait. As for money, he will be eager to discuss everything. But Han Sanchin walks away anyways, and the man thinks that it is too bad that he couldn't tell him that he is not his opponent. At night, Jang Lan thinks of resting in peace and claims that if Han Sanchin didn't arrive in time, they might have lost their face and insists to Yingxia, saying that she shouldn't have voluntarily resigned from her position as the company manager since she didn't want to fulfill Hei Cho's wish. Yingxia claims that there is no point in talking about it right now and Sanchin states that it might be true, but he has already bought the ownership rights to Su Family Company for Su Yingxia, as she will be the new chairman now. After hearing that, Zhang Lan and Su Yingxia both are shocked and Sanchin claims that the next day Zhang Liang will dig in to find out the problems existing within the company. And it looks like the project that was started will not be refunded for sure so Yingxia can be helped enough to get through the crisis on her own. Yingxia thanks him for doing it all for her promising him that she wouldn't be letting him down for sure while Sanchin is happy that he was able to do it for her since she is now happy because of him. Su Yingxia thinks of giving a present to Han Sanchin at night and when Yingxia excitedly sits in the corner of the bed, Sanchin asks her what is she up to at so late, and it seems that she is awake to erase all the red streaks that she drew on the blanket for him. Han Sanchin insists that he will be the one doing it so she can go back to sleep, and Su Yingxia thinks how can he be so stupid and sensitive at times. When Han Sanchin asks her what is wrong, she claims that she will be sleeping before him, but she is disappointed that even after giving him a sign, he doesn't know what she means, then in the morning when Su Heikyo is at the office, everyone is asking why he is sitting right there as if he isn't satisfied that they are about to have a new chairman. Heikyo commands everyone to shut up calling them noisy, but people don't shut up as they continue to bark at him the same way. Then when Zhang Liang comes inside the office, Su Heikyo starts behaving as if he is his dog thinking that he could have a turning point in his life, but Zhang makes it clear that he is here to state that Heikyo will be bearing the loss from this closure. Su Heikyo realizes that Zhang is about to collect the losses here too, and soon the new chairman gets inside the company, who is none other than Su Yingxia with her bodyguards. Then when Su Heikyo claims that she doesn't have the qualifications to come in there, Yingxia states that he can be a security guard or a cleaner inside the office, as it is his turn to take care of the company affairs. Then when Su Heikyo insists that she will be getting out of the office, she makes it clear that she was the one who told him to set up the meeting in the first place. Everyone is startled to see that after resigning the company, Su Yingxia ended up buying the entire company and everyone starts to think that it was possible to happen since President Du is by her side. On the other hand, Su Heikyo angrily remarks that Yingxia was the one who made him fall into this situation and he straight up rushes toward her to finish her off. But the moment he is about to reach Su Yingxia, the bodyguard around her ends up stopping him in his dirty act to slam him down on the table threatening him that if he doesn't want to lose his arms and legs, he should be shutting up which makes him beg for his wrongdoings and the bodyguard ends up kicking him away of the room. Then Yingxia makes it clear to Zhang Liang that she already knows about the compensation, and she would never mind the amount either, and then Zhang states that he has no reason to postpone her meeting either. Then Su Heicho yells at her saying that the company has lost a lot of money and he will be looking forward to the company's future to see how long she can last in the end. Then Yingxia warns him saying that there is a lawsuit for making countless troubles and the most urgent task at hand today for her is to stabilize the company and maintain the status of the company. Then Su Heicho claims that it may sound good to her but she should also know that if the company loses the project, she will have to repay a billion yuan in loan and Yingxia insists that he doesn't have to worry about it as he is no longer an employee of the company. When Heicho is causing trouble, he gets sent outside by the bodyguards of Yingxia, and before he is making out another sentence with his mouth, the door of the office gets closed in his face as he continues to make brave claims about the company's future, saying that she will have to beg to him to come back in the future. Somewhere else, people are surprised to see Taoists in a shrine as if there are chances that they could be fake Taoists, and when he overhears the conversation of the tourists, he shouts at them for staring at him since there are Taoists who can chant Buddha. After moving them away from his position, he thinks of his master if he practices in here and calls for his master saying that he just saw Han Sanchin on the street. But he isn't as bad as he thought that he would be. He also claims that if Han Sanchin does anything suspicious, he will be bringing Han Sanchin to be on his knees before him and his master calls out to him by calling him King Yan asking if he has done something stupid once again in his life. King Yan claims that he didn't do anything and the master lends him something important which will be helping him even in danger. 
but he cannot leave it for anyone else for his sake. Then the master insists that he should take the item to go down the mountain so he can reach Han Sanchin there to be his friend, as if he wants to plot against Han Sanchin. But the master insists that even if he has a lot of doubts, he should be doing whatever he is asked for his own safety without investigating it as everything will be running its course soon enough. The master also advises him not to come back until he goes down to the mountain and King Yen claims that he will be doing so while worrying about taking care of his master knowing that he doesn't have anyone else to take care of him. Suddenly, King Yen reaches out to his master thinking about his well-being and he notices that his master has deliberately cut his own meridians as if there is someone who wants to force his master to die. He promises that no matter who wanted to finish him off, he will be burying the person with his master's body for sure. Then in the middle of the night, Sankin continues to wonder exactly where the center of the earth prison is. Also he doesn't know if he can get viable information from the place he is in, and it looks like a nightclub for sure. A woman approaches him saying that they can have a drink and dinner together, and Sanchin claims that she shouldn't be expecting too much from him as he is just a driver. The woman then thinks to herself that she cannot be heading in with the driver as if she is only here to waste her time even more, and Han Sankin knows that the place is full of gold diggers. Suddenly, the disciple of the Master King Yun approaches him saying that he just wasted a golden opportunity, and he must not be passing up such a golden opportunity for sure. Then when Han Sanchin doesn't show much interest, enraged King Yun claims that he shouldn't be missing out on it for sure, and he is surely annoyed for the fact that Han Sanchin isn't interested in it. Then when Sanchin is shocked to see the man in Bin City, and asks him what he is doing here if he isn't here to fortune telling, as he is the previous swindling Taoist priest that he met in Bin City. King Yun claims that there are a lot of beautiful women, and this is the only reason why he came to Bin City. King Yin then claims that he can be full and enjoy with women at the same time so he should be happy and he insists Han Sanchin should have a meal with him as he knows a shop on the street that is famous for good food. When the man invites Han Sanchin, he ends up accepting his proposal and they both go on to eat together to eat as much as they can. The man then introduces himself to Han Sanchin and King Yin elaborates that he didn't eat so much delicious for a long time in his life and this time he can eat it all again while drooling on his own. Then when Han Sanchin remarks that he is poor for not having enough of it so he must not be eating in a high-class restaurant like that. When King Yin gets busy with eating, Han Sanchin starts to leave saying that he will be treating King Yin to dinner for the first and last time hoping that he doesn't meet him ever again. Then when Han Sanchin is about to leave, King Yin calls him back which makes Han Sanchin ask what he wants and King Yin claims that since Sanchin has treated him with food this time, Sanchin will be his eldest brother from now on and will no longer be a Taoist prince, so he will be following him only from now on. Then when Han Sanchin rejects the man, King Yun claims that he might need someone to be with him as he has such high status and he is ready to do anything for him including becoming a slave labor for him. Enraged Han Sanchin then claims that if he insists on disturbing him, he will make him spit everything that he has eaten until now. Then King Yin starts acting as if he is a very weak and sick person, and he is no different than a sheet of paper, so if he hits him, he can already call for an ambulance. Han Sanchin then claims that he can be his big brother, but King Yin states that cannot happen since he doesn't have a lot of money. Then when Sanchin is out of his mind, King Yin reaches some women asking if they are interested to become Sanchin's girlfriend, as he has a luxurious Lamborghini, so they might want to walk outside. When the women notice a Rolls Royce in front of them continue to get provoked, but the woman who met Han Sanchin before comes outside claiming that they shouldn't get provoked since he is just a driver. Then when the woman starts to instigate the women against Sanchin, King Yun starts to defend his brother saying that she is fake from top to bottom, made by plastic surgery, and annoyed Han Sanchin starts to take King Yun away from the place feeling that he is just about to create more trouble for him in the future. When Han Sanchin drags him away, King Yin thanks him for his thoughtful reaction and Sanchin then announces that King Yin can continue to follow him, but if he dares to betray him, the consequence will only be receiving death, while Han Sanchin knows that the man is truly hiding his strength for sure and he needs to check out his real goals. King Yin then insists that he will be fine as long as he can eat and see beautiful women and he claims that he knows a place around here suggesting that Sanchin can go there with him. Then 10 minutes later, they arrive in front of Dan Wang Speakeasy, which looks like a nightclub, and Sanchin asks why he would bring him into a place like this while he is a Taoist monk. King Yin makes it clear that the monk's disguise is all fake so he shouldn't be worrying much about it, 
and when they enter, Kingian states that the place is popular for hunting beautiful women who just might be right for him. Suddenly, the lights go out and the woman who got teased by Kingian reveals herself sitting with a goon as he points them out as the bullies who bullied her in the first place requesting her boyfriend that he needs to teach them a lesson. The goon named Ning Xiao then starts to threaten Sanchen and Kingian for provoking his woman and his men stop him saying that he doesn't have to do anything as they are about to take care of them by themselves in one swipe. When Sanchen recalls that if he truly wants to do it, Ning Xiao claims that he should immediately kneel down and apologize to his woman so he can still make time to forgive him as this is what he should get for offending her. Then King Yin suddenly drops down on the ground kneeling and saying that Sanchen should get out of the place asking that they should let Sanchen go out of the place. When Sanchen realizes that King Yin must be stupid, Sanchen advises Ning Xiao not to go too far since he will be facing great consequences, but instead of getting scared of Han Sanchen, Ning Xiao enrages and goes on to hit Han Sanchen with a wine bottle. But instantly, the man gets unarmed by Han Sanchen instead and Sanchen drops the bottle on his head to make it clear who the real boss is. Then Ning Xiao insists all of his men rush at Han Sanchen as he shouts at them, and soon all of them get wiped on the ground, and King Yan is proud to see how strong Han Sanchen really is. Then as they are about to leave, Ning Xiao calls out to Sanchen saying that he is in Brother Dao's territory, and he shouldn't be daring to act anyhow he wants as he is the master skilled in killing and hiding in the shadows of Yunqing City as no matter what, he will be ending up meeting him in no time. Suddenly, Dao Shai enters the club to see what is going on, and when Ning Xiao goes on to point towards Sanchen saying that he made trouble, Dao ends up throwing a heavy slap on his face. Dao then makes it clear that Han Sanchen is indeed the boss so as a stupid fish he shouldn't be rude to him. At that moment, Dao Shi kneels in front of Han Sanchen claiming that he still cannot educate them properly, so he is open to punishing them however he wants. When Ning Xiao notices that his brother Dao respects the man so much, he starts to haggle with the woman for making him offend someone as big as Han Sanchen. When the woman claims that she didn't know either as he just introduced himself as a driver, Ning Xiao throws the woman away kneeling in front of Han Sanchen for being able to see the truth right now for being wrong. As Han Sanchen gets satisfied with his apology, Dao releases him and Sanchen asks Dao if he knows about the prison in the center of the earth. Dao is shocked to know that Sanchen knows about the hellish place. Han Sanchen then reveals the truth to Dao saying that he has a friend who wanted to go to the center of the earth prison to give it a try and Dao Shi claims that he knows the people who have been in the center of the earth and the cost for one person is 100 million US dollars. But he also insists on Han Sanchen saying that he must stop that person from going to the same prison as it will be such a crazy idea to fulfill but Sanchen insists that he has to do it no matter what his money isn't the problem. In the morning, Ling is enraged about Han Sanchen and she asks her grandfather's phone to contact Sanchen saying that she cannot play games on his phone. When her grandfather gives her the phone, she realizes that Sanchen has already blocked her number on his phone for some reason. Then when her grandfather asks her who made such a tactful thing as blocking her number, she insists that he should avenge her by teaching Sanchen a lesson. But her grandfather rejects the idea saying that he is a person who shouldn't be disrespecting at all while Ling brags that she will be finishing off Sanchen by her own hands if he arrives at her house which feels like a shitty idea to her grandfather as she is the one who is disturbing him in the first place. Then when she thinks that it is not true, Han Sanchen arrives by recalling who is the person that wanted to kill him and it shakes Ling to the core so she starts to run away from the room. The old man then reminds Sanchen that his friend Shangwen is waiting for him to replay the match and expected him to come as he didn't want to lose the face over no matter what so, so Wang Mao has signed up for him. Then Sanchen remarks that he will not be going this time and the old man asks him if he isn't afraid that those people will look down on him while making him as the joke in the underworld if he does something like that. But it seems that Sanchen doesn't care since most of the people in Yunqing looks down on him as he is called a coward in the first place, so he must be solving it in the first place. On the other hand, when Yingxia is busy taking care of all the contractors of the company, her assistant reaches out to her saying that they have a problem at hand as the father of some company boss came and wanted to see her as if they have bad intentions. When Yingxia goes on to look at the matter, the old man brags that looking down on them will cause many problems for her as for Han Sanchen her company will result in bankruptcy for daring to offend them. Then when Su Yingxia claims that she doesn't know what has Han Sanchen done and apologizes to them, 
one of the old men claims that she should go back to ask her husband to know about him while insisting that Sanchin has to agree to play with them otherwise they will be destroying the Sioux family company because of that and leave the place. Three hours later when Han Sanchin massages Stu Yingxia's back, Su Yingxia asks Sanchin there were so many old men who approached her in the office saying that Sanchin has offended them. Han Sanchin explains what happened as they insisted that he should be playing with them the board game go. Yingxia is surprised that it is what has happened, and she suggests that they might think that Sanchin will be able to win the championship. When Sanchin insists that he doesn't want to, Yingxia claims that he has to be more realistic when he wants to brag about it in the future as he probably doesn't even know the status of Shang One Black and White in the Go world. Sanchin states that as long as she is serious Shang One Black and White doesn't suit him, but if she really looks down on him, he will be proving her wrong. Su Yingxia then suggests Han Sanchin saying that she also has a friend who likes the board game Go, and if he can beat him, she will believe that he can do something like that. Then when Sanchin asks what she will do if he manages to win and Su Yingxia states that if he manages to fulfill the task, she will give him a kiss. At night, Yoyo brings her friend Yun to play the board game and Su Yingxia introduces her friend as Kai Yun as she won the award in the Go game and Sanchin introduces himself to her. Then Yun claims that she had been hearing about Sanchin for a long time, but as she had been overseas, she never had the time to attend their wedding and apologizes for not being able to. When confused Sanchin asks when they are about to start the game, Yoyo asks him if he is that afraid to lose the game and Sanchin claims that he is in a hurry as he only has time until dinner, so they have to wrap up quickly. Then when they are about to start the game, Yoyo suggests Yun that she shouldn't be showing him any mercy as she will have to prove how strong she really is in the game. Su Yingxia then elaborates that Yun came back this time because she wanted to enter the Go competition and if he plays with her, it would be a good time to see how well he is doing in the game. As time passes, Yoyo asks Yingxia why is Yun's expression looking so ugly which makes her wonder if Han Sanchin ended up beating her, and it seems that Yun is having a harsh time dealing with him as if he knows her every move. When the situation gets tougher for her, she claims that she didn't think of him to be so extraordinary as she is lucky to not meet him in the preliminaries. Then Yoyo comes in saying that she shouldn't be discouraged as he might be lucky and Sanchin claims that if not for Yingxia, he wants to take part in the competition and he reminds Yingxia about the promise she made before. Startled Yingxia's face makes Yoyo wonder what Sanchin is about to do and Yoyo takes away Yun and Yingxia with her saying that Yingxia has business with them so he shouldn't be bothering them. Suddenly, Han Sanchin gets a call from Mo Yang and when he asks if Yang needs money again, Mo Yang claims that Dao Shi was injured, and he is currently in the hospital so if he wants to come and meet him for once. Then when they arrive inside the hospital, Sanchin asks Dao Shi about the background of his opponent as he is hurt like that and Dao Shi claims that he doesn't know him as the person suddenly came and instantly won half a million in the boxing ring the previous night. Then Dao Shi claims to Han Sanchin that as he made the matter stressful, he made a challenge and if he loses, then he will be giving him 500,000 yuan, and Sanchin remarks that he didn't think Dao Shi would have such a bold idea in the first place. Then Mo Yang remarks that as Dao Shi is injured, no one can replace him, but Han Sanchin and Han Sankin suggest Dao Shi take some days off as he will be handling everything on behalf of him. Then when Sanchin goes to the boxing club, the manager suggests that if Sanchin needs anything, he will be there for him, and Sankin suggests the man saying that he will be having a look until the man shows up. When the people inside the place start to gossip about the person who defeated Dao Shi, not sure if the person is about to come this night, as well since no one else makes this kind of bet in a lifetime. When Han Sanchin announces that the winner will be getting a bonus if they give it a try, he men claims that he might be out of his mind since no one could beat such a strong contender in the ring, and they suggest Sanchin not think about giving it a try since he has such small arms and legs. But to surprise them, Sanchin claims that 3,000 yuan might not be much, but he will be giving it a try since he is different from the guys around him who can only boast below the stage. The guys are truly surprised that Sanchin is about to jump into the ring, and the announcer starts to make an announcement saying that they are about to have a challenger to fight as the last one standing will get a bonus of 100,000 yuan. When Han Sanchin gets into the ring, the contender from the previous night arrives, the same person who has defeated Dao Shi and he is ecstatic to see Han Sanchin in front of him. Then when Han Sanchin approaches the man, he asks if he is here to avenge Dao Shi and Han Sanchin suggests the man enlighten him. 
The opponent gets ready to fight instead of talking too much, and he raises his fist instantly to throw a punch at Han Sanction. Han Sanction dodges the punch only to get ready to get kicked by the man, but Han Sanction continues to dodge anything that gets thrown at him. When Sanction is about to hit the man with his hand, the man kicks his hand away from the position to throw countless punches at Sanction. At that moment, Han Sanction realizes that the man must be some kind of monster otherwise, there is no way he would be able to punch him like this as if millions of bullets are hitting his hand in an instant. The opponent feels like it is some kind of disappointment and throws another explosive punch at Han Sanchen which ends up throwing him on the ring bars. As the whole audience is shocked, the opponent roars out asking who else wants to fight with him as he has already defeated Han Sanchen in the worst way possible. Then 10 minutes later, Han Sanchen can be resting while having a hot towel on his face dissatisfied and the manager comes in saying that the man has left immediately after getting the money in his grasp. Han Sanchin then asks him if he has sent someone to follow him as a master like that man should never be short on money. It seems that the manager has asked someone to follow him, but it seems that he is very sensitive to people trying to monitor him, which makes it difficult to get something out of it. Then Han Sanchin hopes that the person has nothing to do with them since otherwise, they all will be in some big trouble that they cannot even dream of. Then elsewhere, some woman is investigating Han Sanchin, and the man who came to fight in his name Don Hao, and according to him, Han Sanchen is nothing but useless trash. The woman asks Dong Gao what he is planning to do behind her back, and the man claims that he went to underground boxing ring to earn some money, and he ended up meeting Han Sanchen as he doesn't seem to have anything to do with the thing that they are interested in. But the woman finds it weird that after three years of being a useless trash, suddenly he owns a villa on the mountainside, and he now also finds in an underground boxing ring but Dongo claims that Han Sanchin isn't worthy of him at any cost. The woman slaps him demanding to know if he thinks that he deserves her and Dongo claims that he knows that she needs someone as a pawn, but according to him, he is definitely better than him for sure. At that moment, the woman demands to know what else he knows aside from being able to fight and asks if he has a family that he can be proud of. It seems that the woman thinks of Han Sanchin as someone special and she warns Donghao saying that if he dares to bother him, she will be killing Dong Hao with her own two hands which Dong Ho seems to respect. Then three days later, Sanchen and Yun can be seen together, and the old man Ting claims that he has already booked a hotel for him to stay at, and Han Sanchen thinks that he shouldn't be doing all the trivial things by himself. But the man thinks that it doesn't matter so much to him as long as he can win the competition as he will be ready to do anything for him. The old man then asks Han Sanchen about Yi Han and Han Sanchen introduces her as his friend since she will be taking part in competition as well and the old man realizes that there are a lot of talents hanging around in Yunqing. He then advises the both of them to get inside the car since he will be taking them both to the best restaurant in Fuan to welcome them. As they continue to ride, Han Sanchen asks the old man if Shang Wen Black and White is about to be participating in the competition and the old man claims that as he is a master in the world of Go, and since he cannot be beaten, does Han Sanchen want to discuss himself with him? It seems that while participating in the competition, Han Sanchen really has a great motive behind it as Su Yingxia has promised to give him a kiss if he ends up winning the competition. Then it seems that it is not only that but also if Su Yingxia has told him that he will be able to do anything to her body if he ends up winning the competition.